with the potter, you get the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good one, Rex. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I give that well, to all of the stars. Voice matter banana. Yes, this is a really uh, real audio software. Oh, Molo, you need to use voice matter banana. Banana. Okay. I don't know what any of that use means. Voice banana. I, me neither. I was I was trying to decipher it. Don't, uh, you so can do the thing that use channel. a microphone. Use a <laughs> banana. banana. Voice phone. matter banana. Uh, you can do virtual channels with that and split the audio output. Uh -huh. Split and audience. Virtual I just channels. beat the Capra Demon and I think I'm now hooked on Dark Souls. Nice. You beat that one of the most the annoying bosses output. in the game, so... Oh, you fuck have Capra. A, yeah. a Oof. lot to f uh, look forward to. Capra Demon would make Rags say that all of Dark Souls is a disaster and should never be played by anybody. <laughs> I don't play games to be frustrated by bullshit. Um, because you're bad, <laughs> Dab. <laughs> Not all of Dark Souls is simply that. Capra Demon, however, oh. is quite the highlight of that. Happy New oh. Year, hail the chat, and hail Zack Snyder. No! <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year. Uh, pretty sure I've read about them having spells that makes normal people in a certain area just not notice weird stuff. So I'm not sure how it works. Oh, it's like uh, Transformers. Like, Oh, that was all covered up. That First sounds one. like... That sounds like how religions get started. Just some <laughs> wizard fucking around with spells. Wizard. Like, Jesus was a wizard, clearly. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> that, that's so he much more some... interesting. You go back in time, you find out he is actually just an alien. And he came from, you know, a distant planet where he could walk on surfaces that were, you know, less dense than he. Stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, I want to find... I, we need the truth. Give me those vials, boy. Alright, I am now live too. Hello. Why? No, go away. Allow oh, me. Metal, I beat Dark Souls 1. I accidentally got the dark ending. Nice. Good job. Good job, idiot. Also, yeah, I guess you brought it up already, but <laughs> milk toast is an option. You're right. <laughs> Your cool metal don't come to Hogwarts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, mil milk toast is one of the um, starting thingies. Yeah. That's, uh, that's neat. I almost feel like we should have to pick that oh, one. Yeah. We're obligated. Yeah. Don't worry, people. It'll come back. Do you you play yours through the the software, right? Uh, you mean my capture? Yeah, it's yeah. the uh, HD capture tism, and I just do the uh, display capture. My setup is what's called next generation, where uh, I can see it on like directly, and then it's also going through OBS. Wow. Yeah. That is Next yeah, yeah, generation. Yeah, I, I think I had a. I think I had it set up like this in Munich actually when I was still living there because I was able to hook up my PlayStation to the TV I had there. Um, what do you? Uh, I need one of you write my character name. Uh, what is your character name? No, not make one. Rate it. Oh, oh let me pull I mean, up the I stream I, so I can see it. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Uh, Rentford Nupin. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It sounds it sounds just weird enough, but just real enough. It's that perfect area of like, yeah, Rentford Nupin. That could that could be a real name. <laughs> Rentford. It's not so outlandish. <laughs> Rentford is like that's that's kind of a name. Rentford, yeah, it's an odd one, but I believe it. I accept this as fact. And then in comes New Peen, and you're like, hmm, well. <laughs> it is a last name, so maybe it's like a... Old signed and sealed. Yeah. Good old Renford. Ew, the beginning of the transfusion. Also, I see you ran off without me, Metal. Wow. Yeah, fuck you. I would say I'm offended, but really, could you offend anybody? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can. So watching the part from th Thursday stream that just came out, why didn't one of them just turn the mother boxes invisible in Justice League? <laughs> oh yeah. Um. She didn't well, know how to do yeah. it at that. No wait, she did know how to do yeah, it at that she point. Didn't, Shit. She didn't conveniently remember that she didn't know how to do it, but could learn how to do it. Eighty four is gonna mess. be so much fun going through the other ensemble movies no for ranks. Games. Be like. Why ain't she doing a thing? Did you kill the werewolf in the opening, Mel? Oh no, I just ran through. Wow! That's the opening achievement challenge. Loose. Oh, shit, without I without doing it, Mel, it means you're not cool. I did it. It's like too fast. I hope I got the correct weapon. Too fast. I mean, too it doesn't matter. Years. We're just testing the thing right now. Sock people. Oh, yeah, we good. Yeah, this isn't the real race, guys. Jeez. Calm yeah, down. Yeah, it's only real if I'm winning, in which case it is real. <laughs> 
Spring is going to be like, like, you guys did it without me? And then we're going to have to be like, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so does the reform thanks for the 15 month resoup. That's a lot of months for a person of 15? decay. 15? Oh, I was just... I mean, yeah. Mel, have you been streaming for 50 months yet? You might have been. Uh, yeah, but I, I wasn't be able to be sub to for 50 months. How long have you been streaming? It was before I started, right? Or was it? I can't remember. What now? When did you start streaming? Was it 2014 or 15? Uh, shit, I checked that not too long ago, but now I forgot. You fool! Yeah. Uh, I got a mod in Wallace chat. I'll use your audio metal. No, it's alright, James. Really. Yeah. You, you'll... There's some... a fucking Mala stream link, YouTube. Suck my balls. <laughs> Didn't kill the werewolf. Cuck. Oh, man. Listen, it's better if they're at your chat so they don't see my horrible gameplay. Yeah. Well, at least I have 420 soul. Oh, it's blood. And Lord. I will say, I do notice the FPS a lot when I'm playing this game. It is not oh, yeah. fun. Oh, uh, You eventually just really... get used to it, but then you go back to a 60 FPS game. It's <sighs> like, man, this is smooth. You get used to it is a very generous way to put it, I would say. I know. I don't tolerate it. Even I don't even find myself toler. I'm always angry at it. <laughs> oh, it gets worse when we get to the bosses, the floopy bosses. Yeah. Well, I mean, even the first boss is kind of floopy, I would say. Oh yeah, the. Uh, do, 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 do. Should mm -hmm. Celtic, Cel Celtic beast. What's his name? Fuck. I forget. Chumbo beast. Yeah. Jumbo uh, beats. Hot. Not a real race. Fucking fakers. Wait a minute. Oh, right. I remember. I know, right? Oh my god, I'm ready to go kill my first beast. Wait, wait, did you, so did, you, did, you, did you use Lone Survivor as well? With the 14 health? Uh, Bigger. I can't remember what I did. It might have been Milk Toast. <clears throat> chat. Well, oh, actually, I can check my stats, right? You should be. Should what have. are your stats? That should, have been, that should have been your character name, Farquad Von Milk Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me and I'll do it. Oh no, I think I think that might be too long. I'm not sure. They have a limit. Um, what about Sir Godfrey? Sir Godfrey von Gobblecock. Uh, I I feel like that one's Never probably least, too yeah. long. Yeah. Didn't finish Puddle yeah. Two. Shake my head. One day I shall return to such things. Yumbo. All right. What is? Papa, Metal, oh, I think it was. Story of your beginnings. Yeah, it was I told that like two streams ago. Go watch that. I don't want to tell it again. <laughs> also, as we progress, I'm going to try and do the the remaining of the E5103 super chats, which are spread over three different videos. One is out. This one is being recorded, and the last one is the meme fap, which is going out soon. TM. TM. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um. 103 was the return of Willems and a triple EFAP hot take with Theo, Fringy, Metal, and Jay. That was the title. So, oh my hey, God. look, if they're directed at you, Metal, that's going to be great because you're here. Hello. And in the meantime, you'll see me playing Blurshblorm in prep Blushblorm. for playing this. Possibly tomorrow is going to be the last good chance of you doing it, right, Metal? Uh, well, before the next weekend, at least. Before the wait, I thought you said you would go back to work on Tuesday. But yeah, I mean, next the next weekend, like after that week, I can do. A long I'm so again. confused. Please say that again. <laughs> Wait, before I go to work, tomorrow is the, the only real opportunity. You're correct. Right. After that, I can do the next weekend. Yes, that'll be the plan for part two of the stream, I suppose. Yes. Um, but it's all it would have been tonight, guys, but Fringy betrayed us. Was he supposed to be here? Um, I spoke, really. last time I spoke to him, I said we might do it today. I just need to speak to Metal because Metal's asleep, and he was like, "Cool." And I was like, "I'll let you know." So there's an implied statement in there that he would probably want to be available at this time. Yeah, no. I could, yeah, I could see that being the case. But he could also have had something come up, like could have been hit by a car, you know. Well, that's not really an excuse. Let's be honest. Something that could have come up, like him over the windshield of the car that hit him. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. So, to carry these on. Donny Drump thieved mine Christmas. Please donate. I think that's in reference to Movie Bob <laughs> saying that he stole his Halloween. Uh, we are your work now, Mootle. I wish. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that goes all the way around. That's cheating. Ah. You're okay. All right, all right, Chungus. Pizza. You can't have pizza. You're streaming. 
That's my uh that's the timer on my freezer. I have a beer in there and it wow. is uh it is it ready. Is about time. That is for me to drink with it. That's big smart. Yeah. yeah. Ha, gotcha, you I'm a big smart son guy. of a bitch. No. He's dead. Hey Muller, say hi to Mutal for me. Oh, no, wow. No, no, no. Didn't follow through. I'm Greg really offended. Jay is trying to bribe EFAP audio archive to turn the tisms against you. What? <laughs> Have you been to the comment section? I I get no credit for the hilarious things that they mention, but they'll. It, but a 10 hour stream can go by, and one little thing that they didn't like, like, oh, fucking Ooh. Greg, I can't believe you said this one thing in this throwaway comment at one time. And I I'll tell you what's crazy, right? Uh, Reddit is usually a cesspit of people who are like, armchair psychology that's what i usually find is the most common annoyance there but yeah. recently right we found different comments on that newest stream that frustrated the both of us i went to the the subreddit post for the batman and robin one one of the one of the top discussions was how well you did pun wise appreciating oh uh, wow what it, wow i got a compliment you how, did how incredible don't get used to it the, oh man <laughs> oh, I, I won't no i don't want to no no God no forbid. getting Rectosaurus rags here. Rectosaurus rag? I like it. Yeah. Rectumsaurus what? Rectums oh my god. Oh my god. Look at me picking up Molotovs. I'm like a real hunter. Molotovs? Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, can Set you up and dig down. Can you ask name your character in honor of Sick Dick Suckle, the executive producer of Wonder Woman 84? <laughs> <laughs> dick suckle. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Dick suck. Yeah, we we picked that one up. Yeah, we noticed dick suckle in the credits. <laughs> How many you. more subs do you need to not cheat on us with other jobs? Oh, that's that's quite a lot. <laughs> cheat on us with other jobs. There's yeah. no way that Wonder Woman gives blowjobs. Wonder Woman gives what? Blowjobs. Why? No fucking way. Huh? Is there, I An Amazon, was... like, no, there's no, I can't, I cannot picture her ever doing that. There's no way. She'd be too naive and stupid to understand it in The anyway. mechanics. Yeah, but, like, I don't think any of the, yeah. Well, maybe some of them, but, like, Wonder Woman? No. <laughs> no. Drinking fun's mind. Well, I didn't plan on drinking at all today, so. I was... I was just thinking like, oh, I can read out the next thing once I just pause, like normal games. It's like, no pausing for you. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere near Gal Gadot. E well, I don't know. Her being near to her naked in the bedroom Fuckin is probably like the ideal time to be with her, actually. But I'm not going to ask her to role play because she's such a shitty actress. <laughs> Greg, <laughs> no. Well, wait, you can. You can ask her to role play as Wonder Woman from <laughs> Wonder Woman. You movie. just like her, her cold, dead <laughs> stare and her lifeless lack of emotions. You just like her. I gotta so come so good. hard. I was murdered by the townspeople. Feels bad, man. Ha! <laughs> you lose. Well, you know it's good. It's good learning experience because that's the hero's journey. Ow. You have to go through struggle. Well, I got hit with a brick, so. Once you go through enough doing. struggle, you'll get really good. I'll be like Luke Skywalker taking down armies of robots. Eh, miss me, idiot. So the next one says, How the Trump, t t the, the Trump Stole Halloween. <laughs> I would watch that movie, it'd be great. Oh, Halloween. Let's picture him <laughs> tiptoeing around with a big sack of movie bobs experiences that he stole all of them. Oh my goodness. I watched an 8-hour video, but as soon as Rag said something bad about women, I watched twice. <laughs> yeah, boy, that's how you gotta. That's how you get them back. He's dead. It's finished. All right, who's got my souls? Even though they're echoes, fuck echoes. The souls. Oh, they go into enemies here, right? I remember. Echoes. Yeah, it's when you die, you lose your echoes. That's dumb. I know. You I think your echo would stay around? We call him something funny on my stream back in the day. I forgot what it was. We need I need Jenna here. Like she would or... remember. I could see you calling them glorms. Your balls? <laughs> Is <laughs> Metal, you must retrieve your balls. Retrieve my balls. Hmm. Or assaulting people with a briefcase? I just seems fitting, I don't know. Alright, go <laughs> knock out the sniper. This brick draw is so bad. fucking oh, shit. 
Hallel, no. Hallel, Hallel, no. Funniest shit. The problem is that when you mock her, but your mockery of her had more emotion than her uh, saying it. Sorry, yeah, see, it that is true. how you fail, Metal. It wasn't adaptation, not a recreation, okay? Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Mm. It's, a, it's an, uh, an adaptation of her. Okay, yeah. yeah. This it was a possible me way for me to be as expressless. <laughs> No, doggo. Don't do it. Did it? Stand to Shouldn't that someone have think. my echoes around here? Should I get them back? I'm confused. Who has them? Oh, it's that guy. Maybe if you yell and it echoes back, maybe you can hear them. Oh my god, this... Isn't Rags basically the show's co-host? <laughs> basically. I mean... Mm. Uh, nope, let's, let's he's a guest. Let's explore this. He is a guest that I've I just I enjoy his company, so I bring it all every single show. Yeah, I guess I'm just I'm just around all this. I've got a really loose schedule, so whenever there's an EFAP, I guess I'll hop on and kill some time. I guess. I mean, yeah, I, I could understand. See, I try so hard, <laughs> but in the end, it doesn't. See, I can I can understand why other people say that about me. <laughs> Rags, like, yeah, that's not basically. I like how eventually people are gonna be like, wait a second, I'm. I'm, I'm starting to think, is Rags like a co-host or something? He keeps hanging around. <laughs> it's insane. He's it's like there's, he's there every single time. Whoa. Whoa. Let's see if I can get the parry right. I've not been parrying well at all so far. All right, big man, here we go. Big more. Oh my god, that worked. Rags is the show's mascot. I'll take it. <laughs> and down he goes. Oh man, I got shiny coins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Away! Oh, Away! Oh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy stole my Memorial Day and gave me the diabetes. Damn. <laughs> that sucks. There should be some kind of suing involved with that if, if a Lucasfilm employee gives you diabetes. Specifically the Lucasfilm employee, I mean, that's the important aspect. They provideth you the diabetes. That was close? Nah. Diabetes. Who the fuck is Rags? <laughs> Can me down, Rags. Mm. Got blocked I'm by Diabetio on Twitter. Mission accomplished, massive. Get the rhino milk. Um. Rhino milk. But now you can't see his really funny tweet. Uh. Like the one we read out, where he said he thinks that the whole reason uh. people dislike him is because he was born. Oh shit, did I need to die once for the doll to be alive? <laughs> Uh, do you? I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't died yet, and I went no, wait. back to the stream. You, to unlock her, you need insight, and I can't remember if... I can't remember where you get insight from, because you, you get insight. it from bosses, oh. but you can also get it from... <laughs> uh, well, I guess i go try kill the cleric bees. No death run, do it. Oh, dang it. No death run. <laughs> no hit I mean, run. I, I already lost that, so rip. Let me get some blood wow. vials, and that's... Oh wait, I should have. I should have. Uh, where's my where's my items? I have ten Molotov cocktails. That's Why are they so good. dramatic? This town's finished. It's like, dude, it's all right. Well, let's calm down. Calm your I'll bounce forms. back. You know, it's just Corona. Why doesn't it Rex always watch like metal stream? I yeah, Rex. Why don't you watch my stream? Because uh, I don't want to. I'm not watching either stream because yeah. I don't want to pick sides. <laughs> I want to remain neutral. Oh, fuck off! They're so mean. Demons. Don't so eat me, I'm please. Like Do not eat my glorious. I annoy people with how correct I am. Yes. And they have to face their incorrectness. That's why I come across as annoying. Can be the yeah, only explanation. Oh no! Oh. Dude, this is like a fucking boss fight on its own. Does it though? Maybe it's just bad. Oh, this is kind of. Aww, if that had hit, it might be alright. Kill the guy in the wheelchair! He Ooh, the you shouldn't have streamed out. That might be against TOS. Is it though? I mean, I, I did it as well. I showed it on stream doing it. Stupid wolves. Wow, but that's allowed? <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Fucked up. Double morals. 
All right, I feel like I'm getting into the hang, as they say, as Rhymes, kids say. Will your next video be over an hour? It will be absurdly long. It will be very long. It One hour and ten minutes. Pure There's no way you'll be under an hour. It is not. <laughs> I would be. I would, would be very surprised. Oh God, something's hitting me. There's too much to talk about with Mando. What have I got? Even season one. Molotovs, all right. I want oil things. I know you can pick them up somewhere. Um, Eric Beast, my boy. I'll never understand why this flippy flappy, cunningly plucked Skeksis have such high opinion of himself. Uh, Skeksis? I've never heard of the term Skeksis. I uh -huh. It's kind of, kind of disgusting in a way, you know? Like you. Like you fucking Skeksis. You're like, oh no, what does that imply? <laughs> it's like, whoa. I don't even know what that means. I threw it over his head. Fucking How does that even work? Ow! I missed two of the Molotovs. That's the racism right there. Gotcha. Ooh, that was a good one. Come here, my darling. Oh no, no, no. Dude, I'm I'm gaming right now. Oh, I almost died to gaming. He's dead and missed the cleric beast with the Molotov. <sighs> God okay, damn it, okay. why is it so easy to miss? You're right, I should heal. Mel, you are correct. Heal! You fool! Ow. Stupid crow! Yeah, fuck I don't know when I can parry him. Um. Alright. Let's take on Ow. a boss. I feel like I can do that. Ah. Uh. During their Rogue One commentary track, Red Letter Media made fun of people who like this scene and claim that this scene gets Vader wrong. Oh, the Rogue One scene? I disagree. Oh yeah, I, I definitely disagree as well. That is absolutely 100% Vader acting in character in a way that makes sense for him to. Yep. The fact that it is also fan service does not matter. It makes sense. As Ihar has once said, and I agree with, um... You can argue to a degree that pretty much everything past A New Hope can be called fan service in that these things are created with the intent to satisfy fans and also entertain them those stories. But, of course, there are better examples than others. Also, I'm losing health fast. Eh. Perhaps I wasn't ready I would for say this that. I, would, I would say that pretty... Uh, hmm? I think that like the sequel trilogy is fan service Ooh. gone wrong. It's like the <laughs> Nego verse fan service. Yeah, where it's I just agree with it's that. the things, but executed horribly. It's it's a terrible attempt at fan service. Wait, what? Dude, I hate the camera with Cleric Beasts it's so bad. It's not just the camera, it's the FPS and the fact that your camera fills up with goo and fear. Yeah. It's really annoying. Rags would hate it. I'll fill your, I'll, I'll fill your camera up with fur. No, don't do it. Oh my god. Haha, <laughs> you missed me, you idiot beast. Let's try! Just means in the actual race I'm gonna die three times to cleric beast. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. G-Boss! <laughs> Well, if ain't metal, I'm a drink of blood and come the boost. Beast. Commander, hello. He's a boobin. Boobin. Kirk Hammer time. Nah. Am I winning? Mom! Winner! Oh, I need more stormina. Moodle break Mauler talks. He's anti Oh, anti -fa. I should do that. Boom. Oh god, I think he's angry. He's evil. Well, now I got four inside, so you can have one of mine. Eat Molotov, bitch. Don't do it. Eat more Molotov, bitch. Was it dead? I missed, I missed like five Molotovs, by the way. When I didn't miss a single one. I guess that makes me the best player of Bloodborne since Henry Bloodborne. I already beat him, though. I beat him before you. You're ahead of me in terms of behind me in time zones. Ahead. Uh, anyway. What I just said makes complete sense. Da, 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 da. Give me vitality. <laughs> yes. No, don't do it. All right. Not cool. Trump broke me. Movie Bob, probably. <laughs> well, as long as he has someone to blame, you know, things won't get that bad. He did everything right. <laughs>
I get here and the first thing I see is Movie Bob whining about the orange man bad. Bob, you're an obese sack Ugh. wasting oxygen. Go away. That's, well. not, that's a bit rude, but okay. Some strong opinions here in the chat today. Imagine that. Yeah. Give me a chill. <laughs> mm. You guys gotta roll back that anger. Coom, 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 my stuff, lady. Coom. Oh, wait, I could not upgrade my shit already? I don't know, no. Oh, wait, no, I need to, the, the tools for that, I think. No, 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 no. Oh, thank goodness. Come here, brick troll boy. No, don't go back. I mean, I guess I'm just... Oh, I guess we'll play with no summoning, too. That's, that's how it was, rules. I... Oh, you mean, like, NPC summons? Yeah, I've never yeah, done that. Cause... I don't think I've ever done that in Love I think I saw it in um, YMS highlights where it's like using summons or getting weapons from summons is uh, there's like little accolades he's earning from this score sheet that someone made before he started playing. So, for example, killing or getting killed by certain bosses gets him like an accolade. And he earned one and he was like, wait, what's this? And it's like simp mode. You brought, <laughs> brought it at NPC or something like that. I was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> simp mode. You shan't want to use the, the I NPCs. I grabbed the stickles and then I ripped them off, and now he gives me items. Don't you That's how do it, it. In real life. Don't you do it. Imagine Grab having two monitors out. to watch both streams at the same time. Dab. Well, I do have three monitors. Whoa. So you dab, get dabbed on Horror the dabs. Flying. And if you pause metals for long enough and then play it, it'll sink. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> um. Ra get the roof. Must be in reference to movie Bob. <laughs> it just says has as a correction, and then sorry rags. I guess I guess you corrected them on their grammar at some point. Maybe I don't know. Has Come here, spelling. boy. Come here. Well, maybe. So if Trump still movie Bob's holidays, would that make me him an EFAP hero? If so, I likey likey. I likey likey. That's something we should say more, and we don't. Feels bad, man. Because we don't like things, remember? We only hate things. Yeah. True. True. You can't hit me, I have more health now. That's how this works. Okay. That's not how this works, I'm afraid. What? what? I beat you up, old man. Now you're I told dead. you to not do that. That's illegal. It's... I probably shouldn't kill everything that I see, right? That's not how you play these games. Yes. Uh, when do you fellows watch Astartes on stream? It'd be great Never. to see your reactions to it. Also, hello, Wags. Hello. Uh, we would just be like... I got fucked up! Wow, Sorry. that's really cool. Yeah. I wouldn't have anything insightful to say in terms of what it's representing lore-wise or, or payoff-wise for 40k. I know yeah, that much. I've seen a start already. It's pretty, pretty neat. Fuck. You oh, yeah. Very, very neat. Ooh, Bob Gosh. is the Apex lover sexual. <laughs> I don't even completely show what that means, but I'm, I'm okay with this. As long as you're okay with it. Gets killed by this, but not a Cleric Beast. Wow. There's always something. Dude, Cleric Beast is a noob compared to the random mobs. And it was the, the double Wolfenheimers. They're yeah, pretty, they're pretty fucking me up nasty. right now. It's horrifying. <clears throat> I'm blasting through heals. That was Just too Blasting early. the heals and use them, you idiot. <sighs> I hate you both. Wah, 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 wah. Wait, what is this? Where do I put? Oh shit, I'm out of bulletos. I'm just gonna run. Fuck you! <clears throat> Actually, no, you give me blood vials. Oh no. Oh my god, they're so aggressive. You ever known werewolves to be aggressives? Peoples? I don't know, that seems out of character. Mm -hmm. I haven't even read your Reddit post yet. I got distracted by that stupid Wonder Woman thing. And then we started streaming. <laughs> Uh. Don't you moan at me. And fuck you, Spider-Man! <laughs> this game feels a lot towards the trash being difficult but than Dark Wait, hang on. Is this game til tilt more towards the trash being difficulty than Dark Souls? Is oh, it? I don't know. I had a cinematic kill. Hello, Mr. Crazed. How are you doing? Kill the burps. I'm trying. Uh, land burps are the most dangerous enemies in the game. Wonder if we can get him to jump off the bridge. <laughs> Oh man, he's probably dropped a health too. Oh, I'm gonna go get it. A whole health? Yeah. A good. health? He's dropped a health? A health. Wait, how did you get my echoes? Whatever. You're each <laughs> so you say that to me. Them. Like, I got your echoes. Like, uh, <laughs> so give him back, Mumbleo. Oh, I don't know man, how they got him, like, cutthroat in here. 
Look, it's the race. Race prep is how it goes. It's always about to race with you, you bum, racist. Bum, 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 bum. Um, right, where, where are we here? Bob's psychotic tweet is about Trump and other catching COVID. He is celebrating them being ill and that they might die. He did that with Boris as well. Uh, it's not a good look, like, hoping for people. And I like it when people are like, okay, look, I'm not saying I hope they die. I'm saying it would be better if they did. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's the oh. same thing. This is not Dude, this... This dog is crazy, yo. Yo. Like, we have a general sort of implied rule here that we don't wish death upon people. That's something we try to avoid, I'd say. You know what? I think that's a pretty good rule. I think it's neat. I don't know if that's a hot take, but I'm willing to defend it. Probably is, in this day and age. No, I'm going to Kratos. Athena! Touch my dangers! Athena! Oh, dude. Fucking wrecked those two. Nice. Roy answer it. On to Father Gascogne. Sort of, maybe. We'll get there. We'll it's Rex, get there. kill him. No. <gasps> Don't kill Rex. The script, the script you says. You may try. The script says not to kill Rex, so I won't. Were you doing you may try as a reference or just saying that in general? Uh, I'm not a general. So. No, not you, Rex. No, it's about you. <clears throat> Fine. Uh, don't I get the, the tism melody thing here somewhere? I just killed a doggo. Rago, don't look at the stream. <laughs> it's too, it's too gruesome. Wah, 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 wah. Head pets for Moodle. Hooray! Gotcha, bitch. Oh, man. Oh, that that clutch flinch. Okay, clutch that didn't work out. Ooh. Oh no, you missed. Hey, metal. What's the meaning of life? A yumbo. The meaning of life. Jeez, that's pretty heavy for a stream by Bloodborne. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Ari Patrick, if what people wanted was just a remaster of the OT, why did slash do people not like the special edition, and why is TFA so bad? Oh yeah, because the constant criticism being they just want the OT again. Um, well, that's the problem, is this weird dichotomy, but secondly, Mando kind of proved there is some validity to that. Just saying. Even though, yeah. this is complicated, because I don't consider what we saw of Luke in Mando to be the OT. That's The OT is a little bit more meaningful than Luke chops down robots. Yeah, um, it's a little more important than that. Um, like Han is not just guy who sometimes shot stormtroopers. Luke is not some guy who swung his lightsaber. It's like the the actions that they take in combat that are the cool parts are not the reasons why these characters are memorable. If every character was as beloved as they are because of the superficial aspects of what they do when they're fighting and doing cool things, then the bar would be set so low for heroic characters. So um, low, you say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> then it would just be... There, there are reasons that... Let's see, what is it? Basically, what was it? But 40 years have passed and we still, you know, think of Han Solo and Luke Skywalker as their, you know, original trilogy manifestations. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Boom is funny. I agree. Uh, yeah, you come on, I'm mutually of the SS objection. <laughs> Got a mixing set for Axmas and some alcohol today, so I'm ready for this 35.7 hour Bloodborne stream. Nice. I don't yeah. remember us saying we were going to stream for that long. You shot it. Look at the stream, Rag. Tell me, look. He's on a staircase. Oh, it's probably they were referring to when I killed the doggo. Oh, I don't know why they would encourage me to watch the channel. I know, it's kind of downright malicious. Oh, alright, jeez. Dude, he shot me. That's illegal. I'm gonna shoot him back. Is it now? Come, yum, come, yum, yum. 
Yumpel, kumpel, yumpel, yumpel, kumpel. Oh, I'm back here. All right, good, I guess. Sequels just lowered the bar for so many fans. It's sad. Uh, kind of. Wait, what lowered the bar? Like sorry? the sequel. Sequels just lowered the bar for so many fans. Oh. Yeah, they. Yeah, definitely. I thought. I thought I was thinking of prequels for a second. Um, but see, yeah, the sequels did. They clearly did. Do you put Mando did. above or below the prequels? What I made rate it's below. I, I was gonna say I think I'd put it below. Um, like the idea, like the prequels have good ideas in them that are just poorly executed. Um, Mando doesn't Mando have any ideas. Mando has like nothing. The, the good ideas in Mando are so rare and fleeting that it's it's kind of already being generous to call them good ideas that are present very deep within. Like, it's a show about bounty hunter, like bounty hunters, bounty hunting. It's like, no, though, it really isn't. Show That's about like Baby Yoda being traveled across places and sometimes stuff happens. Remember how up? in episode one of season one, 5,000 credits wasn't even enough to pay for fuel, and they never, ever mention how he gets fuel for the rest of the seasons, ever? <laughs> like, they take the time to highlight how this world works, so that they're like, by the way, ignore that. <laughs> you, can, you can repair a ship to... You Functional. can essentially take a ship that is... I don't even know how to describe it. Non-functional. And restore it to hyperdrive safe, spacefaring approved, fully functional with 1,000 credits. But 5k it isn't even enough for fuel. And one might say, in defense of that, well, there's just a lot of, you know, the, the price of fuel is just really, really high. It's so high, you know, it, it's just insanely high to that degree. And I would say, then how come nobody ever mentions it ever and never seems to weigh on travel in any regard? What's the best and worst Mando episode in both season one and season two? Like across the them both or individually? Yeah, across them both. So I think that the worst is still season one, episode four. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple pretty solid contenders. Yep. Um, that includes the finale, to be honest, of season one. Yeah. Dude, that was uh, such a bad. A lot of bad ones. Uh, as for which one is the best? Um. Season two, episode five? I think that might be it, yeah. It was also what I would probably call the most unengaging the most boring i'd probably say yeah i, found, I think i was the most bored with that related. episode yeah all right call me crazy but didn't he <sighs> call me crazy but didn't he give the fish man the calamari currency he accepted in season one could it be worth different than credits well if it's a thousand credits worth yeah, so that's he the, gives that's, him yeah, the calamari the flan, but that, that's a good point. He gives him the car, calamari flan that he gets from season one, which is one of those little, that's like half, one of those right? tiny little bitty things of, oh, hey, I remember the one you got that last season. And he's been carrying that shit around in like his pocket, those gummy discs. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is it, it is exactly it, like oftentimes, which, which happens multiple times in the show, where he just like pours money into someone's hand and it's exactly the amount they need. Um... But then he calls it like a uh, thousand credits. So. Well, um, Brief Karga says he can give him it in flan, but it'll be half of what the bounty actually was, right? The idea being. Not only that, all the bounties. All of the bounties he collected and brought in, which were like five or six, he gets back to Grief Karga. And Grief is like, here's your money, and it's Imperial credits, which still spend. However, um,. Rags doesn't. So, so fuck. Um, Mando. Mando doesn't accept. Uh, Mando doesn't accept them because he says the Empire isn't around anymore. And so Grief says, "All right, I can pay you in calamari flan, but he can only pay half." And Mando's like, "Okay." 
Mando is a huge cuck, mm -hmm. and grief is and grief. Karga is shit at his job, or well, we don't know. We don't know if there's either two possibilities here. Either grief Karga is really really shit at his job, and he doesn't like clear with his bounty hunters their method of payment beforehand. But at the same time, that is just as much on the bounty hunters, like Mando. Mando's an idiot for not knowing how he would get paid. Like, surely when you take bounties, you know what the bounty, like, what what the, You'd the price is. But you'd also know the situation, how... as in, like, sometimes grief might not even be able to pay you. They must know this. Or at least not pay you in the currency you'd expect. That must be something that they're yeah, aware of. It can't be- it, it couldn't possibly be a surprise to you. Somebody must have fucked up royally mm -hmm. for you to be surprised at the currency you're being paid in. And for him to just go, okay, like, I guess I'll just accept half payment I, for all of the work that I just did. Because they He's know like each other well, right? Like, they are- they are very much acquainted. And then the fact that he's like, you know, grief, credits don't spend very well. And he's like, yeah, they do. Like, why are they yeah, having this conversation? Like, they still spend, which is all you need. Like, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters about money is if they spend. But also, this is a conversation that they should have had ages ago. They should both know this, you know? Yeah, what has he been getting his, he's, because Grief puts the credits on the table and doesn't even say anything. Like, this is what you always get paid with. Because it's not even odd. It's like, yeah, here you go. Here's your payment. And Mando was surprised for some reason to be like, Imperial credits, the Empire's not around anymore. What has Mando been getting paid in and all the other years that he's been doing this? Yeah, the problem would be with one or the other, as in, either Mando shouldn't be surprised, and that's what he gets paid in, or Grief is, this is the first time Grief has ever paid him in this, and should thus be prepared for him to be like, hey, what? And Mando should be surprised and say, you've never paid me in Imperial credits before, which makes you wonder, what is the secondary payment? And... To be honest, there's. I would imagine that if this was a real universe, every planet would have its own currency, and it would. Every planet would have its own currency and exchange rate. Because uh, getting a whole planet to adopt the currency of other things is probably going to be like a. Be it's not worth it to ever do to just swap over money. Uh, plus, we saw how well that works for the EU. Uh, just everyone just adopting the same kind of currency when there's a lot of different economies involved and stuff. It's just not a good idea. Um, but it always it always comes back to Mando. It's just different degrees of how much grief is at fault. Either zero or a lot. But it always, either way, comes back to Mando not establishing how he gets paid. Which is kind of the... It's not. It's like the point of bounty hunting is to get paid. It's a means to an end because it's a job, unless you're just in it for the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> um, I missed this logic really... monitoring the last few days. Well, there you go. Wouldn't uh, rags? Wouldn't imperial credits be worth more because it's rarer than when the empire was around? No. Um, sheer rarity of something doesn't give it value. Um, historical money can have a lot of value. For instance, Confederate money, uh, Confederate States of America, that money is worth a shit ton because of its ties to American history. It's a very big collector's item, and they didn't make that for very long. Um, but in, there would be, there would still be so much Imperial credit money in circulation because it's only been like f five years. So really, it's been five years since the Battle of Yavin when the first episode began. I think how long that would take to change that, galactically. Yeah, oh, yeah, like, the money is still everywhere. Like, there's no reason to... Like, just pragmatically, the money would still be used um, uh, across the galaxy. Um, but, uh, no, it would just because they're... Just because they're not being rare anymore, does, especially because it's because of money. If you're going to use money as money, not as specific collector's items, then it would lose its value as you know, legal tender for all that's both public and private, because the people who are around to back it up no longer exist anymore. Um, so, Rags, wouldn't... Um, just wondering, how would you have conveyed to the audience that the Imperial credits are becoming increasingly hard to spend? I mean, oh, that, that's just a throwaway line. You could have Mando say, when Mando's at the table, he accepts the Imperial credits that he's supposed to get paid for the job, 
and he's gonna he and he just says to grief uh you know you can't pay me an imperial credits forever or you know these things yeah. you know these credits don't go as just, far as they used to now that the empire is gone just something like that it's just a couple, couple you could even get away with it as away. he hands it to mando mando looks at it looks at him and then he, and then grief just goes they still spend just just yeah, the it, implication alone it's like i don't want to have these and it's like they still work they still work yeah they still work but i i would go for the mando saying you know just you can't pay me in these forever these yeah. you know you know these don't go as far as they used to or what well, even he could be something like maybe if the maybe if the new republic you know maybe if they could get off their ass and make some you know make some of their own money we something or you could tie it in directly to navarro as a planet i mean if you wanted to be some ideal world building every planet would have its own currency <clears throat> navarro navarro's currency or local money uh I mean, I, I could sit down and come up with some ideas, but just my first suggestion, I think, works really well. Oh, you um, you have access to chat right now. Yo-Yo is asking for a fuck up. Oh, what? I see it. I now. never, I yeah. never get why people do that. It's just like, why? You must be so bored. Wasn't the point of that bit that he has to give Imperial credits or flan because their guild isn't doing so well, so he has no more Republic credits to give? So. The Republic credits probably wouldn't be worth a lot either. They would arguably be worth less. If you like, if I was in Mando's position, I would want the Imperial credits. The Empire was a very large force in the galaxy. They were the dominant force in the galaxy, and they only disbanded essentially like what at most five <clears throat> years ago, but it probably far less. Mm -hmm. It is the established currency that everybody kind of uses. I would still want that, because on a galactic scale, it would take longer for that currency to go out of service. And the Republic doesn't have much of a presence on Navarro at all. Uh, they're kind of seen as a joke. In fact, Mando even says that. Um, they're they're a fledgling, you know, new government. Uh, and I don't think that people wouldn't have enough trust in the currency. I think because that's a big part of it. Because if you just don't trust that the money's going to be worth anything then it doesn't have any value to you. It's really that simple. I mean, it isn't simple. Economics aren't simple, but <laughs> that part of it is, you know? Well, uh, and, and you know what? When, when writing this, it's a great opportunity just to be like, let's figure this out. How does this world look? How is it doing right now? Instead, they sort it, of... They ra very rarely comment on uh, currency in the show. When they do, it's frustrating. Was it rags if every planet had its own currency? The possessive of it does not have an apostrophe. Own currency, you would be sitting here losing your mind about how that wouldn't work. No, I don't think I would. Wait, why would I, we say I, that I wouldn't think... work? Yeah, I. I always find that so strange to make a comment like that. Now, the Republic credits, I understand because the Republic has been around for th thousands and thousands of years. So right, I can right. understand why, like, Republic credits would be practically ubiquitous throughout the galaxy. However, if a planet chose not to... Uh, in, in, in fact, the idea that you could either use Republic credits or your planet would use your own currency probably was a huge aspect of the constant trade disputes and everything that we got a whiff of in the prequels. You know, what is the, you know, trade routes and disputes would absolutely be tied in with what is the current, you know, local currency versus, you know, galactic currency, galactic republic currency. Um, but when you imagine, like, I, I think part of this, uh, I think this comment is partially born from the, the problem with Star Wars and that they devalue just how much a planet is. Because you go to a planet and it's, it's just like a, a city, yeah. like Tatooine. Tatooine's a whole planet. Right? But you, the only place they go to on Tatooine is Moss Eisley. It's like, no, there, there's other places. Like, like Naboo is a whole planet. It's not just feed. Like, all Naboo's of these planets the... that they go to are, like, like imagine Earth, right? I mean, and think of all the currencies that we have here on Earth. Mm -hmm. But Star Wars kind of unfortunately to a degree i don't think it's necessarily its fault it is now more than it used to be but it makes the whole the, the idea of having an entire planet seem very small 
like just a city or a community has to accept the new currency or something like that, and that's just it. It's not like it's a whole planet of people, billions of people on a planet. <clears throat> and also, like, like, do you speak Wookiee? No, like, I don't. Wookiee's a race. Do you speak the language of this entire race? Like, even that sort of thing. It, it, it's little things like that that did get us to kind of accept simplicity. Um, I mean, I can there's... see how that might have happened if it really is just one language shared by the entire race. It's just it simply evolved out. They just, yeah. It would get, like, I could picture a Wookiee being like, you know, there are differences between how Eastern Wookiees and Western Wookiees speak. And you're like, okay, that's fine. That's fair. I think we, we, we I bet you'd like imagine aliens look at human languages as a whole and just call them human. We'd be like, excuse me. Like, because they're just so different in how they communicate, I guess. However they do it. Come here. One mentions currency is a problem even in 40k. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, every planet is going to have its own kind of currency and you have to have... Like, there would be... Like, you know how lawyers, right? The only job of lawyers is to, like, accurately dispense the law basically and you would think oh it's it's just people you would have people whose job it was probably in star wars to just handle and manage economies and monies um and trade stuff like it, it would be very complicated that's the thing it's complicated in the real world you know how all this stuff is calculated and it and in the future it would just be probably what it is now just on a galactic scale but they're used to having to deal with it so it probably it wouldn't be an issue it would be technically more complicated but it wouldn't be an issue it's like i am going to naboo i have navarro money um so when you travel you'd be like okay so my money's going to be worth such and such on this planet which means maybe on the way to Navarro, if I'm coming from Tatooine, I should stop at such and such planet, maybe exchange currency so that when I get to Naboo, it'll be worth a bit more. Mm -hmm. It's like if you retired, like if um, if you retired with a pension or something here in America and you moved to the Philippines, right? You could live really, really well because the currency goes farther. It's, just, it's one of those little things, and I and, think it'll be interesting. Yeah, I don't, and, I, I, and I don't expect... Go ahead. Our baseline when we were talking about the fucking the state of affairs on Tatooine and in Phantom Menace was, I would imagine most people in the Galactic uh, Republic would have almost all planets might have their own local currencies, but they're all gonna want to be able to exchange for Galactic Republic credits. Like that's probably something they're all gonna do. I'm willing to accept some of them might not. They're on the outskirts or whatever, but not fucking Mos Eisley. Like there's just no way the amount of trading and hunting and, and, and everything that goes on there, that they wouldn't be prepared for someone to come in wishing to use their credits. It's like, of course they should. Um, and when we have... Once you get into the idea of a, a Galactic Republic being able to operate, part of that operation is managing economies. So I, I don't have an issue, no, and I don't think I ever had, with, like, Galactic Commerce... They would have figured it out in a way that's good enough with problems here and there which are the trade disputes and if they get particularly bad then you might have conflicts of this kind or the other so i, I don't expect this to ever be you know gotten into in detail in the movies of course but you know that's little the thing. nods they to never it had to there would be nice. but they can't even handle basic exchanges of of currency like it just brings into question all these things and then we like have to talk about what it implies on a deeper level and why they needed to avoid it hence why we the solution of everyone just passes stuff to each other and they never name it so that we can assume it all just makes sense everyone's following like they can see it they know how much it is they've already agreed upon yeah. it whatever don't explicitly say a thousand credits and all you could do is this and then also say five thousand credits doesn't get me fuel it's like i'm confused <laughs> I mean, yeah, if he said 5,000 credits doesn't, you know, isn't enough to pay for fuel, then, it, you know, what if Grief said, well, then you should have fueled up in the core systems, you know, oh, that'd be closer good. to the heart yeah, of the Republic. You know, it, the further away you get, the further you get away from the core systems, then the price of fuel can fluctuate a great deal. Maybe you're further away from the supply. Maybe the closer you are to a, a depot or a fuel producing hub of the galaxy the the more expensive it gets as you get further away from that you know it's one of those things but it's just these little lines 
that that Mando or Grief could say that are just they just add a little bit of world building and a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here and a little bit there it all adds up into this pile that is not the actual race but just the yeah this is just making sure everything works Mm -hmm. Very chill. Someone said Disney made up this whole fuel deal. Yeah, they. as far as I know, they did. It was never an issue before. I assume that in Star Wars, that, like, it, it was like Mass Effect, right? The first thing that you see in the whole Mass Effect trilogy is basically text that says, don't worry, it's the Mass Effect. They named the whole, tr they, they named the whole series, the franchise, after their answer for basically unlimited, incredible unlimited energy. Hmm. Don't even think about it. You don't have to. It's the Mass Effect. <clears throat> and then they go from there. And Disney's like, nah, fuel is like a really precious commodity and you could totally run out of it and it's constantly something on everybody's mind when it never was before. If they would have started with the fuel quote-unquote crisis or the fuel concern, then it would have made more sense. But they just pull it out of their ass from nowhere. Imagine my shock. Um, I don't even... Was there a sewage at the start of that or was it just... <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it is stated that the T-16 Skyhopper, which Luke has flown, has similar controls to the T-65 X-Wing. Uh, I don't think that's in response to anything. Uh, people usually cite that whenever someone says uh, he learned how to use an X-Wing from nowhere. He's a Mary Sue. Um, but he has experience no, with ships, no, and no, apparently the T-16 Skyhopper, which he's very familiar with, shares designs with... Uh, the X-Wing. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Do they say that in the movies, I can't remember. I know they mention he's going to benefit from having done what he's done in Tatooine, but I don't know if they're that specific. Yeah, he has ex he has experience flying in ships, shooting at small targets. And it falls all the way down. You it is a little bitty throwaway line, and it's something. Yes, sir. Oh, God, yeah. You the fall. only time they ever worried about fuel was in episode one. Oh, that comment disappeared. Never mind. Oh yeah, they. I guess they run out in Phantom Menace, right? Or they're running out. I can't remember. Well, he said the fuel was well, like the fuel lines are leaking, which is not probably. Which in the in the issue with that isn't that. Oh no, we're we don't you know we're not getting the fuel that we paid for. It's we have a volatile substance that's currently uncontrolled and running through the ship systems. Yeah, and he also repairs. Not good. <laughs> Yeah. He doesn't ask for more fuel, he asks for repairs, so that is interesting. Well, he says the parts he needs. Yeah, there's there's some room for interpretation with there's that. There's a hyperdrive that was the fuel for the hyperdrive. Yeah, I can totally believe that fuel for the hyperdrive would be super volatile. Well, in Solo it is. Yeah, I mean, I totally whatever. believe that. What is it, Galaxium or something? an incredible something? piece of high-energy technology. The, the, the fuel that they use for it must, you know, it has to provide that energy. And if you're going to compact it down into smaller, you know, something small, it's probably going to have a shit ton of energy per square inch. Rats. Square inch of surface area. But, you know, you get what I mean. Yeah. Gimbo. My issue with the Vader scene in Rogue One was that it contradicts A New Hope. Leia tells Vader that they were on a diplomatic mission, which wouldn't make sense since they just fled the battle and were shot out minutes ago. Um, wouldn't you still claim such things? Could you still not claim it? I'd have to look at the specific dialogue, but couldn't it still line up that Leia is just playing incredibly dumb because she can? Dumbo. <clears throat> to be at, um... Fuck, what is even the planet at the end of Rogue One? I forget the name of it, but... They know they were there, and Vader's accusing her of having gotten the plans. She's obviously oh. going to deny that, and she comes up with... Yeah, we're on a it. diplomatic mission. Or rather, the, the, the guy who's strangling does. I imagine they both did, but... Yeah. Um... Leia obviously lied. We all know that she lied, but uh, how? I guess the criticism is why would she try a lie like that? Is that what we're saying? How you doing, man? Have, have you killed Gascoigne yet? No. Did you? I'm moving toward him next. Same. Did you upgrade your weapon yet? Huh? Huh? I'm about to. No. You're faster, nerd. I'm not as good as you. <laughs> Write um, that on my. 
Oh no, don't throw a Molotov. Oh, no, 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 uh, well, that. <laughs> I think this yeah, is German. not the fast way of doing this. Uh, yeah, use PC part picker. It's a good one. Boom. Hyperdrive generator is gone, Master. We need a new one. Well, I think they, <laughs> I think they said the fuel lines are leaking. And depending on what damage is sustained, th like those two things don't counter each other. What is it you just... Farewell, good hunter. Which way do I go? I think I go up. <clears throat> I barely know where up is because I don't have the thing. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> All right. Someone said another ship should have escaped the fight, then met with her ship. Her ship should not have been at the battle. Yeah, no, that's no, really no. dumb. I agree with that. Very yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that that was the actual fan service really seeping in, being like, "Look, it's Leia on this ship in this fight. Vader's right there. Look, 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 look." It's like you can't. Like you can't show up on a ship like that with you on board, going to. You can't do that. That's dumb. We were on a diplomatic mission. If this is a consular ship, then where is the ambassador? More like a consular. <laughs> nice. Uh, I didn't want to shiny a shinier vision of the Jedi being extinct. Is that in reference to? I don't know what that's in reference to. This is this is ages ago. To land somewhere to refuel and repair the ship. I yeah. Can, so the... they could have a fuel line leaking and also a new hyperdrive, Ref refuel and repair. Yes. Um, Pat oh, oh. Patrick is mad that we don't like being subjected to Hollywood's active measures, demoralization. Heaven forbid, we want to not be miserable sad sacks. Um, I mean, they think they're creating stuff that makes people happy. They just need to, you know... Uh, someone just sent me a message and said, uh, I feel like the biggest issue with Rogue One is that it introduces the plot hole, or at least contrivance that. Why didn't Leia's ship... Why did Leia's ship exit hyperspace over Tatooine, an outer rim world, on the way to a presumably core system? Well, the fact that Leia wanted to contact Obi-Wan... Um, I don't know if that's a... Maybe, yeah. Like, she knew that the Empire would be on her tail. And she, yeah, so... she wanted him for help, I guess. Yeah. Which is weird, so you're leading the Empire and the Imperial yeah, fleet to yeah. Obi-Wan? Like, you want to be careful there, Leia. Especially because you put a message on the droid that specifically addresses Obi-Wan Kenobi, who Darth Vader absolutely knows, and now he knows he's on Tatooine. Yeah, Vader don't. doesn't fuck around when he's looking for shit, so... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. No movie's perfect. That really hurts the beginning of A New Hope, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Begin a New Hope's uh, beginning is, is kind of crazy, honestly. Like, it is kind of The crazy, odds yeah. that the pod lands and ends up on a fucking sand crawler that ends up being bought by Luke, who ends up being found by Ben. It's like, damn. Yeah, That's it's like, um, shit, I mean, we saw this in Mandalorian. We see this often, but in Mandalorian, when Ahsoka tells Mando to go to that planet and go to the Jedi Temple there, she mm -hmm. doesn't tell him anything more specific other than where the temple is located on that planet. And in the next episode, she's... he's shown arriving at it, and I'm like, yeah, she says How it's, did... um, does she say at the top of the a mountain or the mountain? And it's just like, mountain? Like, there's that a lot of mountains. Very... It's not it's even not a high. Even... It's not even, yeah. yeah, you could walk up it without an issue. Quickly, like, yeah. It's a hill. <laughs> it's barely it's a, a hill mountain. It's a hill in a hilly hill land. And if she had said it's on the hill, it'd be like, the hill. <laughs> this is a planet with one hill. First yeah, off, I'd have to look for that hill, which ba basically doesn't help, but... Oh, so is it she's a princess, not a master tactician? Come on. So, so it said, go to the moon. There you will find a crater with what you desire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, basically. You know? I love that the moon acts as like a earth shield from crater thingies and stuff. But it spins around and attracts it to them or whatever. I've never seen a video about um, it. It also helps that the uh, that we have a thick atmosphere, and the moon does not. Yeah. Thick. All right, Father Gascoin. He's not actually my dad, but oh, I'll allow it, I guess. Shame, I guess. 
Oh, it's a thank you, Moon. It's a wild way of like. Does it spin? That's correct. The moon has the moon is tidally oh. locked, much like I, I think almost all of the moons in the solar system are tidally locked. <laughs> Will building but, yeah, that moon. Uh, yeah, eventually all moons. I, I'm pretty sure that eventually, given enough time, and it takes a long ass time. But all moons will become tidally locked to the planet they're orbiting. Metal, please say. Face. Metal, please say. I guess they must be friends now. It's a final line I need for my Ethan mem. Mem. Right. I I guess they must be friends now. Do, do, do what you will with that. Hello, Gus Koigner. How are you doing, sir? Oh God, he's attacking me. I just wasted a fucking vial for the reason. <laughs> Because I got spooked. Why is he so angry? I didn't do nothing. I know, right? Hey, I didn't get the fucking report. The closest to the planet is stronger than the other side. Oh, I got it. Okay, that's fair enough. Oh, what's that smell? So, I thought the latest hypothesis is that we will eventually lose the moon. Maybe the moon gets... I heard that it's getting a... It's like moving by a very tiny amount. It's not technically always the same distance. It's uh, just it changes a little bit. Also, the moon does spin. It spins at the same distance. But yeah. God damn it. Dang it. I... Oh, fucking up those parries, dude. Yeah, I'm fucking all mine up. Got him, but I was. No, it's not fair. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. America landed on the moon first. Does that mean they own it? No. Um, Didn't America announce that it's like, for everyone? Or something? Much like Antarctica, it is not owned by any single country. Um, it is uh, to to promote the unity of mankind and good stuff. And also militarily, yeah, no one can yeah can't use Antarctica for military stuff. Or yeah, no one country can own the moon. Or the moon. Oh no. Get the fucking Maybe they should take over the moon. Maybe they should because China would hardly be so negative. Oh, he ignored the music box twice. What the hell? Wait, you used the music box? Wow. Of course. Noob. Chat, I didn't use it. That means I'm a Chad. Well, he's just ignoring it. I only used it once. I'm a Chad now. Three. Mel's a simp. Fun. Music simp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we? Um, Patrick is mad. Rice cousin kiss Sunny. I don't know if he uses. I don't know what that means. Hi, Rags. Hey. Thank you for recommending a Plague's Tale: Innocence, a great game. Also, hi everyone else present. Hello. Oh. Okay, I beat him now. So, I think what happened was. I used the music box once, it worked, and then I used it twice after that, but it was right when he jumped up. So I think the the, the thing stacked for uses, even though it didn't use it properly. Twice. That's by my guess in Heimer here. <coughs> you guess, it's but you do not know. It makes you box. a bit too good the game. I'm afraid for Fringle. Yeah, you still haven't popped up, huh? Or are yeah. you talking about other things? Oh, well. Soup. What's that smell? It's blood! <laughs> I think I have enough for another upgrade arena for my Klevenheim. It's all you do. I did it. I just did it. I did it just now. Wait, what, what do I need to do to put, like, weapons into the weapon? Do I need, like, some tool for that? Oh, uh, you yeah. get it right after Gascoin, I think. Oh, well, I should probably just... Walked up there first. <laughs> oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry. Tomp of Odin. Tomp of Odin. Oh, there. That is conceited, pretentious. Wait a minute. Who's, whose voice is actually the most powerful? Can Can you and Rags talk at the same time? I'm curious. Hello, my name no, is... No, I, I can't Rags. talk at the same time as Rags. I mean, yeah, I guess it's prioritizing... I'm always talking at the same time as Rags. It's prioritizing you over metal, Rags. Oh, oh wow! Oh. Hey! Metal goes. That's a pleasant change of pace. Yeah, that's, that's I like a, that. I have to get the gas train. I mean, what? Oh my god! 
don't do it. Wait, is this like a new thing that happens now on Discord? It's just something we've noticed. Fire. It's not, you know, well, huh. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, how do I Rex access? is the top dog, you bet. You bet I am. Top doggo. Had your kids, oh, had your wife. <laughs> top doggo is coming for your, uh, something that rhymes. Coming Echo. for your bitches. How do I just Talk use? Rhymes. Use what? Uh, square. No, like, how do I get to the, um, uh, oh, whatever, fine, fine, what fine, fine. Want? What do you want? Uh, Rags the smallest thing you know. Wow. That's... Rags, I don't, this guy, the same guy who mentioned the Rogue One contrivance said, I don't think it's contrived that the pod would hit Tatooine in the general area of Obi-Wan. If Luke hadn't bought the droids, Luke still would have probably been called upon by Obi-Wan. We can assume the pod was meant to go in his general area, I suppose, right? Uh... Sure. If it... I don't think there's any lines for that. Yeah, I mean... I would assume that a pod can be controlled, and the droids were... To, in, in Obi... like... an R2-D2 par in particular would know where to go. Then again, that makes you wonder... They went straight to Obi Wan from the pod when the Empire was in orbit chasing them, and they got a little bit lucky that they didn't get blasted out of space. There's a lot of ways the plan could go really, really wrong. Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't get stronger the more I look at it. Look, sir, <coughs> droids. You're a droid, Deb. Shut up. No. Deb on the droids. Do what did I go with your logo? Oh no. What did that fortification even do? I'm not even going to check. I just know it is good. Wow. I suck the dong. Did you squish the bruge? Yes. Put so it on your Bloodstuff Beast is next, right? <clears throat> yeah, I get those fun tisms ready. Funyuns? Throw my ball. Okay. Uh. That conceited, pretentious, half balding, limp weened, soft brained sack of scrotal wasting, 300 IQ, I have a film degree and everyone needs to know it, maxi pad sniffing, f simp rated, Revenge of the Sith last? What was happening? <laughs> I don't. Did he do that? Did Patrick <clears throat> rate Revenge of the Sith the lowest? Damn. Wait, you already have 26 vitality? I'll oh, shenanigans. Surely. Yeah, yeah. I, that sounds like something he'd do. He thinks TLJ is the best, right? Oh, no, second best. Oof. I'd be I would be surprised if you just said it was the best. Sounds like a yeah, Patrick thing to say. Either. I might be giving him way too much credit. Um, good old Platy. Cathedral Ward. Oh yeah, me and Mel are probably not going to be doing all of the bonus side things that happen in this game, rather than just oh, soldier on. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't the New Republic build their own Death Star just as a just in case? That would make for a really good storyline, I think. The Republic can uh, make yeah, a Death Star. Um, a lot of yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, one one side wants to build one, and the other side is like, fuck no. I think it would be tough to do it, and we'd need a lot of time. But I I would like it that Leia is the one that ends up approving it, and it's like we just have to really work on justifying it, and it would have to be. It would be really tough. I would think Leia would be against it more than anything. That's hence why I said it would take a lot to uh, make it happen. Yeah. But if so, we're going to get a main I, I character think... to do it, I, I feel like she's going to be the closest one. And if we if we tr crank the uh, the grief of never wanting an Empire-like I... entity to rise again. No, I, I think that's a good jumping off point to introduce a new potential <coughs> antagonist or partial antagonist. <clears throat> I don't want it to be um, a strictly evil decision. Only evil people can build super weapons. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, that, that's the quad. Well, I, 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 antagonist would. He'd still be evil or not. He'd still be the antagonist. And, um, I, and I guess I don't necessarily want it. To, I don't know. It sequesters it to like that is the thing to be defeated now. This person who's decided this thing will happen, rather than making it complicated. Um, I sure, and I could. I I would. It would be easier for. It would be easier to justify why they want it. But to try and justify it to the audience would be very difficult. Yeah, I don't know, because I, um, I like the idea of her overstepping in terms of destroying the Empire, but I, make it a Death yeah. Star's probably too far. Yeah, I wouldn't make it a Death Star either. I wouldn't make it a... Just make it just a, a really strong army 
she puts a a martial you know preference on like the, the funding um, that they have and we how could have far her push the um the hawkish nature of the republic to a certain extent and then she gets like outdone by other members of the republic that are like yes let's build a death star and she could be like jesus christ what and they're like i mean you've led us here or something like that and that's when she has to back the fuck out or try and push against it some kind of yeah, if I had to bring in another a, a, a Republic Death Star, something like that, though I wouldn't do that. Yeah, they so definitely... I was going to say, that would probably be the, another reason why not, you shouldn't do it. It's like, we don't need any more Death Stars, let's work with other stuff. Yeah, the galaxy would never... The galaxy would never allow that to happen ever again. No one would ever... Yeah. Just build a thousand mini ships and hyperdrive and slam them through anything. It's like no, 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 no. Okay, that. They don't need that, that many. That is. Uh -oh. I don't even know how we would retcon it, but I don't want that to be a thing. Hyperspace ramming. If ever we got to write like anything to do with Star Wars, I would just be like, oh. I would just. I would just ignore it. I think that would be. Act like it never <laughs> yeah. happened. Someone's like, could you use hyperdrive as a weapon? And someone else looks at them like, what? No. <laughs> no. What are you, what are you saying? Like, no. Doesn't work that way, and you'd be like, "Oh." No one would even bring it up. It's like it's not even some people consider. Backstabbing is cheap, Moodle. Well, at least not using a shield, right, guys? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Imagine using a thing designed to protect you to protect you. Cringe. Oh, Jesus, look at that health they tried to steal from me. Clear away. Molotov cocktailerinos. By the way, I, I just got like um. What do, you, what do you call it when you're like locked into a series of hits? You got unlocked? That's it, yeah. I got stun locked by like four different sources, but um, I survived with like a sliver of health. I, I actually saw that right when you said it. So, um, upgrade in health right. in this game? I'm just saying. I'm trying to brag, but just I saying. beat them handily. There's no bragging for stun locking. Fuck that shit. You bragging. either do or you don't. I mean, you could probably try and mediate it, but I still consider it bullshit. Oh, yeah. It's the, the big what a German knows English better than a Welshman. I mean, it happens occasionally. Hey, but then I, say, like, I nailed uh, not leaving Gascoigne's area until getting this gem. Uh, you didn't, it was so. Real, real funny for you, but you interrupted me and I'm sad. Um, I mean, I valued my joke more than yours. No! Take it back. There is no joke cue that you get precedent over. You have to fight, and you have to die. I'll fight you and then die. Fight for your right to giggle. Yeah, I'm gonna giggle. Even as a kid, I thought the OT was better than the PT. I enjoyed the PT then, not now, but the OT was still strictly better. Also, high rags. Hi. I remember thinking that when I watched them all. I was like, the OT was better than this, but I like this. Yeah, I like the um, I like the prequel trilogy. Uh, they're bad, but I appreciate them and what they did, and there was an I there were ideas behind them. I tussled I, the I hair the of the prequel Find trilogy. Me. I'll check your highlighted messages. What is this? I'm willing to give Metal a BJ, not rags. Heat, not my mouth. Oh my and goodness. Bro, something with suffocate to dead. I can't oh. read the first of that. James is drunk, so... You can breathe through your nose. <laughs> no, no. Oh, me. Nonsense. <laughs> Not since Trump. You're like, oh. Oh, I feel <laughs> Trump ruined Christmas. Trump ruined what? noses. What happened? <laughs> he took my nose from me. Make noses great again. You, give me items. At least I think he does get me Die. Fire paper. Oh, yeah. No. Fire paper. This argument is BS. The sequel trilogy was blatantly trying to jack off people's nostalgia of the OT. True. Oh, other thoughts, okay. <laughs> what are you drinking, James? Everything. What do you do with insight in this game again? Like, what do we use it for typically? I can't remember. You buy, uh, you buy things with it, right? We can do. I think you can buy things with it, if I remember correctly. It also changes some bosses and, and things. I think in a third insight, you can see the... Cthulhu thing that drags you into the DLC. Neat. Me thinks. Mm. <laughs> also, I don't have water or anything else to drink. Someone go get grab me something. Thank you. No. Oh man. 
You Repl never do. It's so rude. Replaying Jedi Academy was just as fun as before. Uh, I should hope so. I can imagine that game holds up pretty well. Um, Star Destroyers have a massive weakness. They have no rear weapons. A ship can sit def safely behind it. Also high wags. Hello. Um, but they do have TIE Fighters, though. Um, not to yeah. imply there that, like, that means that that's not something they should account for. Because I, I, I kind of agree. I think that's probably something they should work I on. I think so, yeah. And they're often, they're often not alone, uh, Star Destroyers. Yeah. That's it, like, not just TIE Fighters, but other Star Destroyers. Um... Hi, Rags. Hey! I was glad to hear that you liked B Baton Kaitos? Baton Kaitos? Baton Kaitos, yeah. Baton -Kaitos. Eternal Wings in the Last Ocean. Have you played the second game, Origins? It streamlined no, a, a lot not. of things from the first one. Oh, um, maybe one of these days I'll get an emulator and give it a shot, but uh, no, I have not played... Um, I have not played Origins, no. Is this because racism? Like, you know, what's going on? Yes. Damn. Racist against the Japanese. Japanards. Oh, right, yeah. We need antidotes for this Tizami enemy. I forgot. I'm going to go for it. I'll be right there. But if you do that, I'll get really far ahead of you. I can refill my. Oh, my God. Uh. Contra Patrick, what about adults who thought the OT was amazing at the same time of release and have been Star Wars fans ever since? Because they exist. In fairness to Patrick, he, his arguments require that you don't know stuff to counter them. So you got to consider that when you respond to them. It's not that you're watching movies wrong, it's that you have a different opinion, and that's wrong. Hi, Rags. Hey. You know what happens. I believe it. Like I said, the only time that I feel like you're watching movies wrong comes in is just in relation to the absorption of knowledge from the thing that you consumed. If you, like, manage to watch something that didn't even exist, that sort of shit, it's like, man, you watched it wrong. It sounds like a weird thing to say, you know? It does sound odd. Did I pick up any of those weird red bloops? I did. Oh. Oh well. Um, kids today do not like the sequels. I mean, I'm sure plenty of kids do and plenty of kids don't, right? We don't really rely on children for... Yeah, kids are not great gauges for content, but I could see why they wouldn't like it. Yeah. If, if toy sales are anything to go off of. Apparently those are really horrible. But, like, yeah, if I was a kid, like, who do you, like, see yourself as? I'm like, I don't know. Hmm, I have to destroy the minigun person. I remember this. Um. So what season of EFAP are we on now? Asking for EFAP.me. Uh, I think I said that we should probably start splitting them into the years, so we're on season 3, technically. Because if we go by, like, every 10 episodes or something, the seasons are going to get ridiculous. If you really wanted to categorize them into seasons, anyway. I said, Rags went 40k, Chaos God, would you serve? It's sort of a tie between Slanesh and Zinch. Leaning towards Slanesh, though. Um... I think that's probably where I'd uh, what I'd stake my uh, uh, put my investment into. Make it a good payoff for that, maybe. I'm a teen, and almost every kid I've talked to about the sequel trilogy has said that they greatly dislike it. Hey, hi, I'm back. Was it you sick me, doggo? Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, Rags is a filthy heretic. The question assumed which one would I serve? Like, obviously, if I was. If I was in the universe, I wouldn't serve any of them. But I thought the question was like, if you had to serve, you know, one of them, which one would it be? Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was sort of built into the question. Because I didn't want to give a lame, oh, none of them, I wouldn't serve any of them. I thought it was part of the question. When will Mahler forcibly make you watch Buffy? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Oh, in time, my precious doggo. Same for Mel. Same for Jay. In time. I'm so convinced that Troll's real. 
That would be racism. When has the worst two these days? Yeah. It's very good. I really like it. I got this I've been letter. playing it almost every day. It's like it's what it's like kind of like one of my go-to casual games to play. I enjoy it greatly. Neato. Mr. Chris, thanks for the 10 Eurotisms. Here's some drinking money on me, you massive. Well, thank you very much. I trust we'll kick that Welsh fox ass hey. in the rain. Hey. I'm trying. I'll try. I will. Now I'm <laughs> drinking thanks to that mean statement. I actually. I'm halfway through this blue moon. Made a drank glitch myself, so. Cheers. Right. Some fire with coke. Um. Mutal, I sent you something important you have to read on Discord. All right, let's let's see. Let's let's check trick, it no, out. Do it. It's a trick. The greatest sentence ever written in the English language. All right, let's see. Let's see here. Uh, the horn goes. The horn goes of a dongfish is attached by a scungle to a kind of dill sack. The nutter sack. <laughs> is that, is like that all real? It's like a real, really weird fish with like a sack attached to it. It looks real enough. Uh, hang on, let me let me get that link into the other thing. So to deactivate Discord on OBS, so it looks doesn't look weird. Uh, and then I'll put it in here, <clears throat> and there you go. <laughs> The Horncus of a Dongfish is attached by the Skungle to a kind of dull sack. <laughs> it's good that that's, um, that was spoken, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rags, um, would you say the Phantom Menace versus Return of the Jedi is an interesting debate as far as overall quality? Oh, Return of the Jedi is way better. I uh, don't know how... Why would that Phantom be an Menace interesting debate? <laughs> I don't know. I... Yeah, so the Phantom Menace is basically horrible all the way through. There's nothing. There, there's basically nothing good about it. Um, it's 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 the worst of the prequels. It's a terrible movie. It falls apart at basically every level. Oh yeah, we just we figured the Attack of Clones was actually superior, right? Oh yeah, I, I think Attack of the Clones is a little bit better. It gets it gets known as the worst one because of the romance. That's what everyone says. Yeah. But, um, definitely am of the opinion that the Phantom Menace is the worst of the three. Support your claims. We don't have to support all claims. That would be a long discussion. We're long as enough to as it is. All the things that are terrible with the Phantom Menace. That is a long discussion. We already did a stream all about Phantom Menace, remember? And it was horrible. Oh, yeah, we kind of did, yeah. It was, yeah, it went great. <laughs> <laughs> We also, oddly enough, had to defend the Phantom Menace. Yeah, that was his experience. All of it was. What a wild. What the wild. Um, he played us like a damn fiddle. Is in is in this super chat. I don't, I don't, is it Patrick playing us like a fiddle? Because I don't believe it. Fiddle, fiddle sticks. That's a league champion. That's all you could be referencing with that. Mhm. Mm needs to watch Lord of the Rings first. True. Um, I don't... I'm concerned. This is this is something that we should all have... I think we've addressed it before, but I guess we can just do it again. Jay do watched it. Fellowship and didn't watch the next two. Do you understand what that means? And he has the big gay. Yeah, that's some hyper gays. Because not watching it at all... Eh, I, I, I can see that. But watching just one of the three? Oh, man. Really? That's, that's, you know, that's a big weirdo. Yeah, so... Uh... Alright, as someone said... Really, Rags? The music is bad, the costumes are bad, the sets are bad, the actors are bad. So... Alright, let's go let's, let's go down the list. The music right. is not bad. The music's good. I'll say the music is good in The Phantom Menace. The costumes are... Fine. Totally fine. It, I think when you, th when you say costumes in Phantom Menace, all I can think about is Queen Amidala's insane outfits. I guess they're just talking <laughs> costume design in general, and it's just like, it's fine. In yeah. general, it's fine, yeah, problem sure. with it. No, the sets are bad. No, the sets are fine. Uh, the actors are bad. Yes. Certainly Anakin. Um, Qui-Gon Jinn's fine. But, like, generally the acting in The Phantom Menace is fucking bizarre. Lots of weird deliveries from lots of characters. It is otherworldly. It's like Aliens wrote that and then delivered all of the dialogue. It is bizarre. So, yeah, sort of. 
Fair enough. Always happy to offer clarification. Though, hmm. I would want to be like, how often do we say, ah, oh, when I say this is good or bad, I am of course referring to the soundtrack, the costumes, and the sets. It's like, we, we mainly talk about writing here. You can, you can assume Rags was saying the writing. You don't have to assume he's saying when he says everything's terrible, he's specifically talking about the soundtrack and the acting and the, and the sets and the costumes. It's like, that's strange. I think all their faces are ugly. Wow. <laughs> yeah, boy. That gives you the right to be racist. How do I see my shards? How do I get my... Oh, it's that one. That's what I was looking for. Right. I need eight, I think. You defo deserve mm. the sequels, Rags. The music is alright, yeah. Get deserve the, the sequels. <laughs> By pushing for better than the prequels, we earned the sequels. I said the music was good, right? Or did I say it was alright? I, I can't remember what you said anymore, but um, I'm pretty I, positive I'll, about I'll go music. to good. The music's good. The music is good in The Phantom Menace. The, the music is good in all of Star Wars. At least the o OT and the... Uh, in the OT and the prequels and The Mandalorian, the music is really good. I can't fucking remember anything from the sequels, so... Um... I guess I'll take an alternative take to that. Yeah, I remember Kylo's and I remember Ray's. I obviously remember the, um, reusing songs, which I don't know if we count. No. So, yeah, um... I don't, I don't remember enough of a sequel. Though, you have, because of your videos on TLJ, Return of the Sky... Return of the Skywalker. Return of the... <laughs> <laughs> Return of the Skank Weaker. Uh, but especially like The Force Awakens, you're very familiar with the music in a way that I'm not quite... Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite familiar with it. I just don't remember anything from it. Um, so Love Has Blinded You always sticks out as the absolute worst conversation between Anakin and Padme. Yeah, that one's with bizarre. Between Anakin and Padme. <laughs> yeah, that, that conversation on the terrace in episode two was fucking bizarre. Man. Ugh. What makes music good, Rags? Oh, I don't think I could quantify it objectively. However, I bet I could make some pretty compelling arguments that would convince you. A lot of it isn't because of the music itself. It's how it's used in conjunction with scenes, especially because we're talking about its quality as a soundtrack. Mouse! <laughs> Didn't for pretty much anything. I feel like that size once in a while, so people don't forget. What the fuck did you just say, Metal? I said a desert eagle can shoot through everything. What can shoot through anything? Except Jacob. Except we can't at all. It's to be emphasized once in a while so people do not forget. You know what's funny about that scene is the guy talking to Jacob then says, "Well, not everything." <laughs> Like, <laughs> fucking Jacob, he's so useless. And yet, he's Desert the best character. can shoot through everything except for the standard body armor that everybody uses everywhere. Desert Eagle can shoot. <laughs> he delivers a lot of his lines like that. The gravel is insane because I honestly think he's just not putting in the effort to actually, like, extend his throat. He's just like... Mm, bad woman's gonna be I taken put on down. the damn suit for this episode. Isn't that enough? Model, stop it! I'm climbing here now. Go away. Oh, oh you Rex, bitch. you're so beautiful. That's a good line. Hey, I, you're so beautiful before, and it works. Um, someone said the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe is a perfect example of what you're talking about, Rags. Wow, oh. I have heard those in a long ass time. Oh, are those gonna be EFAT movies sometime? Which ones? What? Chronicles of Narnia. I, if you want. I mean, I don't. I just cure. It's just now that people have mentioned it, I'm like, oh, those would probably make good, EFAT movies. I don't right. know. <laughs> uh, I only saw them like once. I I, I don't even remember. Aslan, Liam Neeson. That's all I know. Yes. No way. That's. Might be. <laughs> that's... I know. That's the Lion King. Jameson, Erlen, Jonas. As Liam Neeson as Aslan is way better than James Earl Jones as Mufasa in the 2019 version. Important caveat at the end. Agreed. Though... That poor man. The age difference might explain it as well as the... My god, I'm doing this again. Okay. They paid me a lot of money, though. God. Doing this again. Here we go again. 
Bible Man first, right? So, <laughs> Bible uh, Man? I would love to watch Bible Man. That looks like it's a shit ton of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Just saying. Hunter, Absolutely. Hunter battles in this game suck. Okay. I just shot him off the roof. Yeah, I tried. It doesn't always work. Yeah, I know. Sh you shot simultaneously and then just like, nee. You also went to throw a Molotov. If I had gone forward instead of shooting again, I might have been able to get him. Well, unfortunately, you're bad. Oh my god. Look where the item spawned. Oh, uh, fucking hell. Shit, does it spawn up there if I relog? Not relog, if I go back to the Hunter world. It's just cringe. Hunter fights are so cringe. Yeah, they're really annoying. The one in the DLC with the Gatling gun is insane. I remember that clip where he just shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots and, shoots and doesn't stop. Yeah. <clears throat> um... As a kid, I'd be pretty annoyed by TLJ breaking law. I feel like even as a kid, I would have noticed the um, the hyperspace kamikaze. I think I would have as well. I'd have been like, "Whoa, bro! What are you doing?" And then have another character say, "It's one in a million. And I'd be like, "What? <laughs> how would how could you fuck it up, though?" Yeah, if it works the way that you presented it, then. Eh. Uh, go back to the game log back up. I think you're back at the top. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I was wondering if it still does it because it did spawn on this weird thingy here. I shall give it a, a go. Thou shalt give it My god, we're, we're in sync on my, sc my screen and your YouTube. Was we climbing ladders? Yeah. Oh, I mean, you know, it happens, right? It, it rags, oh my god. <gasps> dude, dude. What? Um, ba, 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 I'd like ba. to give a shout out to my boy James Moore, the biggest. Oh, I'm gonna die again. Whoops. Biggest Chad ever. Uh, the biggest. I die again. The, the, Sorry, James, you almost got a shout out, but. Haver of I the almost biggest died. Penis. What the hell move is that? I killed the Gatling gun guy in DLC recently and he wasn't too bad. I've ever become quite adept at cheesing hunters. That's that's good. That's uh, what I would claim is the problem. Like, oh yeah, I just cheesed them. It's like, mm. Ugh, Fuck it, this shit is insufferable. Yeah, they can shoot all the time. They deal a fuck ton of damage with their shots. Like, for you, it's just a tool to parry. And for them, it's just like a killing device. So I mean, hope I get him on the edge. I mean, there's obviously uh, weapon needs to kill, like the flamethrower, for example. That's pretty good in an arcane build, I think, if I recall correctly. How come that didn't parry at all? Because you suck! Powder keck key. I got this powder keck. Mass attacks, e movies. Oh my god. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll definitely happen at some point. Oh, uh, yeah. He's spamming his fucking gun! You're not allowed to do that! No, no, he ought. I'm allowed to do that, because I'm a human. No. This is not hard. I'm okay. I'm gonna touch you in the bad places. And then it's a good one. Oh, that's... that's unfortunate. <laughs> Jesus, the gun does a lot too. Damage yeah. wise. Oh, I'm out of fucking bullets. I didn't realize. Uh, you're out of bullets, look out. I got you. You do. Anti dote. Give me the item. Oh, my bad. That's neat. I'm gonna put him in my rear, um, not my front one. Wait, isn't there an enemy here normally? What? <laughs> Landing heavy- oh, they just healed. I wanna die. <laughs> just spamming the fucking gun. It's so much fun! 
Can you, so is this is real? Like, <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, the next time you dream, give some thought. Anyway. Um... I'd like to give a shout out to my boy James Moore, the biggest super chatter in the known world, beneficiary of podcasts, and a great singer. Damn. Oh, is he? Doesn't no surprise idea. me. Does not Can't surprise me. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, I can believe it. Upgrade my weapons. I think I'm at maximum. Um, I need more eight more shards. I only got five. Ew, don't shard on them. Shum. Shum away, boy. Shum away. Oh, that was annoying. Y'all come through that door. Me, 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 I'm hitting me, the wall. Me, me, me. Come here, you coom lord. Don't do it. Use a three. Ah. Ya loom card. Ya les loom card. Oh, that one. Death. Like, it's funny that hunters are just cranked in every category. Like, is there anything they fail at? And it's like, well, AI every once in a while. Like, oh. <laughs> well, they're kind of stupid sometimes, maybe. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes they're a bit. Jesus Christ, I've got how many fucking yeah. enemies are down here? Three. That's what I You said. Alright, chat, let's do this again. I'm gonna shoot at him straight away and hopefully it works. Don't have any bullets. Go. Oh. Thank you for reminding me actually accurately this time. That's good. <laughs> but I, I can fix looked, that. I just looked at your screen and was like, you don't have any bullets. And then I said it, and it was very epic indeed. Now I have five, you jealous metal. Jet, I don't know, James. <laughs> we know that Desert Eagle can at least shoot for a thick book. A young couple on the internet proved this. Hmm. Ah, I see you and Rufley were fighting Ra on the rooftop. Epic. Yeah, I won, though, on my end, so... Does it really count as a victory? Does it? It's, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's... Before, yeah. yeah. You mother... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this game. I can almost guarantee you this is gonna happen to me when we do the actual race. What does it do if I just go down the ladder? Just chill? Uh, uh... Get to the big cocktail for no reason. It was very. Oh my God, Raven! Stab it! I should crow. have thought about the fact that I had no health left. Good point, Next enemy hunter. <laughs> Are you people seriously donating money to ask about Star Wars? Jesus Christ! Um, I yes. imagine that they're just looking to donate in general and can add a question to it. You know. Also, they. Donate money without asking Star Wars and other stuff too. Also, asking questions about Star Wars is fine. I'm okay with that, honestly. Yeah, go for it. We're familiar with Star Wars. I have no problem with you asking questions that are related to our area of expertise. Yeah. That works out nicely. People also ask questions about cum, but that might only be my chat. I'm not sure. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Gotta go now. Spending all my free time working on this EFAP meme, so thanks, Metal. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Have, a, have a good night. Don't you have a cool outfit like the long man has? What do you mean? I don't I don't have time to fashion born while I do a raise test. You probably have fashion born. I'm just not using it. No, I sold them for echoes. <laughs> you pr that's probably a waste. You're a no. bad person. You also want to grab me. Was, was it literally you just shot them off uh, as soon as you get up the ladder? Because I, the fucking three times that I've tried, it just like fucks up. That's how I did. It just went up. I, I'm guessing I'm just getting really unlucky. Two or three times, and then also, he went off. Uh, I forgot the echoes again. Gonna have objectives in your race. The counter tower and multiple levels are optional. I, I what is the goal? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, first person to kill orphan of cost. Maybe. Well, all bosses. I don't know. <laughs> Poor Fringy never. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, and it'll be over a select number of sessions. There's no way we're doing this in one. On one go. Uh, wait, this is the shortcut? I opened that one. It's always come this and come that. How about you guys come up with a better joke? Uh, I see what you did there. Good, good job. 
Good jab. You can't uh, see me. You can't come. Jay, what? This fucking Demos sound is still loud as shit, dude. Demos. Does it even change? There's safe seconds again. Oop. I'm thinking about trying to get to an edge and then dodging out of the way when he gets real close to it. That's a real. That's a pro play, right? Don't Maybe. shoot me. Um, don't um, shoot me. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Uh, Mech Poop Dog. That is a good Twitch name. I agree. Poop Dog. Poop Dog. I like it because it's, because it's really classy. I know, Fuck right? Me. I don't think enough credit is given for the fact that you guys do your best to read every super chat. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing your best to read all of them. Oh, no worries, oh, James. You're welcome. Yeah, man. You guys are very, very generous and. Yeah. Be reading, reading at your super chats just seems to be the well, least of what we can do. I wanted to complain, but you guys are being wholesome. <laughs> plus, it, uh, plus, it allows us to talk about uh, galactic economies and fictional universes, so that's a great jumping off point for that. Uh, am I being a big dumbo right now? I mean, I always am, but where do I? Where, where do I? Where do I go again? Oh, I know I could be doing better at what I'm trying to do, but I definitely did what's required, and I got really unlucky several times. There's no fucking way that I'm letting that be not the case. Mm. I don't know that the blunderbuss is better at doing this. You're racing, Crypto Hunter's X, get to Hypergene, girl, kill witches, get Moon Rune, grind that girl for a while, and you'll overlevel and blast through. No, we're doing, we're doing the cleaver. Were, were, those, were those rap lyrics? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Racing, grab the hunter's axe. <laughs> I must beat him. Oh, there's another hunter here. No, I can't throw you over roof. I'm, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> wow, pussy. Is it never worth it, anyways? No, they're not. <laughs> Just annoying fights that slow the game down. Some of them give you badges, too, so you can... Hey, slowing the game down means you get more for your money. Hmm... Don't you just get slower for your money? No, you get, get, you get to even, even more playtime. Even more content. Can't... More time with the content. Like cunt and... Content. Yeah, so Patrick dismissed the EU as just Wikipedia articles rather than great stories that fleshed out the universe and introduced great characters? I bet he didn't even read one of the books. But, um, read. I'm sure he didn't. I son of a whore. Cannot remember how to get down here. I think it's somewhere different than here. Obviously. Uh, yeah, this is just a shortcut. Isn't Look, it? everyone, I use skill. Oh wait. Oh fuck! There it is. I'm a big old Dumbleton. Yeah, I can finally move on now. Life is not as painful as it was. Well, we didn't Hooray. even properly do it again. Goals. Hashtag goals. I missed! No, no! Strange Get art off. style for a Sonic game? Yeah, I think that's, that's fair. It's a bit of a deviation, if you could say that. No! No. Oh, and once again, throw the bullets off. Yeet! Fuck! What do the badges do again? Are they passive ah. bonuses? You can, uh, you can buy more items from the shops. Oh, I thought you meant badgers, like the critter. <laughs> what are the bad? I was like, I don't know. I guess they just dig holes and eat <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right, I need to know what badgers do. What do badgers do? <laughs> Getting raped. Imagine that, like a person who's new to Earth, and they keep asking questions like that. It's like, oh, sorry, what is that? Like a whale? Do. What do whales do? And you're like, okay. I guess they swim around, you know. All, all of them so Were you just eaten? So there was like this little little lizard thing that gives you resources. So I was trying to hunt that, and it got away with one health. So I didn't, and it didn't heal while I was attacked by four randoms. Then I started to run away, and then a big wolf came, and yeah, then I died. <laughs> was a lot of things that happened there, and they were all bad. You were abused, is what you're saying. 
pretty much it's yes. ah, idiot hey oh, i didn't mean you i meant this disgusting hey. creature oh i mean that is me still idiot. oh Almost man like for this shortcut too oh uh, this is probably not preferable I'm gonna fight everything again. I'm just gonna run through and flop the dangas right on the table. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do like the idea though that Patrick would dismiss all of the EU as like, but but TLJ though that's the that's the great stuff. It's like he probably yeah, would have loved a lot shit. of the EU if he liked like as bad as TLJ is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Big Wolf came and I died. A lot of bad things happened and I died. Moodle just now. <laughs> I mean, big wolves are kind of, they do fuck you up, so I understand. Yeah, and there wasn't a single lie in the sentence that I uh, said, so. A sentence? Sentence. Sentence. Ah, bullying me. Sir, get out of my way. Wow, he just scraped me in my, in my ear. Excuse me, ma'am. Marmous. Smell like cabbage patch. Mm. Oh, all right, hitting him, hitting him out in his back. All right, that says a lot about you, demon. <laughs> uh, that was obviously intended by me. Dun, dun. Bum, ba, da, da. I miss my bullets. I remember when I had them. Do you though? Not really. Anyway. Bum, ba, da, da. See, Bloodborne and God of War are the same. Shortcut here, right? Right. <laughs> the way he just, he just walked back, just super fast, but backwards. He was like, ee, ee. What? So. I'm skipping ahead to one particular super chat here that just came in. If you're assembling an evil army, who do you choose to lead them? Phasma or Lurtz? Also, hi, Rags. Uh, uh, hi, Lurtz. Why would the. Like, I don't understand why right. that's a question. What's the point of that? Yeah. <laughs> just, what does Lurtz, like, fail at when it, when it compared to Phasma that she doesn't He's not as good at. at fighting as Aragorn? He's like, okay, well, that rules out a lot of people, then. <laughs> he did a hell of a lot better than Phasma would do. Even with her gun, she'd mm -hmm. fuck it up. She also, got, she got Starkiller Base destroyed, you know? She sucks. No loyalties whatsoever. Not really. Meanwhile, Lurtz died for what he believed in. Yeah. Lurtz is my kind of bro. I would I would have a beer At with him. At least Nazis, rapists, and Lurtz, Lurtz died for what they <laughs> believed in. <laughs> the implication being like the rapists and the Nazis are dying in their uh, operations. Yeah, you know, rapists. Raping is a tough job. Like it gets you in trouble. I think we could all agree on that. I think so. Yeah. Nah. Sorry, I got scared. Let's kill the main character, he's better. You don't even need to cite that. You just don't. Cite it again. Do it. It was Probably. cited. So um, what do you fall from great heights in games? Do you get that weird feeling in your tummy and your balls retract? Me too. No, my balls are fine. Fine. Depends. Some games can give me a little sense of, like, that <laughs> weird quasi-vertigo vertigo kind of feeling. Um... Every once in a while, I'd get it with Battlefield when I'm in a jet. Sometimes you'd sort of get it. Uh, sometimes in Battlefield 1, when I'm in a plane as like a gunner or something, and the plane's moving around and I'm looking down at stuff, sometimes I'll get it then. Um, yeah, it happens every once in a while. It's pretty... It's not very common, though, because I've played so many games for so long. I guess my brain's just used to it. But um, yeah, it can happen. It's possible. Last time I really encountered this, encountered it is when I started playing VR and I jumped off a ledge for the first time. That was kind of weird. Oh yeah, I can imagine. Mm. <laughs> you got used to it, but man, first I was like, oh no, no legs. It's not real. Stop it. <laughs> legs, stop. It's time to stop. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, guys, it's not even that long now. Batwoman so season two, yo. Uh. Come home, 
All right, Patrick, quick 101. Don't propose a question if you don't intend to answer it, or even try to. Uh, I'm okay with people asking hypotheticals. I think that's fine. Don't you think that's fine, Rags? I think it's great. Hypotheticals are poggers. They are oh, the God. coolest. Run. Then again, wait. What is the wait? I think I think I fucked up. I've had a little bit of alcohol now. What is it when you, when you ask a what is it called when you ask a thing that's not intended to be answered? There's a word for that, right? Rhetorical question. That's the one. I mixed that up with hypothetical. My bad. I think rhetorical questions are also okay. There, I said it. question. No. Not the tart questions. I didn't say tart question. Said it again. Mom. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Or you that you don't like the tarts. Buy with insight. Make trades with messengers using insight. What do I usually buy from these guys? I don't remember. Yums. Yum yum. Misa a cum yum. Okay, let's see. Wouldn't it be cool if they did deliver that kind of EFAP fan service on the next Star Wars movie and have Jar Jar say cum yum? <laughs> we don't have to forget the past, Patrick. Let the past die, kill it if you have to. From the movie Patrick is praising. I've already, I know the, um, uh, the response to that. The, the, the TLJ fans will say that, um, kill the past was not the correct message in the TLJ. TLJ's trying to prove that that message is faulty. It's not the point of the film. The point of the film is oh. to address that. Oh, I would, I wonder how they've arrived at why that's not the theme, but other things are. And if they go to, well, the execution of the theme is like, oh, so the execution of the theme does matter. Oh interesting. Very interesting. I don't remember where I'm going anymore. Mel, help. So, backwards. Ah. Highway to hell. I'm on the Way to heck. No, he just screams in that song forever. Meow. I am on the highway to hell. Oh, you shouldn't stab someone when they're climbing a ladder. That's really fucked up. I know, right? I didn't deal as much damage as I hoped I would, and now I'm very upset. Oh, fuck. Am I dead? I'm not dead. You know what? School shooters think the same thing. Aww. Well. How hard can one soy boy suck off Disney? Really fucking hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't see why there'd be any limit to the suck offery. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm glad that question was answered, you know? Like, how hard can they suck? They can suck very hard. They put and in long. all of the effort to suck That's very hard. Very long and very hard. This feels safe. There's ah. nothing safe anymore. Oh good, I got a madman's new ledge. Cool. That means I'm winning. <clears throat> um, I guess I want to go there. Again, not feeling safe, gonna be completely honest. How do I- hmm. Hmm, Mel, I don't know about this. Me ooh. Well, what do you want from me? Me ooh, I feel like it's just not safe. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I did oh, it. Glory. High five, chat. We did it. Bloody messenger head bandage. That was not worth it. That's your opinion. That was not worth it. Halloween is better. I'm sure the Don agrees. Oh, that Maybe. would be the question, wouldn't it? Does the Don agree? Blasphemy. What does the Don think? What does the Don think? Ning, 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 ning. <laughs> Isn't that how that goes? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Wait, am I supposed to just drop down? That looks like it could kill me. This can't be how you do it. I guess it is. Oh no, they're all screaming. Stop it. Slut! You're being very loud. Uh oh. Poisoning? Go off. Dragon! I'm gaming! Pretty unfortunate, this is just a test. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, none of this is canon, guys. Everything you see, non-canon. No, I will not apply an antidote. That is the cuck way to do it. I did it twice. 
Even more than that. You double cocked? I'm a d triple cock actually. Yeah. Ow. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. This one likes Bly. Yes. The dumb things were Wonder Woman. Are you quite awful? Good. Wait, who likes Bly? The Don. Oh, the Don would love Bly. Yumbo. He would come down from the heavens to simply tell us, "Hey, you should watch Bly again sometime." And we're like, "Okay." Let me upgrade my cool blue. I'll be right back. Okay. Okie dokie. Dollar Shave uh, Club, more like Shaving Blade, Five O'clock Shadow Legends. Uh, <laughs> Mel, can you translate that? <laughs> no. Oh. Tempering. Stone of the Blood. Do you know the way? Follow me, I know the way. Ooh. Are there any creatures of dubious origin in these areas? I should hope there is. Do not touch it. I'm cucked for Hades. Such a fan fucking tastic. I like Hades. That was a good game. Oh, I meant the character. That's a good game. The character is a good game. Oh, I meant the person. The person is a good character game. All right, that makes enough sense. Yeah. Oh, see, so yeah, you can use the inside for uh, that shop up here. The, the other one. Oh yeah, I I went up there and I was like, what? Do I, I remember spending my inside, but I don't remember like when I play this game. But I can't remember what I would spend it on. Do you know what ends up in that shop? It's good. I think normally there's some weapons we can get here. I think the moon. Do you get the moonlight greatsword in here? Or the Kirk hammer? One of those two. I think. Who is this Kirk guy? Uh, I think you can. You might be able to buy some of these garbs and. You know, I'm, I'm kind echoes. of excited to do this race now with Fringy because he's probably gonna bite off more than he can chew. You know. He, yeah, from what you told me, he sounded very confident. He Either. Never Game. Either he will blast through it and surprise us all, or he will be he wanting to kill himself, which is fine, either way. Yeah. I first read every boss encounter so far, which surprises me, personally. I... I for the actual... it, when you came over here and I was streaming on Twitch, you tried to kill the Bloodstar Beast and he died like four times. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that was fun. That was the first one came over and no, nobody knew. Yeah, hey chat, <laughs> let's, let, we'll tell you the funny story that was that, okay? So... Back when I streamed on Twitch, it would be full full camera and a, as much as five hours per day, I think, was like the average. And um, and nobody knew the metal was coming over here for the first time. Nobody knew. And he also streamed, as he's doing right now on Twitch. So it was this oh. whole, like, thing that we kept secret. Only only myself, Smiler, and Metal knew. And then one night, I was just streaming, I played Bloodborne, and, and Metal was sitting next to me, but out of frame for about... For oh. An hour or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it was to the implic it was to tell, like, my viewers, was the implication was just just a normal day of streaming. It's fine. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to go to the toilet quick. And I get out of my seat, and then, like, ten minutes later, Bell just sits down and treats it as his stream. And it's just like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I don't think we ever highlighted it, did we? There's no highlight of it, no. And oh, I think fuck that did we not highlight that? It's actually lost to the Twitch demon archives. It was uh, it was awesome. It was funny, and I think Jenna, Vin, Bio, they probably were all there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There were a bunch of pog champs. <laughs> oh yes. Uh. And yeah, it wasn't addressed for. Wasn't it like people in chat were like, "What the fuck?" And you were like, "Why are people saying what the fuck?" Like, yeah, what's, what's, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm back. What? Yeah, it was a toilet. What the hell? F fucking weirdos. It was fun on the buttered bun. Mmm, I like butter. Yes. Uh, well, I guess the cathedral ward. And then we go the other way. Did we, comes did we, wait, did you did kill we... Bloodstarved Bitch? Yeah, I did. Be, uh, I haven't yeah. even met them rough. yet. I'm so far behind because of that stupid hunter. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Man, it's gonna be real tension filled when I get to that thing yeah. on the real race, the real steel. Mm. Uh. Music in this game, brilliant. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Loke may be a Halloweeny, but the Don is a Chris Noid. I'll take Chris you all Noid. on. <laughs> Sorry, um, I've spoken to the Don. He likes Halloween more. He just does. What can I say? Haven't heard Chris Noid before. I like that. 
Hey, um, don't don't hit me. I'll hit you back. I'm still riding on a high about Mola knowing darkness falls back in Epap 50. Best horror twist on a fairy tale. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Knowing it, I knew it back in the Soma videos, which is before Epap. It's referenced even earlier. Early one morning, just mm. as the sun was rising. Yeah, that's fucking scary. Yeah. They do so much fucking damage with their kicks. Yes, it's they do. Those guys are fucking annoying. But um, you're gonna want to get killed by them eventually, right? Because they take you to the other place. Uh, yeah, that's when you go down the thing. He's still alive. Jesus Christ. Stop the gremlin die. That wasn't worth it, was it? No, it wasn't. Oh, wait, I can upgrade my gun, though. I don't need bloodstone so shards no more. I need twin shards. Get I'm already on. Okay, gotta see if I can finish it. Well, see if you can. I'm, I'm probably sticking to this one class. I had a couple of drinks over the week. Over the week. <laughs> the werewolf was powerful at one point, but now she's the bitch. <laughs> Who's that from? It's, it's from Ludendorff. No! <laughs> <laughs> Ludendorff, you oh, fucking um, whore. Spiegelheim elsewhere, please. We're having a war meeting. Ludendorff, enough! I don't know if you've noticed Ludendorff, but there's a war going on. There's a war. Dennis Remember how the German high command are like, we don't want our men dying, and then the British high command are like, lol, men die. Fuck. Soldiers die in war. That's what they're meant to do. We take slaves, do. but we don't want anyone to die. Yeah, like, jeez. Yeah, fucking weirdo. Slavery makes sense. Death, less so. They can't be slaves if they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. That's life 101 right there. We're not, we're Germans. We're not stupid. I mean. They lost World War One and Two rags. How smart can they yeah, be? Yeah, how smart can they be, really? Who goes O and Two in global conflicts? Yeah, cringe, bro. Of course we can uh, do uh, three fronts at at once. Oh no, he's sucking me. The big meme was that they couldn't do it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's like ah, lol, Frank. It was just a prank. <laughs> Ludendorff and his pranks. <laughs> Ludendorff, enough of your pranks. Yeah, enough of your pranks. This is the last whoopee cushion in the war room Listen, that we will accept. <laughs> people listening to this right now, before it's re-uploaded to Moolah, because by then it'll be out, right? Oh yeah, that's right. They don't have any context. But you guys, you got an exclusive. We want Ludendorff enough to be a meme, okay? I'm, Ludendorff uh, enough. It's it's this moment in Wonder Woman that is so precious and valuable. It's 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 just it's when the German High Command have had enough of Ludendorff. Okay, which we've all been there. Ludendorff is annoying. He keeps talking. You couldn't even have used a high quality whoopee cushion. You used a cheap discount fart bag. <laughs> Wait, Rich Evans was in the the, the Reich. <laughs> German High Command in World War One. Yes, that's correct. No, I finally have the shield. It's this beautiful moment in Wonder Woman where Ludendorff is just, he's just being himself, he's rattling off, he's saying all this bullshit. German High Command finally <laughs> had enough. They snap and they say, Ludendorff, actually no wait, I'll play it. Oh my god. While my character fires his gun randomly because enough. the PlayStation, oh no. Okay, here, here, here goes. Here oh goes. my god. Ludendorff, enough! <laughs> enough. Bad Ludendorff, man, he's just up. Bad he's a, Ludendorff, he's man. He's a loose cannon. Oh, hey, Ringy. Yeah, hey. I, uh, I slept in. What's up? Yeah, so, just, what, what's, what's happening? We decided we would stream without you and just test, okay? All we're doing is testing. You should join us and begin your stream and simply test in prep for the beginning of the race, the true race, which I guess would be tomorrow is the best time if everyone can do it. Yeah. Okay, so I guess um, I'm gonna have to figure out because like, I, it is. It, I woke up quite late today, so so, um, so in, in terms of waking up early tomorrow to make sure it happens, I'm gonna have to. Man, today is not gonna be a long day. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, excellent. Thanks for the. Lord off, turn in your gewehr and your abzeichen. Yeah. So what I'll do right now is I'll just um.
Because I got a reinstalled blood one, I'm pretty sure. I think I uninstalled it. And uh, <laughs> get the old Hunter's tier. There is not that much space on PS4. I don't know what you're talking about. The console gener the console world is a wonderful gaming system. That's all I have to say about and that. You know what? Well, That's what do you mean with how terrible it looks and the low frame rate? Surely it doesn't take up that much space. <laughs> <laughs> what do you and, mean? Uh, Surely its flaws are not so plentiful. Uh, and I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, good timing as well because my crash playthrough... I think I'm done. Last night I was getting a cramp trying to do the time trial. So I'm just I glad you're alive. It. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I did, uh, I did, so, in terms of the update, I've got every gem, which is about 460, I think. I, uh, I got all of the perfect run totems, which to get that means you can't die in the level and you have to get all the yep. crates. Funny enough, uh, I watched Teddy Clarissa's video of it today, so I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've, uh, I've skimmed some of that, but I'm gonna throw that on for, you know, just reference. I think it'll, mm -hmm. I think, uh, take them all as advice and just watch some of these videos and um and yeah and i got all of the the uh flashback tapes platinum so the only thing that i haven't done is all of the time trials and like i legitimately don't know if i want to do that because I'm, I'm not i'm not cool with getting purple tunnel <laughs> playing a video game <laughs> i don't think so is, I think, is uh, those the, the platinum ones or the the death, so... death times Oh, th so the pl platinum relics are when you the time trials, but the hardest level. So that's like the absolute quickest, and the only way that you can do that is by either spin dashing over and over and over and over again, yep. which means you have to press square, circle, square, circle, square, circle over and over and over again, or if you can time those um triple spins or whatever, you can do that. And I've tried, I really tried, and I can't do it. Um, and I don't know how much I want to push myself to do yeah. it, to get one. I don't know that it's worth it. Um, so I think the crossroads I'm at right now is... What I think I should do is just get all of the gold, uh, time trial tokens. Because I don't think that will take me too long. I think I can do that fairly easily, but I don't think I'm going to push myself to do platinum. Alright. Um, in which case, that means I'm done, basically, with this playthrough. Uh, and I can finally start making this video. Um, I'm very happy about that. To roll I'm down out. here, and I have you considered? Have you considered instead <clears throat> maybe like a ten-minute-long unscripted rant <laughs> with trailer footage in the back? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you could bump that out and like it. Well, and I was about to say a day, but that's being. It's basically one for <laughs> one in terms of content, you know, output input. So you could like if someone just clipped half of the fucking shit we say on these streams. They could make that video without even having been the person. <laughs> <laughs> just take uh, it out, okay. attach the trailer, done so. I will make Fringy's review of this game based <laughs> on just a bunch of clips of him talking about. I, I, I got a donation with a, with a question for Raggleton here. <gasps> uh, hello Raggleton, heard from the previous right. episode you reside in Arkansas. Was looking at Arkansas as a possible place to live if I stayed in the U.S., but heard Arkansas. Little Rock has massive tisms. Hey, that's not Mel's fault. That's pronunciation I... Will's fault. So I live in North Little Rock, which is same but different. Um, I I like living here. I have no reason to move. Uh, it's it's got all the things that a you know that a that a city would have. A smaller city would have. It's well spaced out. It's cheap. Um, people are nice. The weather is. Eh, it's, it's a bit a bit of everything. Um, but uh, I, I like it. I, I do enjoy I do enjoy being here. Um, if I was going to move, it'd probably be to like Texas or Arizona. Um, Arizona is a very. I love the climate. It's a very gun friendly state. Um, Texas does not have income tax, which is. Ooh. <laughs> that, that's that sounds good. Um, I have to check the Ludendorff count of both of these states to see if there is if there is enough. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Can never can never push people off this. Jump. Now um, uh, some someone asked in chat. Mm. Uh, What's your favorite bad film? Your favorite film you watch unironically but admit is bad. Oh, is that are you asking that in general or are you gonna answer it? Uh, well they they asked Mahler and 
rags. So with the other two of so us I guess here I'm now, this answer. was oh, well, this shit. was this was before you arrived. Actually, I just have it ah, frozen in the chat. I scrolled up for it, but um. That is a good question. I don't know. Uh, Van Helsing is probably up what? there. So a really bad movie that you unironically love. <laughs> Batman Robin. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Postal movie. It um, might be Resident Evil Retribution as well. It's, yeah, it's up fantastic. there. Um, oh, th this is one of those ones that's like, just remind me because I've completely forgotten what all of them are because there's loads of them. Um, what have we done in EFAP but... movies? Death Wish. No, not Death Wish. Death. What's the <clears throat> stupid movie we watched first? Death. Wish Upon. That's it. Wish Upon. Wish Upon. I love Wish That's Upon. Though. She gets hit by the car and then flies 10,000 miles. <laughs> I'll admit, the ratio of entertainment in that one isn't as strong as others, though. I see. Like, you have to wait a little for, like, the best payoff, but there's some really fucking good ones in it. Yeah, Unlike Batman and Robin, which is a constant roller coaster for the most part, yeah, with funnies. Probably, I think we'll just do like this. I always get. <laughs> wow, cry <clears throat> more! Shut up! Did you beat the beast yet? You died. I already hey. died three times. Yeah, I, I, I can never remember how to do this. Are you gonna, uh, are you gonna stream, probably. Fringy? You should do a little like, <clears throat> you should chill with us and and just play it for a little bit tonight. Just chill, you know. Just, just. Oh, I'm dead. Uh, yeah. Uh, um. Man, the awkwardness of just not having pressed X fast enough, and now I'm just dead. I want to go to the work to the workshop. I think I just lost 10k oh, souls as well, but this is my fake run, so I don't care. Wow. <laughs> British army be like, lol. I think I just lost 10k souls. Like, are you, if you're in the cathedral <laughs> ward, does that mean you have to fight that crazy dude, Mikolash? No, that's ages uh, away. Oh, that's that. Oh, oh god, don't uh, remind me. I don't want to do the right best, <laughs> best. Shitty boss ass. in all of Soulsborne, Mikolash. I remember oh, watching this fucking bad. Was it metal or was it Fortier? <laughs> I think, I think Fortier. it was Fortier. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, he just fucking pushed me off. <laughs> <laughs> Fortier was willing to just drop the whole fucking game thanks to Mikolash. Like that, that tested his patience. Did you ever fight Mikolash, Fringy? I don't think I did. Like I said, I played the game for a while, but I'm pretty sure I didn't get that far into it. Well, uh, I'm, I'm I think I only beat to see how, how well you do in this race. I think I'll do better this time because I played Dark Souls three and I beat that. So I think I'm there you go. a little bit more aware of what. And but everybody was judging me like when I was playing Dark Souls three. They're like, "Oh, you don't know what this is." It's like, "Yeah, I don't," and I'm still winning. Fuck yeah. You, <laughs> <that's me. laughs> well, I okay. Like that. I see that. We'll we'll all hit go like at the same time tomorrow, and then and then it'll just be off to the races. You know, whoever it'll well, be such a fair race. You have no idea. So, my reference. What is your preferred time to do this? As um, early as you can wake up is going to be, be what we It will be a fair race, like the elves. Um, I'm I'm kind of asking for a time. <laughs> yeah, and I'm saying as early as you can wake up. I don't know why. What 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 do you think I would prefer? Like, okay, as early as I can wake up. Jesus, all right. <laughs> Jesus has nothing to do. Yeah, with I don't it. see why you're bringing this in, like, dude. Come on now. Uh, there we go. Non-religious well, stream. I, I slept for a very long time today, so I'm gonna sleep for very little tomorrow to try and get yeah. up early for this. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'll be back in like five, ten minutes, maybe. Ten. Yeah, sure. Do oh, you just end that sentence with baby? I'm around. Texas is great and cheap. Stay away from Austin. Whatever you stay away from. Yeah, I heard that's the crazy lefty city of. Uh, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I'm probably gonna stay away from Austin. Um, my uh, sister uh, has a boyfriend who lives somewhat nearish. He lives in uh, Plano, um, and my sister's been visiting him uh, here and there. So if it works out between them, it might give me an excuse to move to somewhere in Texas to be closer to her, just, just so I'll have some family close by. Um, and it's not too far away from, you know, the folks and everything here, so... Art. Basically, I'm, I'm wishing the relationship success of my family members based on purely um, selfish Mel. Huh? First time he beat me, second time, look how much health I've taken off him. We've been fighting for about 50 seconds. Oh yeah, you can fuck him up with the fire paper. Holy shit. Fight over. Fuck him up with Ludendorff. Ludendorff. 
Blood stuff be enough. He could have beaten me even faster if he would have uh, thrown the punch and cocktails at the wall. Because then he just. I don't know that that would have been faster, honestly. I got really lucky with. Uh... Oh okay, yeah, yeah, I just saw you annihilate him. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you summon in this race? No. No, no stamina. And if Fringy does, everyone has to call him a simp. <laughs> oh, simp! And then Mel can get banned. Wait, oh. Where the dollar Soup. outfit? No, I'm gonna sell the dollar outfit. It gives you like 30k echoes. Alright, where were we? Um, Halloween, Halloween, Dollar Shave Club. We need to get back in time right before Tross. And tell weird. Patrick, just pretend it's what you wanted. This is one hell of a smooth brain take. Smooth, 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 smooth brain. Ow, How yeah. could Patrick be delivering smooth brain takes? What do you mean? Look at all these echoes. Mm. Impossible. Echoes. Mm. Mel, you kind of been overeating on those echoes. I'm gonna be honest. Mm, okay. Mm. Echoes. They're magically delicious. The I echo agree. pop challenge. <laughs> echo uh, pop challenge. Buy a safety razor. The blade never dulls. Trust me. I mean, oh, I'm missing one? I think all blades on I Earth it... eventually dull. I'm sorry. All blades uh, matter. That's my uh, opinion, I know. I, I still stand by it. Uh, are we doing 30 vitality? What did we say? 30 or 40? Oh, no no rules on that. You can upgrade whatever the fuck you want. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I don't remember how how you did it. In them, okay. um, you're probably mixing up like when I I gave the rule set for DS2 to break the game, and I did it. The whole point of me saying it was, if you build like a normal person, like you just put points into normal things, DS2 just breaks. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I, like third age. Something similar in one well, of your playthroughs here. That's what I mean. As much as that's true, Rex, you wouldn't think <laughs> DS2 would be on the level of. Third age, would you? You'd be like, oh. You wouldn't think so. the The name Dark Souls has this kind of, yes, you know, respect, and it's got this. It's a very venerable sort of this, you know, um, series. You you watch the uh, the YMS stream highlights, right? Sometimes. I do sometimes. Yeah, I noticed um, he did. There's one about him talking about Dark Souls too, but I've never played. Yeah, there's it, so. this part. <laughs> did you ever watch my Dark Souls two series? By the way, I can't remember. <laughs> I've watched. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I it's, a it, it. there's a lot of it. Um, so if you remember, there's a portion where Page Bomber guy says like, it, I I basically show and he does that the world folds in on itself in terms of the map because the creators couldn't be fucked and they were just like, nah, we want this big room here. It's like, but that crosses over with that other big room. It's like, well, we won't load it. It's like, okay. <laughs> That's the solution, and so lots of the world falls all over itself. And um, the best one that everyone always references is you go into like this poison cavernous place. You get to a windmill. At the top of the windmill is an elevator that takes you above to a medieval castle that has a, a swamp of, of lava around it. Like, wait, way. how did I go above the windmill to a castle that's got lava around it and like that like, doesn't make any sense? That's insane, yeah. Um. And of course, H Bomber Guy's excuse for this was it's designed that way on purpose. It's supposed to be nonsense. Oh. Because the world is falling apart in DS2, and then he said the famous it's complete in its incompleteness. <laughs> and uh it was funny, I saw this clip of YMS talking about how uh, someone was like, Are you gonna uh wouldn't like possibly piss off um H Bomber Guy to like be shitting all over uh, DS2 and potentially his video or whatever, and he was like, oh, I don't think you would take it that badly. And it's like, isn't that the whole point of his video was to shit on Matthew Matosis' perspective on DS2? And he was like, yeah. Well, and he was like, I hope he doesn't, but honestly, why the fuck would you argue something broken is broken on purpose? Like, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like, in, in some context, that could probably work, but uh, certainly not the one we're fucking talking about. It just to me, it comes across as when you're desperate to defend the thing. You're like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. It's supposed to be broken. He's like, oh, well then. Also, I actually can't remember what I'm supposed to do next. I'm just gonna kind of wander around. I can tell you. Oh my god, you could tell me. Yeah, you you go to the cathedral ward and then go right at the stairs and then you go to this weird tower thingy and go down. Wow, you cheated by telling me. Well, fuck you then. Then gonna go to the dead. Muller doesn't know about virginity. Wow. Wait, what? 
<laughs> no, I wouldn't know anything about it. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, I've spent too long. I uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh. Um. Reminder that the US military will pay for your girlfriend's boob job. Is that true? I don't know. That's neat, right? That's just... That's, that's just the way it should be. Purpose. I'm a genius. <laughs> Oh, mate, I think you're missing. Remember the meme Giles theme uh, goes through everything? I do remember that meme. I think everyone does. It was like yeah. a really good one with the Prince of Bel Air uh, intro music. It was pretty banging. Just remember that. That's all. That's all I have to say. Are you done, Mel? Are you done? I just said I'm done! You just disturbed both my stream, your stream, and the stream that Rags does not even have, nor Fringy does have, but they were disturbed anyway, in spirit. You See? disturbed it away from ever happening. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I disturbed Are you sorry, time man? crime. Nothingness. They reload these guns way too fucking fast. It's ridiculous. Maybe you're punching too slow. Wow. Away! Away! <laughs> oh wait! Oh wait! Stop it! Like a oh, wait? Wait! What do you want? <laughs> hmm. Also, I should specify that they only pay for the surgery, not the implants. Huh? Thick, cold blood. All right. Blood. Well, that's not a warm blood. That's a strange sort of. There must be some kind of thing in a contract somewhere that just those things were sort of slipped in, and everyone was like, "That counts." It's like that counts. Like, oh, okay. Uh. Uh, um, thoughts on Bojack's stupid piece of shit episode? Oh, you have to remind me which one that is. Yeah. No, oh, that's apparently the name of the episode. But good meme, regardless. Uh, Thanks. I've never seen it. I just wanted to do the meme. I'm just trying to. Once um, rem can, can is anyone able to write that down? Uh, right. Will you remember what what thoughts on the stupid piece of shit episode from Bojack Horseman before when Fringy gets back? He might know what it is. Oh god! Uh, sure. It's pretty easy to remember, right? Stupid piece of shit. I might even remember that. I don't know. We'll find out. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. I forgot how fucking tanky these guys are. Stupid mind suckers. Oh, they those ones, up. yeah. They got the big health. One didn't do the, the stun the stuntism though. So. Oh, I have enough twin blood shots to upgrade my florms. Twin blood shots. I'm gonna touch my florms and then they get better. All right, that's fair. Uh, do do. Do you see what I had to do to get past that one past the sensors? Uh, yeah, you have to separate a whole bunch of words with spaces. That's not so bad. Oh, there was a couple of alternative. Yeah. Well, we're glad. That you that you take the effort. A uh, based fringy with the Bojack take. Green man, good. There are people out there who also think Bojack's terrible. That's neat. Hello there, fellow people of the world. Oh hey, hello. Yay. Um, I was promised hot takes this episode, not cold ones. I I so push back on the whole. Like if someone said it was a cold take now to say that Boy season two is bad, it's like it wasn't though. It really wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people really liked it, because they're dumb. Wow, Rex. That's the only reason. It can't Ooh. be that they were simply mistaken. They were taken up by Butcher and his manly beard. It can't just be that. Oi, cunt! <sighs> diabolical. <laughs> so funny when he says diabolical. It's not, though. It's cringe. I see him saying diabolical the same way I see Boba Fett. Fucking flying with his jetpack. It's like, yep, they did the thing. Yep, that's what he does. He's doing the thing he does. You, yep, yep, sure is. You know what else is like it, but they didn't do it that much this season, honestly? Is uh, Mando saying this is the way? But this is the way that he says this. Is, says. He, he didn't say that much, did he? Honestly. I guess it's because he doesn't know what the way is anymore. He's lost. He doesn't know the way. Yeah, he's, he's just the way. Who wouldn't yeah, off as the way? Remember Boba Fett? Lundorf, get out, out, of, out of the way. Lundorf, enough! Why, all you said was enough? That's the meme? You gotta improve on the meme, Mel. You know this. Wait, I said Lundorf, enough. Yeah, that's it. There's yeah. more. Say more. Be funnier. More! 
I'm finding a big boy right now. I can I'm not listening to you and your toxicness of the ness. Wow. So I'm toxic, but Rags is chill? Okay. I am very chill. That's oh. what it says in the script, and I don't dare to say otherwise. Yeah, I was gonna say, why did you write me to say Rags is, like, implying you're not chill, Rags? You fucking approve this shit. <clears throat> yeah, I got him now. Yeah, no answer. Jeez. No you were stunned. <laughs> stunned into silence. It's by our insolence. Um... That, uh, the send the ST back to the past and kids will love it only makes sense if the OT was children's content, but it wasn't. Even TPM isn't only that. Um, well, people always use the quote of him saying, uh, it's, it's for, for kids, I think Goldberger says it at some point. I'd imagine that the spirit of what he's saying is that it's, um, accessible to children. Like, but the that... Phantom Menace is especially for kids. Let's no, it's ex let's just say it's especially accessible, but mostly yeah, for kids. I suppose. Yeah, it, the Phantom Menace is very clearly built with kids in mind. He cucked me out of my backstab. It is very kid friendly. You have to earn your backstab, Ludendorff. I but did. Mo got chopped in half. It's like, oh, okay. I guess that. Yeah, it's a fucking this. <laughs> Mona, which would you rather? Perform mouth to groin on Kathleen Kennedy, or cut off your long arm? Why the fuck? Perform mouth to groin. I'm sorry, I'm not losing my arm. Yeah, I'm not losing my arm either. <laughs> fuck that yeah. shit. I'd lose I like both my legs before I lost an arm. I, I seriously value the arm and the hand. Like, it's it's really cool. Like, if you go, have you guys looked at lore about hands? They do lots of things. You may have it experienced such a thing, too. I don't want to be hand solo. See? Uh, yeah. I... Handless solo. I think I could have fallen the other way and you you get something, right? Well, we'll do that when we get back to Cathedral Ward. Cathedral Ward. I guarantee you, Matthew oh. says Cathedral Ward. Cathedral Ward. Cathedral. Cathedral. Cathedral Ward. Dicks away. The Cathedral Ward. Let's Cathedral Ward. Where the fuck did oh. Fringy go, that traitor? Oh, traitor! Traitor! Remember that line that is never fucking get banked upon ever again? I'm not even sure why they had it. But Kylo, like, is annoyed, is furious at, at Finn for having gone against the Empire slash First Order. Like, this idea that he's like, I fucking hate you because you betrayed us and we are the correct team. That never comes up ever again. Never comes. That's because Kylo is a very complex character. Ah, uh, complex is a word you could complex. use. Yes, very complex. But what if you get a cyberpunk arm as a replacement? I don't know, it seems like it would be a buggy arm, so I don't want that one. If the oh. arm was... Theoretically, if the arm was actually better than my normal one, no, I'd still value the organic original, but I wouldn't feel bad about getting a replacement. Yeah, I'm sure we'd get used to it pretty quick. I would be worried if someone was like, do you want to trade it out right now? I'd be like, probably not. I don't know what no. negatives could come with having a mechanical arm. Oh shit, right, there's like two or three hunters down here. Yeah, fuck those I guys. I did mention that. I, yeah, I wasn't listening because you're Dumbo. Wow. Oh my goodness. Like, Believe. you know, even as far into the game as I am, so your opinion is worthless to me. Come at me, weirdman. Don't oh, come no, at no, him. No, 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 I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready, I wasn't ready. Okay, now come at me. There you go. Now I'm ready. See, that was fair because I was ready. Mm. Oh my god, that is a lot of damage. Oh, he's so mad at me. Oh, you ha whoa, he can throw fire? Oh my god, that is so god, cool. Fire. Oh, oh, parried bitch. Uh, Mola. Oh, wait, I ran that. I never got into BJH, Bojack Horseman. The writing came off as lazy, contrived, and forced. Oh my god, my kind of people. Huh. <laughs> Uh, same thing happened to me, Fringy. I told everyone I watched BoJack. They did. They love it. I watched it again. Now I hate the show, and everyone I know loves it because of me. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I got sniped. You're gonna carry that weight. Oh shit, I've already forgotten. What was the name of the episode I was gonna remind Fringy of? Something, something, something to do with bullshit, right? Shit. Stupid bullshit. You know what? I wrote it down in, in the chat. It's <sighs> the stupid piece of shit episode. Yay! Uh, if you're gonna have drama, you need to commit. Come it. Oh, I guess that's in relation to you can't have like comedic bits in the middle of your drama that actually act as like foundational points in making the drama happen. 
uh, that are like contradictive and played for laughs, but also matter in terms of like the major thing. I think that's something we definitely talked about when, uh, when we when we went over it, you know. Um, hi Rags, have you heard of hey. Ruby's Rebalanced Reach? It's a good mod made for Halo Reach campaign on MCC that improves the weapon balancing. Um, I think I might have. Um, I think I think I might have. I might not know the name of it, but there's some mods that I've been linked and shown. So it's very possible I have indeed heard of it, and I probably mm. approve of it. But I think it's just going the other way. It makes you wonder how these these mods that are so you know big like that. It makes you wonder how the designers didn't just make their game where you didn't need that. But oh well. Hey, uh, oh, Mudlo. Well. Uh huh. How do we apply the runes? Do we, do we have to unlock that? Uh, oh, the runes. That's a good question. I think you know what I'm having a brainwave. I think that's the it, the witches. The witches Brain people. Blast. Yes. You have to kill correct. the witches to do that. Yeah. Correct. You're correct. Um, and the second half of that is that Ruby has a 20 minute video on YouTube uh, uh, of of Blue going over the changes as well as mods for the other Halos on MCC. Hashtag Wombo. Yell it if you have to. Oh. Wombo. 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 Well, you got so many different Wombos there, Super Chat. I'm sure that was what you were looking for. Fantastic. Madman's knowledge. Oh no, it's pulled me. Well, this is gonna be a real good fight. Oh, no doggo, stop it. Yeah, this is where I was actually going. Ma, I have to treat you all. But then I got booped on the snoot. And I was probably going the wrong direction as well. Because I'm very, very smart. Now it's poorly timed. And you are right, these guys hurt. Oh, that was well timed. Yes! Oh, I got all my health back. Dude, when you get the parry and they've hit you, and you just restore all of your health because of the move, that is some satisfying yeah, shit. Like satisfactory. Oh my god, I did it again. Nice! Mm, mm, you're doing it too much, stop it. Oh, it will come back to hunt you. Oh my god, this poor guy got fucking bullied by me. Dude, these fucking code guys, they have like a million points. Well, that's not enough. I think it is quite enough. Do not hit me with the axe, that is very rude of you. As an American, women with guns gets my shotty pump in. Ayyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyyy
Oh, you didn't. Oh, ask Fringy about the episode. There you go. What thoughts on on what episode of what Doctor Who? Oh. No. Uh, that's my phone. Hold on, I'll be back. <laughs> oh, uh, he's cucking us hard today. Bring gold. <laughs> How could he have gold in his name when he doesn't even support being a golden person? Like, oh no, my head fell off. I can't play the game. Yeah, what excuses are we gonna get tomorrow, guys? I don't even know. Numbing Mist. Also known as Crushed Up and Expelled Rohypnol. <laughs> rape. Whoa, no, I was talking about numbing. That's a different thing. For rape. I mean, theoretically, one one could use such apparatus to their favor in such endeavors. That is simply not what I was aiming to achieve with such statementage. Achieve the coup. That's what people say, right? Statementage? Sure. I've heard Rags say the word statementage so many times. Bum, ah. bum, 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 is it too bum. early to get captured by this guy? I can't remember. Uh, I think the one that needs to capture you is the one after the, the beast guy. Do you have to you kill, kill the boss first, is that what you have to do, maybe? I, I think you... I don't know. <laughs> I'm going for the witches next, so... Shut. What are they called? The witches of Hemwick, is it? Yes. Is that a reference to the witches of Eastwick? I don't know. What about the Westwick ones? The witches of Cum Yum. Never get no, any more. No, not Cum Yum. Put down the Cum. C -c 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 Coming on the yams. Stuff. Wow. Fucking oh, stun locked him. How's it feel, game? You do it to me all the time. I remember when Wonder Woman wasn't AIDS. Wait, when was that? Yesterday, remember? Oh. Uh. No, I don't remember yesterday. Y'all don't remember shit. That's because of Big Dumbo. That is Drusen. Don't stop fring, please. I can't keep track of five chats. Have mercy. <laughs> you don't have to. That was short. the one fucking thing we told him to do, and he couldn't do it. This kind yeah, of shit. Thing. Outrageous. It didn't happen. Um, guys, I'm gonna need everyone to give their best. Eans. Also, metal. Pavlov. TTT. Stream. When? No. What is an Ean? Isn't that like a meme from? Somewhere, I don't know. Yeah, but Eam? It's it's E A N and they said give us your best Ean. I, I don't know what that is. I think you got a super I think you got a super chat like that before. They're just getting greedy with the Eans. Well now. until they explain what it is, what am I supposed to do? Say Ean or something. I don't know. I'm not supposed I to confused. I don't make the rules. Okay, yeah. what what was the question again? The episode Oh look who came right? crawling back. <laughs> What, throw a hole in the wall covered in dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, right why? Feed them. Why are you so specific well, about like, that? What? That's <laughs> a simple yeah. reference. Oh yeah, because they like they literally crawl back. Yeah. Yeah, Homer literally crawls back and and um. Oh, because they make a system where they has to crawl to get into the room. I yes, remember. That's right. Yeah. Isn't there a homeward Damn. bone equivalent in this metal? I can't find it. Uh, yes. I don't know if I have one. I guess I don't have one. But Lame. again, my question was, was thoughts on which episode of Doctor Who? Uh, Bojack. Uh, Bo 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 Hunter's Mark. Oh, well. oh, oh, the, uh, what, the, um, the gun control one. No, it was, which was the episode, Rags? Stupid Rags piece saw of the gun episode. control one. Rags definitely saw the gun control one. Free the one Rags Rags Fucking listen! Okay, now shut up and listen to what Rex says, okay? Ready? Rags, go. All right, Fringy, what, do you, uh, what are your thoughts on the stupid piece of shit episode? <sighs> the problem is, again, I'd be like, well, which one? Oh, um, that's what our response was. I was hoping you knew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it was the gun control one. Episode of Bojack, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. To be clear, yeah, probably the gun control one then. Wait, if that's the gun control one, we we talked about it on that stream, so I don't know why they'd be asking us for that. We did. Unless, yeah. the, well, there was, what about, was it Bojack the Feminist? That was another one that was really stupid. That could yeah. Have been um, 
it's definitely not the penultimate episode because that's like the only good one i mean well show. in that case if it's the gun one we've already said it's really bad oh wait no i've seen two i've seen two episodes of bojack oh shit Did, which was the other one you bojack, saw bojack the feminist one maybe no i i saw um the gun control one and the one where his moms and the um I th are, those, those are the same Hospital? episode or the episode <laughs> yeah yeah where he like recreates they... the show Mm, I think that was the same episode. Oh, all right. Yeah, that was like the A plot. Oof. And the B plot was the gun stuff. That's a lot. So of yeah, you've only seen one. Well then. Oh, I just saw Mollus Reddit post. We love you, Wumbo. Oh, that's wait, what? Yeah, that's chill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I uh. I posted on the subreddit because I was annoyed. Uh, Rag showed me a comment that was on the latest episode of EFAP that was like, um, is it in our conversations? Can you read it out, Rags? Let me see if um, I can find it. Uh, yes, I see it. Here it is. Oh, step away from the microphone a bit. That was loud. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's red it's not the Wonder uh, Woman one. That one was really dumb, and I responded to it in the video. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not Wonder Woman. It's, it, well, keyword would be lazy. Oh, it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Let me see what the original comment was. EFAP is lazy content with nine people agreeing. Yeah. Um, again, just for you guys' reference, because I know this, because <laughs> I talk to these guys regularly, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work that doesn't come through. Oh, it's not It's not immediately obvious, the work that gets put into a lot of this stuff. But it's a lot of work. I mean, do you think EFAP movies are, like, edited in a day? Because well, it takes it? longer than that. Very well, At least one another. Or, like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be real quick. Like, yeah, it's, um, takes a lot of work, I think. Though, I, you do get this impression in general, though, like, this perception that... Like, um, that there isn't as much work that gets put into something as I think people realize. I mean, one of the big things is, Definitely. like, actually getting references from other movies and, like, other TV shows and making sure it's all in order and getting all the footage together. That does take time, because you need to actually watch the content. Yeah, like, Fringy spent how many hours in this game to make his video? <laughs> uh, Jeez. yeah, it's, it's, I started this playthrough on the 10th of December, and it is now January, and I'm basically nearly done. Nearly. I'm not done yet, so. But that won't it. be counted as work, because it's like, well, you were playing a game, it's like, yeah, but, it, you understand, like, I needed to play it to make this video, and it wasn't fun a lot of the time. It stopped being fun a while ago. But that's yeah, the work when, you gotta put in. When you have to do anything longer than you would have otherwise done it, it is it is now officially work. Yeah, I think I think that's a good way of describing it. Yeah, everyone everyone likes to jump to like work is one definition. If it doesn't fit it, it's out. Instead of being like uh, work is complicated as a, as a set. Like the idea that I have to wa I watch a film five times before fully being happy with with uh, my references on it and stuff. It's like none of that was work. It's like I mean when you get to the point where you pause each scene and you go through rewind each dialogue piece and make sure you've got it right and I then. Cannot like the cross-reference with another scene it's like yeah but you're just watching films you're like i kind of hate you like <laughs> just a little bit um so yeah, yeah uh from dark souls 2 like come on <laughs> yeah they said like oh i get that you get a lot of super chats but it'd be nice if you stop being lazy it, it triggered me quite a bit um it wouldn't have triggered me on its own it triggered me because it had nine upvotes that means other people think that that's fucking valid and so um one thing I did notice that might have fueled this was uh, people were congratulating the editor for the Hill House video as if they, like, a good job editor, and I'm like, you, do they know it's me? <laughs> I don't know if they know it's me. Um, and obviously all the Mando ones took ages, and this isn't a shot at anyone whatsoever, okay? Even though the fact that I've said that, people will be like, this is totally a shot at someone. Um, if all of us had watched all of Mando, we just watched it, and then we just did whatever, and nothing else was happened, it wasn't recorded right or anything, and then I'm like, hey, I'm gonna write up a, um, a video, so it would be probably like 3,000 words, I guess, to make a 20 minute video if I spoke fast enough. I think that's my ratio. Like 5,000, no, 5,000 for half an hour, I think, is my ratio, so. 
Well, yeah, let's just say 5,000 words. Um, that summarize my main issues with the season and just have a couple of references as to examples. And then I uh, loop the trailer and then I release that video. And I could probably get that done in three days, I would say, to a, to a quality level that I would want with the restriction that it has to be looped trailer and it has to be limited references. And that would count as me having covered Mandalorian Season 2 to a lot of viewers. I think that's bullshit. Um, and that just comes under the semantics of what the word covered means. I think the four of us have covered Mandalorian Season 2 extensively. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, okay. But it, but but the the minis the evap minis I think a lot of people look at them the same way as they look at the streams they're like oh that's just you you recorded yourselves watching a show and discussing it afterward big whoop I'd be like wow so I've asked of Mein Camp oh I know that book I know Mein Camp yeah my mum um yeah so I guess what I was getting at was just that um. Been working a lot on Moola, especially in October, November, December of this year. More work on Moola than ever. I'm surprised people wouldn't have noticed the output has been way more than usual. Uh, yeah, fucked on. Not just on streams even, but um, to balance all of the covering uh, the community stuff, which we, we need to do a meme fab soon. Um, oh yeah, we do. Someone just sent me a meme now. Yeah. But then having both the boys and Mando and then maintaining the movies, doing all the Resident Evil ones, which are going to be great when they come out. Trust me on that one. Yeah, those were fun. <laughs> um, and yeah, and uh, I think a lot of people don't... I don't know if they just assume that everything on Moolah is done by someone else. Um, or that what's done on Moolah is easy. Like, it's just something you could do in a half half hour. And that I spend all of my week outside of EFAP just Ooh. watching TV and playing games. <laughs> Because uh, this comes back to a criticism. Remember, it's like you spend ten hours of every week doing bullshit. It's like, I'm sorry, how many of how many hours in your week are spent doing nothing? Like, but also, moreover, like, do you think that EFAP is ten hours of? Do you think that? Do you think it's easy to be entertaining for that long <laughs> without breaks? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason a lot of other streamers are like, you guys go for like ten, eleven hours at a time. That's insane. It's like there's a reason they say that. It's not just out of nowhere, just FYI. <laughs> but, and also, yeah, like, like how many people, like most people work 40 hour weeks. That means that like the other 40 hours of their wait, well, more than 40 hours, cause weekends too. That means yeah. that, like a good 60 to 70 hours of your time, you can do whatever you want. I don't so, think people, um... I think, I think people often underestimate how much free time they really have. Like, I'm not sure how many people are like that busy. You know what I mean? And yeah, you know and, when people and, are like, oh, I'm stupid. It's like, mm -hmm. are you though? <laughs> really? And a lot of people don't know that um, I've hired and then let go many editors because they're like, I'll do it. And then they start doing it and they're like, okay, this is too much. I don't want to do this. And it's like, that's fine. Because it's a lot. Um, the way that, because this is like the, the method, right? So you have the recording, the raw recording. Let's say we, we watch a Mando episode and then we record a half hour beforehand and an hour afterhand of, of, of afterhand? Is that something people say? Now you have the post hand. Post hand, after hand. Um, so you have half an hour before, hour after, and then just say 50 minutes for recording for whatever reason. Maybe we paused once or it's just that long. Um, and so raw, we get a, a nice, let's just say two and a half hour chunk. First pass is knocking out everything that's unnecessary. A lot of people to this day are still like, I want the raw recordings. It's like, no you don't. Trust me you don't. The raw recordings are lamer. You just have to watch loads of sequences of us just staring and listening. Yeah. I'm not saying anything it's, at it's all. Not, it's not fun. Yeah. Or stuttering or getting a thought out that was half-baked. And you go You're on wrong. to say, and then we can hide it away from you, <laughs> <laughs> or we don't, and people will ask us why we didn't. Yeah, it, it goes both ways. Uh, so that's the first that's pass, nice. and it takes ages to chop out all of the bullshit because you have to cut obviously twice for every single gap or every single chunk you want to take out, and you end up with a big old speckled timeline. Shove them all together. Some of them need to be faded in. Some of them can just hard cut. Then. Um, 
the correct references is usually what I do next, and animations. So just... Animations are a great way of avoiding copyright, by the way. Which is another thing a lot of people don't understand. Some people are like, oh my god. The, the animations, they're really repetitive. It's like, they're not just done for the entertainment factor. They're also really helpful that you don't have to just constantly stare at the screen, slowly have the tile come in and out. It's a nice little breakup. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm not das bullshit. I can't make as many varied uh, animations. I don't know how. I'm just not that kind of editor. But, hopefully they're entertaining enough as is. I'm having so much fucking trouble on these guys. Don't know if it's because I'm not concentrating right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's why. Not concentrating? Wow, lazy content mom. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. oh. And so that pass can take a long time, depending on how many animations there are, how many complex how complex they are. So for example, just the one where metal points with his finger in one of the Mando ones. It's like you have to get that reference. If it's a PNG automatically you're in luck, but if not you have to obviously make it with, with Photoshop. You have to line it up, zoom, and time it. And then sometimes it can break for whatever reason, because computers are wonderful. And that's all for a, like, you know, three-second joke that some people might not even find funny. It's like, yay. Yeah, for all the people who just listen and don't look, you won't even notice it. So that's fun. And then... Do you think that part of the reason why people yeah. assume that it's, it's not as much work is because there's almost this, um subconscious perception that EFAP is the second tier content and that like the the videos are that's like you know what I mean like the videos are the the real content and like EFAP is the secondary content well yeah if my main channel both different things. if the main channel had never existed and I'd started like doing these sort of like EFAP movies and everything existed let's say as early as 2010 and so that's all it ever was I think these past few months would have been a time where people have been like celebrating how much content's coming out rather than saying, hey man, pretty lazy. But what are you gonna yeah. do? Um, yeah, yeah then, and then there's a pass. Ludendorff, enough! <laughs> then Instead of Ludendorff, not enough! You want... Yeah, that's the thing. That guy, he had some ideas. <clears throat> some really good ideas. I don't even know what his name was. Someone said. I want to see the raw so I can see Rags asserting his dominance and crushing all the guests' opinions with his magnum dong. E I didn't e even know that was coming up tier. before I started reading it. So, someone said, EFAP is second tier, Friggy. Yeah, but the point I'm trying to get across is like, you, a, a lot of effort gets put into EFAP, which is considered the second tier thing, more so than some people put into the entirety of their like output. There's a reason people say YouTube. it's all <clears throat> relative. EFAP is second tier compared to, for example, Rags and I's primary videos. Sure. Is EFAP second tier to your average movie coverage? I don't think so. Yeah, our EFAP is way better than the primary stuff most people make, is basically what we're saying. That, that, yeah, I was kind of edging toward that, but you know, some yeah, might call that just, vanity. I'm gonna take us home with that one yeah hmm. so i think that might be a problem with my ps4 because i keep turning it on and it shuts off after like two minutes oh no mm. take the plug out the back put yeah, it back in a... i i did and oh, then no. it starts up again and then it does the same thing um so huh well it's, i guess it's a good that's a good enough reason as any to stop my crash for playthrough and break my ps4 no, but... oh, speaking of crash whoa. what about tomorrow yeah, no, fungo I, I know. Well, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep trying to uh, get it to work. Uh, I feel like my PS4 has been shit So, Rags, we got the stream up. Um. Oh, you. Yeah, I think I yeah. do. Yeah, I do. Let me go. I'm gonna. Back. I'm gonna be honest. Not a fan of this boss. Oh, this boss is terrible. Um, but I didn't get to show Rags why I just got killed, unfortunately. I'm just getting constantly crushed by uh, I will show you why, Rang. Or at least I'll be more specific why next time. So I, I just to. watched you get like triple CC'd there. Yeah. It's really That's fun. Lame shit. If you're a developer, never do that. If 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 you have something that knocks if you, if you have something that takes control away from the player, which you don't have to ever do, by the <laughs> way. That's not something you ever have to do. You chose to put that in. When you make someone vulnerable like that and there's nothing they can do, don't continue to hit them over and over. Mm-hmm. Cause that's fucking dumb. There's literally nothing you could have done. It's like, well don't get hit by the first one. It's like, well then just then just have the first one insta-kill you. That's what's gonna happen. 
these guys. In which case, you know what's funny about you saying that is it highlights the issue then. Because they'd be like, well, no, we don't want insta-kills. And it's like, that's what that is, though. <laughs> or at least it can that be. That is effectively what it is, yeah. In fact, I had... Let me post this. I actually made this um, the other day. Because as much as I love Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet likes to... I think sometimes they confuse difficulty with, let's just keep CCing players over and over again, constantly. And nobody likes it, and they hate it, and people will go out of their way to avoid content in the game where there's annoying fights where they're right. constantly getting knocked down and stunned over like and over again. Someone in chat said stay behind the legs. Like, where do you think I was going? Why would I stay in front? <laughs> like, come on. And, um, yeah, so this, this boss ranks is one of many in Bloodborne that it's too... it's too stuff. There's just too much stuff. And, Look um, at those tail things flying off it. And so, not only does the FPS <laughs> suffer, uh, nowhere near as bad as the Cthulhu stand-in monster. It's to make out its shape. Yeah, this is a great, great uh, vision I've got here. Most people ball out. Works too hard on the stage to make this craft. I'm sorry, people got us at our hardest to get perfect. Not coming through at all. Wait, what? Why? Because the enemy is super loud, right? She's reeing. Give me a sec. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> She's reeing. She does re a lot. I, I... Yeah, and, like when it comes to just an insta kill move versus just being stun locked and killed, the end result will be the same. However, gamers will at least oh, consider one extreme difficulty and they'll consider the other one just punishment you do not want to punish you you don't, you don't want to have your players feel like they're being punished you want them to feel like oh it's just very difficult um but yeah uh the the, the screen getting filled with fucking hair um really annoys me <clears throat> and uh, also maybe vicar okay. amelia as well if you like touch her hands, it'll count as a tag, and like you'll go, oh, and it'll like hurt you. It doesn't what hurt you for much, but it's really fucking annoying. Oh yeah, another thing too. In a lot of games, just because we because you are making contact with an enemy doesn't mean this is do it. It should be doing damage to you. Cool hand, Luke said this boss is tough. It's not. It's really easy. I just uh, all I needed to do in that one moment was have dodged just right so that I didn't take the four hits in a row and then healed and then carried <laughs> on. And this starts to reveal one of my significant issues with Bloodborne is that there's barely any good bosses. They're all kind of shit. Yeah. Uh, um, also, let me just bring this out from James here really quickly. Uh, Unironically, fuck those people. Bala works too hard, honestly, to make his craft. The certain people can't understand how hard it is to get editing perfect. It's such a huge disservice. Fuck them. I wish I had the ability to edit as well as he does. And would take it any day over construction work. Plastic and pacing again because I'm so fucking pissed about it. I think that might be part of the, uh, the issue, right? Is yeah. like, no matter just... how much work it is, a lot of people would... Yeah? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, finish the thing. Uh, fuck them for thinking you don't work, Mauler. Fuck them, you work hard. There you go. Yeah, well... Oh, I, mean, I was gonna thank say... Thank you. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> Yeah, all, all I was going to say was that I, I think that might be the issue, right? Because, like, no matter how much work it is, I think most people would prefer to do this than what they normally do. So, like, because, because everybody wants to do it, or a lot of people want to do it, and the fact that it's, like, a desired job, it's almost like, well, you know, if you are working hard, like, yeah, that you should be, because this is, like, way better than what... Or, like, you know, the fact that you would rather be for as hard well, no, I know, that's kind of the point I'm getting at. Like, for as hard of work it is, you'd rather do it than being construction or, like, a work a, a shitty retail, retail job or something. It's like, yeah, yeah, but still. <laughs> like, it's still, it's still work. Yeah. Um, but also, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if the issue is that... Because a lot of people, you know, like, you see people... Boogie often says, like, yeah, I work 100 hours a week. And when you hear stuff like that, it's like it almost deflates it for everybody else. Because yes. it's like, some yeah. of these people I don't have believe him. Truth. <laughs> I, all it shows what me is, is he, that he has a warped he, sense like, of what work is. Also, can I just highlight? Yeah, I've, like, I've beaten Amelia. I was just spamming. <laughs> I didn't... There was no talent in what I just did. And look at the FPS. Oh, Bloodborne. Just, like, I wish... Typical. Oh, yes, you, you were faster, damn it. I wish Bloodborne was better <laughs> than it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah.
I wish it would be on a PC. For reference, Bloodborne, uh, the second phase of Ludwig, the Maria, and the Orphan of Kos, all of those fights I consider fantastic. Like, top tier as hell. Yeah. Um, these ones, though, I'm just like, let me hack away at the goo until I win. <laughs> so you should try Final Fantasy XIV. I did once, and I didn't care for it, but also, I have too much of an investment into Guild Wars 2 in terms of time and knowledge of the mechanics yeah and money i've played it for so long now that i just i i'm not gonna go to another mmo i my the flaws of guild wars 2 i recognize and they don't bug me that much now and i can work around them a lot of the time and the game is too good and it keeps me coming back and i really enjoy it i've just i've invested too much into guild wars 2 in terms of time and effort and experience to just go to a new MMO. That's how yeah. they get you. It's That's the same with like Well, I don't think I don't think it's how they get you. It's just a natural result of having an investment in a game. Yeah. Um, and, and plus it's like it's done well. That's like good. I want them to get me. I want them to earn me. And Guild Wars 2 has earned me. Um Guild Wars 2 is free. There is a free variant of it, but in, there's not a subscription for it, if that's what you mean. Um, so, I, yeah, the Guild Wars 2 does not have a subscription. I'm not. I'm never going to play a game that requires a subscription. Fuck that shit. It is yeah, an I'm, archaic uh, yeah. game. You're an addict, Rags. <laughs> not an addict. <laughs> I've just invested a lot of time in this MMO over a long period of time. I want to get even better at it. Uh, yeah, look, and, the first step is admitting that there's a problem, okay? Oh yeah, that's right. The unfalsifiable addiction, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> in fin, yeah. It, what you're saying shares similarities with the sunk cost fallacy, right? It's like, I've spent so much time on it, I may as well continue. But you're saying you still have a goal in but mind? Like, I... <clears throat> well, I'm still what? So the idea being like, I want to stay with this one because I spent the most time in it. Is essentially the sun cost fallacy. fallacy. It's only yeah. it's it's only part of it. Like the because of the amount of time I've spent a lot of the time because I really enjoy it, and because I really like. It's not like I don't I I enjoy my time with it. I like playing it. That's why I have so much time in it. And as a result of all that time spent playing it. I have invested a lot into the account and to the characters in it and my knowledge of how the game plays and being a person who helps others to play. And when it comes to MMOs, I don't want to do all of that in a different game when I could be doing it in this particular game. You can ignore the Shadow Ops. Do it. Fucking stun locking me into the sides. I bet you play no, Reaper no. Necromancer you casual. So that's actually my main is a Reaper Necromancer. However, I'm quite good at it. Um and I have and I mostly don't nowadays I don't play that class as much as my other classes now. Um <laughs> but that is my most played in, in terms of sheer time, though nowadays I mostly play other classes. Do you have a problem with the game more without the game? No, like I just, I, I guess I don't, I'm not, I don't know what's being lost in translation here. I mean, well, because I was gonna say, like, as a sort of, it almost sounded like I was trying to be critical of what you just said, but at the same time, um, if someone was like, "Do you want to?" Cyberpunk 77, 2077 was another game where I was like, "I don't know if I want to start it because I don't know if I want to jump into something like that, um, knowing yeah, what it was." And if you've currently got something like that that you're happy in, and someone's like, hey, go play this other one, you're like, oh man, I, I, that's a lot of things. So when I was into LOL, um, friends of mine tried to get me into, this was going way back, Heroes of New Earth, and obviously Dota. And I was just like, I don't think I can handle multiple MOBAs. Like, it's hard enough for me to remember fucking all the all the meta yeah. on one of them. Yeah. Like, it, it takes time and experience. It takes work to get really good at playing a game. Yeah. Um, it, like, imagine you had put, year, it, like, it, like if you're a professional basketball player and you've devoted a lot of time and effort to this game that you love and the skills of it and the strategies of it and your ability to play that game and someone says, well, why don't you just play, like, baseball? As long as you're having fun, yeah. Rags. That's what yeah, a lot I am of people... Fun. Yeah, that's the thing. The reason I have all of the time, the reason I have all of those things in the game is because I enjoy playing the game. 
if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have all of those hours and... Yeah, because the uh, song cost fallacy almost it. always refers to when people are like, they're playing, like, it would happen with friends of mine, they play League every single game, they would be angry and annoyed, and they'd be like, well, yeah. I, you know, I've unlocked most of the characters, you guys play it, and I know it really well, so I'll continue. It's like, ugh, not a good reason yeah, to like continue. But in that sense, like a sunk cost fallacy is generally referenced to be like, oh yeah, well, I will eventually get the payoff, right? Mm -hmm. But I get well, the payoff the, every time I play. The easiest way to uh, to sort of penetrate the sunk cost fallacy is just to remind yourself that the time is unrecoverable. Whatever investment you've done, it's gone now anyway. So like nothing. So because if you think about it that way, then you can sort of rationalize. Oh. Okay, I mean, I'm not getting that time back no matter what I do, so really, whether or not I continue should be based on whether or not it's worth continuing for its own sake. Not because I spent so long playing it. That time's gone anyway. Yeah, it's, um... It's Slut. like... As someone said, <laughs> I feel like you're calling out someone specific, Rags. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm really not. If I <laughs> Wait, am... Why would... it, it is, if I am, if it seems like I'm calling out someone specific, uh, specific then that is purely coincidental. I, say, who, who, um, what, I, I don't have any person in mind. What about what you said sounds like you're going for someone specific? I'm confused. Like, what? I, I've I don't been know. listening I guess to someone you. Thinks that I'm, I guess they're referring, they, they know of someone who said an argument that's against mine, or they're, someone's, I'm not sure. Maybe what Maybe. I've said has in some way. Um, nah. Um, Someone said, "Why don't you, the, 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 what race? They're all Char because Char are the only interesting race in Guild Wars Two. Uh, Is that they're a criticism or? cool as shit and they're great. Um, they're all Char because fuck playing a human, basic ass yeah. bitch human. Yeah. The Norn are just big humans. The the, the Asura are rats, are annoying rats, and they." And they are the biggest. The biggest damage to my uh, to my suspension of disbelief in that game are the Asura, not because of anything cultural within them in the game, but because it, it's a it's an MMO. So all of the races are equal and the genders are equal, so you could play the game as a game. But seeing a little tiny fucking Asura with a great sword running around, how it doesn't <laughs> get stomped by anything when you can play as a Char or a Norn, which are super big, that. That, to, to my brain, is my biggest problem with my suspension of disbelief in that game. But that's just me. Um, uh, so, I, it's it's different for everybody. Some people don't have an issue with it at all. Oh my god! But, yeah. I didn't know she can do that. Jesus! Oh, someone said Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah, that's purely coincidental. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even referencing <laughs> Michael Jordan. Though I heard he was not nearly as good of a baseball player as a basketball player. So, uh, that's just what I mean. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, Rags, if you can see, are you max level in BF1? No, actually, because max ranking in Battlefield 1 takes a lot of fucking time. I have... Wait, spot. is that before or after Prestige? Are they talking about? No, max ranking. There is no Prestige in Battlefield 1. Oh, okay. It's just you get you get up to rank 150 is the max rank. Let me what actually it... check my hours in Battlefield 1 since it came out. What, would, what do you reckon eyeballing it would be the equivalent to in terms of prestiging on COD? Like, would it be Prestige 5 equivalent, or...? I, I've played COD so little over the years, I couldn't even... I don't Maybe you can answer that. Ah... Uh, yeah, but the problem is I haven't played enough Battlefield <laughs> 1 to know how much it would be. So like, let's... And, and also, it depends on what Call of Duty we're talking about here, right? Like, if we're talking about Modern Warfare 2, it's a lot different, so, like... Whatever the new ones are. Yeah, I I couldn't tell you oh hours, guys. Um, as an example, I'm I'm about rank 140, 145, 147 ish around that area. I have 721 hours in Battlefield One. Um, right. I, I think uh, I think if you play yeah. Call of Duty for 721 hours, the I problem is again like. I'm just thinking of Modern Warfare 2, like, yeah, if you played Modern Warfare 2 for 721 hours, you'd probably Jesus. max prestige. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't see why oh, not at that point, right? right? <laughs> Let's see. Let me actually... I can actually tell you how much... There is a there is a site, uh, which unfortunately I think is going to be going down. Um, but how it, long like, to beat? It is a... Oh, how long to beat should be going down, right? Yeah, I wouldn't hope, No, no, I would it's, hope it's the site that, like, tracks your guild war time. Oh. Uh, 
Let's see. I remember um, when League sites that were third party started tra tracking and tracing everybody's stats, and a friend of mine was like so obsessed with getting good at the game that every time he'd load into a game, he would check everyone's names against that site and then basically be like, well, I've lost. He'd be like, oh, oh man. Wow, that's a, that's a good that's... attitude to have. He was he was the a guy who was incredibly good at video games. You you'd have loved him, Rex. On on Call of Duty, he was he, the kind of shit he'd pull off in that game would actually like have me wondering <laughs> if he had um, hacks. <laughs> he was incredible. He was really good at games, but he had an ego that that chased it. But the kind of ego that um, cost him friends. That that kind of ego. Ah. Uh. Unfortunately, I saw, yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's uh, he was know, he was a good guy. He just uh, he couldn't handle it if people on his team were bad. Even in, when you were like, "Hey," he would be like, "What to casually play a game of LOL or card?" You'd be like, "Sure," and then you don't do well, and he's like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go." And you're like, <clears throat> "Okay." <laughs> so yeah, so of the characters in Guild Wars Two, it looks like forty percent of all characters play human, oh, and what? they're just the most they're the most <laughs> basic. Bitch race that you've ever why, imagined in a video game. Why does anybody game? play humans in any RPG? Uh, like so fucking lame. I, don't, I, I feel like an alien right now. Like what, I feel like it's it wouldn't be surprising to me that someone would want to play as humans, even in a fantasy. Um, I, no, I, to, I, me, I, to I, me, I, like I, if I have the choice, if I have oh the choice, God, of human or anything else, I would absolutely pick. No, but anything yeah, else, but the like, logic is simple. It's like for my the sake of my immersion, I might want to play a human in this world, just so that I can be like me. Why does immersion to play as a that's, that's so not what I said, really Fringy. That is not I what would... I said at all. Yeah, that's not what he said. <laughs> well, you said you said that their argument would be, well, for, for the sake of improving my immersion, I'd play as a human. So my immediate I question didn't say is, improve. I just said for the sake of my immersion, sure. What, is, what does that mean, then? I want you to cl for the sake of my so, um, immersion. So, I presume, <laughs> I assume you're on, you'd agree with this, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. I assume they're human, the person choosing to uh, play this game, and thus, yeah, okay. choosing to play as a human might assist them in their immersion of being in this world, rather than going full okay. fantasy. Right, yeah. I could see why it would for the most part. For me it doesn't, but I could see why for a lot of people it would. Um, yeah, I'm not saying I would do it, but I'm just saying if someone yeah, did it, I'd be like, that doesn't surprise me really. It's not, like for, for Guild Wars 2, it's not particularly that they are human, it's just that it's the most basic, normal, fantasy rare. I like this one, so you can't expect a frog to understand. <laughs> Good memes. Their their area is, it's just so cookie cutter standard. I see. I'm I'm a little bit different. I like I outright find it kind of boring to play as humans in any series where you can play as something else. I'd rather yeah, um, be able to immerse fine. myself in a different culture yeah, and a whereas... different race and a different history rather than like if Mass Effect gave me the choice, I'd absolutely want to play as like a Turian. I'd be a Krogan. Yeah, Krogan would be a really cool, but I would pick anything but human, probably. Like, Also, Marcus Cyborg, I saw you in there. Hello. And hello, all of chat. I like doing the whole, I, I mute and speak to you, specifically. No, I want to be something that's exotic or interesting, and... Yeah. I think that's... I think that, yeah, but see, if, and... if I were in a group of people right now saying, wait a minute, this many people play as non-human? That's crazy. Wouldn't they be playing as human? I'd be like, I don't know. I could see like a lot of people wanting to play as something other than themselves for the sake of the fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, when you choose whatever race you want to play in a fucking thing, it's like you can come up with all kinds of reasons, right? I suppose that's true. Yay, we did it. We defeated racism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again? Getting kind of boring now. I know. Oh, How many times do I have to defeat you? this zombie? Oh, look, it's racism again. It's like, yeah, uh, fine. The most common class, the least common class is a weapon. Interesting. But, uh, yeah. Um, but let's see. Um, cast statistics. Can I... There, there was a way for me to... Play full medic. Like... Hello, Mary, in it. Oh, update on my PS4. It might have been overheating, so I've unplugged it, and now it's just sitting on the floor over there. Oh. <laughs> cooling down. <laughs> Over here. Wait, was it like really? Was it on for a while before you tried it today? Uh, well, no. I mean, I, I mean, when I got into this call, I, I mean, I've had it on rest mode, but I always assumed that that was that was fine. The when, fact that um, that's a feature that the console has. I mean, you know, probably more than I do about PS4 functionality. Is it one of the earlier models? Did you get it ages ago? Yeah, mine is. Well, I mean, mine is as probably like launch or close to it. I think because, like I said, I got mine in January or February. So. 
I, I suppose what's confusing me is that I've spent the last three weeks playing a copious amount of Crash 4 on it and have had no problems. Mm. And then I think what might have happened was because I started uh, installing Ooh. a system update and then I left for like 10 minutes and when I came back it wasn't on. So maybe uh, maybe it didn't finish properly. Maybe that's causing mm. the issue. So that's possible. Back Perhaps. And then, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I hope it same. goes okay. Otherwise, Mel and I... I have to just repeat what we did tonight tomorrow for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least if you're well, there, it'll I, act well, as something different. Considering I just uh, spent money to buy the old Hunter's DLC. You know what? Even if so. you don't play it, that's not money wasted. Much like I just wasted my life by crawling into a hole and dying for no reason. <laughs> for no reason. No. Wait, do I download oh, Guild Wars 2? I think you have to. It's like a one-time purchase, right? Guild Wars 2, yeah, you, you just you buy it. No, there is a free version. You, uh, I, surely, okay. if you surely if you Google Guild, I don't want to. I don't. I'm trying to think of the least condescending way to say this. Oh no! So if you Google Guild Wars 2, surely you'll be able to Stop. find out. There, I think it's on Steam now though as well. Um, I uh, oh no, they they're delaying the Steam release because they're focusing on the next expansion. Um, gangs but uh yeah uh arena they have their own launcher for it uh, arena net does um but i uh, just to check the time talking about investment time my my oldest character wish upon a char uh has 1060 hours on it um stop cutting them all up wait so mel you did the witches first is it uh, yeah, I'm going to... I always thought that Amelia was easier than the witches, maybe I, I had that backwards. The witches are piss easy. I just got stunned locked by those two enemies. Holy like shit, my... game. Really, do you need characters to go boom, 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 and I just sit there? <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, do you think Bloodborne's a really good game? Um, I think... Did I... I can't remember who I was talking to. Is it Mel? No, I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm mainly asking so that people in chat can I find mean, out. I've let it slip before that Bloodborne is a game I love, but I think is incredibly overrated. Um, mm -hmm. Bloodborne is fucking think... frustratingly designed a Part lot of, of the what time. What works in its favor is that it has an awesome world. Bloodborne has such a cool world. Yeah, I would even go as far as saying it's one of my favorite Gothic. game worlds of all time. It's yeah, fucking awesome. Like Gothic architecture and sort of this grim dark um, Lovecraftian almost to a certain extent. It's yeah, the really um, cool. there's so much detail and so much effort went into making this world. Unbelievably this cool. Story actually, because one of the, the books I worked on a long time ago was like hugely inspired by Bloodborne because I thought the world was so cool. Even though I barely, I, even though I didn't even finish the game and didn't understand anything about it, I'm like, hey, it looks cool. That's enough. It's a cool world. Jeez. If I had a little machine that could just answer any question, I would, I would ask the, I would ask it how many hours I've played Minecraft in my life. Hmm. <laughs> Cause I, cause I don't, I, there's no way for me to possibly track that or even make a guess. Um, cause I was thinking about what my most played games are. Oh, they threw have, a Molotov at me when I was in iframes. That's handy. <laughs> cause since oh, I, I didn't get the second stagger. Guild Wars this year, it has surpassed Battlefield 4 as my most played game that I'm sure of. Dude, um, I annihilated Vicar Amelia. That poor Vicar. I'll tell you, Dude. spam with fire paper, easy. <laughs> yeah. own business. This is the thing, a lot of the bosses in Bloodborne I find where I just hack away at them. It's like, did I win this time? It's like, you did. Like, cool. <laughs> yeah. the, only, the only thing that really determines my loss is if I was able to, or unable to have hit triangle, you know? When I needed to. Yeah, also this is where they give you the password, I think? So now I can go back down to the thing. I remember more about this game than I thought I would. Um, I just saw a chat now that was too old. Uh, this was super chat um, from Rocky Thirteen. Too too old. Do you consider speedrunners finding exploits objective flaws? Same question with speedrunners finding glitches. I would say yeah, because um, the game is objective flaws. To some How? Extent. Okay, so it, it really depends on what kind of flaw we're talking about here. If you um, sitting so in a corner I and hitting left, left, right, right, up, down, jump, jump, throw grenade in top right of corner, and then look to the sky and you fall through the map <laughs> and win, I'd be like, who the fuck? How? What? Like, I'm pretty sure yeah, every single game in existence has these flaws. You just have to find them. Yeah, but they're, so they're still flaws nonetheless, right? 
so if if we're talking about adherence to a standard in terms of objectivity i would say that a speed runner finding flaws would be objectively good so long as they make the run quick wait you mean like you think that they're, they're a good thing so the question, if, Rag, though, is like, we talk about glitches and shit being flaws in games, like Cyberpunk, and if a if a speedrun is like, oh, I found a glitch that destroys all of Ocarina of Time, does that make it a shit game now? It is, it makes him, an, it makes it an objectively good speedrun. Yeah, well, like like I think the only ignore, thing that makes a speedrun good is how quickly it, it goes. Ignore like the speedrun element. The, the, the speedrun element's yeah, so important. Yeah, we're, we're talking about as a game. Because like, remo removes, I'm like... Remove speedrunning from the whole equation. Ignore that. Yeah, because the spoo Yeah, because I I figured it was important because the super chat specifically mentioned it. No, no, as an Fring example. Fringy's moved on to I a concept point, now. I think the point <clears throat> that the question was trying to get at is okay. So imagine like if yeah, like if a glitch is something that we consider to be a flaw, if a really obscure glitch was found by like a speedrunner that makes the game re like you know you beat the game effortlessly if you can do it what kind of is that a flaw what kind of floor is that that's kind of what we're talking about yeah and the um, first thing i want to talk about is the accessibility of that floor and the commonality of it being discovered i suppose because i don't know that like the one i just mentioned right just this this crazy floor that no one's ever going to be able to find versus you can't even open the front door of the game without falling through the floor sort of thing uh, these are, i guess uh, it's the idea of how much it impedes how much does it impede the functionality of the game? Would that would like have to be probably the standard we're looking at, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. so, because talking about games objectively is a lot more complicated than movies. Which is funny, because I remember like when Total Biscuit talked about the conversation, he often said that talking about games objectively is actually a lot easier than talking about films. Because, well, like, it depends on what category, right? Because um, to a degree, the... Uh, a lot of people look at stories as like impossible to quantify uh, in terms right. of objectivity, as opposed I, to a mechanic not working. Simple? Not necessarily easy, but simple. Yeah, like I'm um, perpetually bitter that I never got to talk to him. It would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. Stupid well, cancer. Someone with Demon Souls. Yeah. So yeah. if you tag me and have Demon Souls or Dark Souls in your question, I'm gonna know basically nothing about it. Uh, I know not, uh, they I, are the Dark Soul guys here. That's yeah. Really yeah. I, I know about the glitch. So the glitch is basically you. I think the short version is you need a gold coin. Uh, pop it. Go back to the uh, to the lady that gives you level ups, and then for some reason your luck just torpedoes upwards to like insane levels, and then you get the uh, she was blues blue something sword, which is luck based and scales with luck, and you basically one hit everything in the game, and that's not a hard trick to do. Hmm. That's a I'll Bloodborne one. That. That's a good trick. Uh, uh, no, that's a Demon Souls one from the new from the new one. Okay, because I was actually going to bring up like um, it's funny that like, uh, for those who don't know, right? In in DS2, there are, there's a healing source called Life Gems, and you can they're very cheap, and you oh, stack yeah. up to 99 <laughs> of them. If um you kill the tutorial boss, I call him the tutorial boss because I can't understand how it could be anything other than that. It's right at the beginning. It's really shit. Um, you need to talk to one person who's near there and she will move to your home world if you will and she will have infinite life gems for you to buy off her for very cheap that um, essentially make it so you can coast through the entire game and some people referred to that as using an exploit I was like I don't think that's an exploit that's just the game that's the game offers you something and if you take it or notice it exists then uh... you know what I mean it's hard to categorize all of these very specifically but um, yeah. Yeah. there's a significant <clears throat> difference between the one I just said, the one Metal just said, and then the one where it's like you have to do all kinds of crazy bullshit to be able to just instantly complete the game or something. Um, I sorry, I had to step out for a second to pee because I drink a lot of uh, water through tea. Mm. Um, when all it right. comes, I will say this on speed uh, speed running. So, I don't like watching speed runs that take advantage of glitches. I like watching speedruns where they try to, like, min-max the intended mechanics of the game. Like, what is the best intended playthrough of the game that you could get mm -hmm. that doesn't involve you glitching through walls and finding, like, legitimate bugs and exploits? Oh, that's not where I want to go, shit. Um... I like to see, like, if, like, a normal, like, quote-unquote, normal playthrough of the game just 
like the the best version of that. Like the I think the best thing is though play. is I agree, but I think that that getting the fastest time is the top priority, and when that's the case, people will look. Well, for that's exploits. why we categorize them different. That's why. Yeah. They're completely yeah. Different Are there different categories, categories of them? Okay. Oh yeah, glitches. Oh yeah, like oh, there's, there's like a million. And... Really yeah, so there's a lot of the yeah metal. You can yeah go for it. No, that was all I was saying. There's like a million categories for every game. Like look at. Just right. look up all the Ocarina of Time there are, categories you can do. It's nuts. There are speedrunners that think the same as Rags. They'll be like, I consider you to be a lame speedrunner if you never used the game as intended to do I what you said. I don't know about say. lame. Well, but, I said like. like. Doesn't have to be oh, one. Oh, I like to consider it lame. Um, no, I, I, I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, for me, it's not entertaining to... Why, uh, I can appreciate 100% the, like, people being able to use skill to pull off these crazy, incredible glitches. Yeah, there's always going to be a skill cap with glitches as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's not like I don't appreciate the skill that goes into the glitchy ones. I just don't find them interesting or entertaining. Um, as, or as nearly as interesting or entertaining as someone going through the game as it's intended, but with speed running in mind, what is the ideal way that I can get through this game as fast as I can using its mechanics as intended? Um, yeah. Uh, and you, for me, it's usually just a curiosity. Once I see what the glitch is, like someone says, I can beat Portal in uh, 0 0.3 seconds, I'd be like, huh? <laughs> like, okay, but that's not entertaining. Or fun. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it'll be entertaining the first time I see it, but then I'll be like, okay. Anyway, and and plus one of the reasons I find it interesting and entertaining to watch, like quote unquote legit speed runs for just the sake of nomenclature here, glitchless. Um, when yeah, glitchless mm -hmm. is that when you watch that, that stuff that you as a normie can apply to your own game. Yeah, it's 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 very applicable knowledge that you can use. I'm not saying you can't apply glitches, but like when you're when you want to play the game. Oh, as like the game it was intended oh, the strategies you can see in that speed oh, yeah. run are right. very good strategies that you can just use and remember and when you play through the game you're like oh, oh yeah i want to hit that guy first and then i want to hit this guy first and i know that if i'm over here in this corner i could do this stuff you know they just like strategies like battle strategies and tactics that you can apply to your own uh, rags use avarice in a sentence uh let's see I mean, avarice just means greed. So, it's like the the Wait, miserly. That, that, that's a request. They just want you to avarice. use it in a sentence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just someone said use avarice in a sentence. Like, uh, the the, the so baron though. of the castle. His avarice knew no bounds. Um, to all, what is more important: a game with good story but bad gameplay, or a game with a bad story but good gameplay? Good I would gameplay. always go with the latter. I think good yeah. gameplay is like critical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good gameplay um, uh, is the most important thing rare. that a video game can have. Yeah, it's, it's rare that a, good, a great game around. has bad gameplay. Very rare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I mean, if I look at my top ten list of my favorite games, it's like some of them are up there because of story, but there are none well, up there that have bad gameplay. Uh, one of the, yeah. I think the most relevant example would have to be Soma. A lot of people say the gameplay is bad. It's like, nope, the gameplay is absolutely what's required. It, it, it reaches the... It, it, it's not buggy, it's relatively layered, it, it, it's serviceable to deliver the story, the gameplay functions completely, there's nothing wrong with it. And the scenario of an incredible story but absolutely broken mechanics is like, I don't think that game is getting considered yeah, great. Yeah, I, I guess that's the idea, right, it's like, bad get functional okay. does not mean bad. If a game is functional but it's not anything more exceptional than that in terms of gameplay, that's not bad, that's functional. Um... That was a nice little uh, tautology. It's, it's fu functional doesn't mean bad. See, bad is bad and functional is functional. <laughs> well, you can't be wrong when you do that, so it's worth it, right? Nailed it. So I, said, I disagree with Rags oh. because when you're looking for glitches to exploit, the state of how the game is beaten has progression where new strats are always being found. I'm well, not sure what you disagree with me with specifically. Maybe and I saying, don't even think I fully comprehend what your sentence is trying to say. Uh, I guess if, if I was to ponder on it, are they trying to suggest that, like, 
when you apply all glitches, the game becomes like a different beast and that there are yeah, a whole it... new set of like mechanics almost in terms of just, can you play, you know, glitch, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, I can. And it's like, how fast can you do it? And how well can you do it? You know? I mean, if it's turning, if you're turning it into a different game, then like, then that's not the game that I'm playing. So. Could they theoretically I, I... make the same argument back to you? How much? Uh, I don't. If they made it back to me, it would still apply. apply. Because if playing Forever. the game normally or as it was intended is basically all of the games that I play, um, I don't glitch games and I don't try to exploit games in some unme you know, in, in some crazy unintended way. Um, Look at this guy, you're spinning around him and he's just keeps spinning. <laughs> oh, my God, Ow, just... he headbutted me. <laughs> it's like, stop it. Rags, I wanted to thank you for introducing me to Echo since I never would have found it otherwise. Yeah, Echo's a little, a little gym, kind of, a, a little indie gym. Uh, Metal should consider streaming that. Yeah, um, Metal. Oh my God. Wow. It takes a while to kind of get it going because there's a lot of story. It, the story is based, it's an indie game and it mm -hmm. definitely has a budget to it. Um, so almost basically all of the story is told through dialogue between the protagonist, um, and, and uh, AI, her AI companion, London. And it's pretty good and pretty interesting, and the voice acting, I think, is really quite good. But it takes a while for the game to get going, but once it does, the mechanics are quite interesting, and the right. level design is pretty good. So that would be one you should consider for a stream sometime. Echo is one of a Alrighty. really excellent game. I really enjoy Echo. I saw somebody ask if I can do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Um, probably not. I know all the lines, but I'm not sure if that's... I feel like when they ask for that, do they, are they actually looking for like a one-to-one, -one, or are they just looking for memes? I think I they're know. looking see for... See you at the party, Richter! <laughs> yeah, see? It's fucked up. <laughs> they're looking for the results of an attempt. Get to the chopper! Go! <laughs> Get to the chopper! I can do like the... the Get to the chopper. The, uh, the tonality. Consider that a divorce. Put that cookie down. Now. 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 Put that cookie down. Now. Lundorf. Lundorf. Did you? Oh, did you? Did you? Did you did Lundorf. <laughs> Everyone see the thing I retweeted? I think it was last night. Like, the, it's it's a scene from GTA 5, but it has like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger voice over it. And instead of the N word at the end, he just goes like, Now. <laughs> now. <laughs> I cannot I say that the world. Like, they replaced <laughs> not Lamar allowed. with Robocop, and that was really funny. It was just Lamar, but Robocop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Lamar is, uh, is his name. But, uh, wait, is Lamar the, yeah, point, the, the protagonist, or is that the. His, no, Lamar his, uh, is that. Uh, Lamar is like Franklin's best friend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, it's the scene it's where they the stand outside where he talks about he's getting all the. He should get yeah, some yeah. and shit. And then yeah. he just, uh, instead of the Edward, just goes like. <laughs> when, he, when he leads in, it's fucking hilarious. I love it. The number of, like. There are so many good one liners in Commando. Oh my I, um. God. I like, there's. Remember, Sully, how I promised to kill you last? Yeah, strike, Major! You did! I lied. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people want us to watch that for uh, EFAP movies. We uh, will. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. <laughs> Dude, um, I think I said this on one of the, uh, a drinker stream, I think, but like, Commando impressed me like hell. Um, you've, have you, I'm assuming you've seen it, Rags, or not? Commando, uh... Arnie film. Maybe so long ago, I could barely so, remember. Much I'm going to paraphrase the movie, if that's a okay. fucking thing one can do. The uh, the premise is like, I haven't seen it in so long, so someone's going to be like, that's not it, but just bear with me, because I just like the idea. I think it's so oh. cool. Um, he's like ex-Marine or whatever, uh, and he, he lives with his daughter in some faraway place, and some bad guys want him to do a job for them, and so they're going to kidnap his daughter and hold her like hostage until he does the thing. And so this, the, the film begins with he's unsuccessful in preventing them from stealing her. And then like he gets back to his house and there's this guy there who's sitting in his chair. And it's in the setup of like the villain will now explain to you. Like you know like John Wick, for example, that fucking guy who's like, oh, you made a blood pact. You just sit in a chair yeah. and you're just waiting for him to explain what the hero has to do. And as he's explaining it, Arnie's just looking around out the windows trying to see if he can see where the fucking bad guys are. And then like 
the guy says, um... It, it ends with some kind of epic thing where the guy is just like, So, do we have a deal? And then Ani just goes, no, and shoots him. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. Are you allowed right, to do uh, that? That was the that was the right wrong part. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's... Yeah, right wrong. <laughs> it's, it's, this would be like Ani. It's hard to really quantify specifically what is so incredibly enjoyable about Ani as an actor because there's not just one element. Like no, he's he's really um. He's just he's he's got a um he's got a thing whatever that thing is you know how they're like you got it baby that thing you got it's that like panache. that's what he's got you got that panache the shazam the flubu goop that gives you the get up and you. go to take on this business did you flubu my goop dude um Mel I was being uh raped by one of the witches of Hemwick and the other one appeared while the other like Randys oh, were surrounding shit. me and she just fucking detonated and killed the others it's like thanks. Oh. Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, really uh, nice Africa, one. Thanks for the resubs. Uh, somebody says charisma. It's like, well, is it charisma uh, to say, put that cookie down now and well, have it so be funny? Is that this, charisma? What I was getting at is how I enjoy him in Batman and Robin is entirely dissimilar from how I enjoy him in T2, in like and that's Batman. entirely dissimilar from how I enjoy yeah. him in Commando and Total Recall. So it's like, I don't really know uh, how to explain it. Yeah. It's he's, a, just, he's got a um, he's got some versatility for a guy somehow. who sounds exactly <laughs> the same. Yeah, I know it's it's weird. Like if you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I mean, goddamn, like Radio Wolf Castle is meant to be a parody of him, but it's like yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger is really like I like him. I like watching him in movies. Yeah, and I do. Uh, um, well, I mean, he might still be one of my like he's certainly one of my favorite actors of all time. I don't know if he's number one, but like there's not a movie he's in that I don't enjoy, and that's um that's something. Because they range from some of my favorite movies of all time to some of my favorite, like, ironically enjoyed movies of all time. So it's like, what's going on there exactly? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think yeah. we said it already. Remember that movie you watched when I was over uh, with, the, with the assassin thingies? Yeah, there's a fucking movie called, like, We Have to Kill Richter or something. Not yeah. Richter. Oh, that's that's from... Yeah, that's... <laughs> no, um... Yeah. Heinrich... Well, someone in chat's gonna I, know. I, I don't remember, uh, but it was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, the, the movie is basically... Guy has a girlfriend... Guy's an assassin. Guy's girlfriend leaves him for Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's the... Gunter, that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he wants to kill Gunter, and he gets a team of assassins together to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger, basically. And he, over the course of the film, is killing all of them. Because he's, like, the best assassin ever sort of thing. It's all a comedy. It's quite funny. And Arnie's fucking class in it. Yeah. He's not in I, um, it, like, I'm much kidding. at all, but for what he's in it, it's fun. Now I'm just thinking about Predator, because Predator had a lot of good one-liners. Predator's around fucking amazing. Line, well, the thing with Predator is, I, you know, you know the, you son of a bitch, the handshake? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid and I watched that, and it's just like, it's funny. I feel like a lot of uh, my perspective on life was informed <laughs> by 80s movies, because a lot of it was just seeing white guys and black guys chilling out and being friends. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so... Oh, you lost. Oh, no. Well, do you see what they I'm did? They did, the they did the AoE I move did. three times in a row. It's like, damn. That AI is fun. Yeah. Also, I, no, like, that, that two hits. Ended, yeah, two more it. hits and she'd be dead. <laughs> so the game's totally yeah. trolling me. It's like, lol, you lose. But guys, this, this isn't the real run, so it doesn't count. Exactly. Um... I always, and a lot of people say that handshake ended racism. It's like, <laughs> yeah, if, you if only son it of a bitch. It's um, I mean, it's some of the most testosterone you've ever seen in a film. <laughs> Dude, I just love the fact that not only is that film known for that, it's also one of the greatest slasher films of all time and action movies. It's also really well written. Like that's a it's fucking well. Well, I think that uh, that seems to be the thing that you because I mean, Total Recall is another film that I feel like if we rewatched it, it'd be like, wow, this is actually like really good. Like I feel like that film is really good. It's just been so long. Like it actually has some interesting things to explore about memory and identity, and um, you know, reality and stuff like that, uh, while being a really fun action movie. Do you remember um? Remember when films could do that? Be fun and also smart? <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember when there's no. two... Um, is it, what's his name in Total Recall? It's not Dylan. It's like, fucking hell, my mind is uh, terrible right are now. Are you talking about Dylan. the Richter... Oh, sorry. No, no, um, his name. What, what the hell? Oh, Quaid? oh my god. Yeah, Quaid, right? I, yeah, it's, it's, it's Quaid. It's no, no, Quaid. no, 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 no! Yeah, that's right. Uh-oh. 
Oh, I need to see. Need oh to no! So that's designed to piss you off? And I obviously <laughs> fell for it, I just lost 30k, 30k <laughs> echoes, so... <laughs> I don't mind... Like, dying to that is fine, but not when 30k echoes were just lost because a witch did a fucking yeah. stun lock move on me. That's... <laughs> <laughs> this like is an example, getting... by the way, of I and I think Rags is going to agree with me so hard right now. Um, this is not so haha. The you failed. This is wow. The game is a cunt. <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. I guess. Oh yeah. And this time, his name is Doug Quaid. It's Doug Quaid. Yeah. So what I was going to say Quaid, was yeah. um, there's there's a part where he's there's two Quaids. And uh, he's using a like a, the hologram of one to trick a bunch of people. And there's one part where a bunch of guys yep. pull guns on him, and he just goes, "You think this is the real Quaid? It is." And then he it shoots is. them. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, man. And again, seeing you at the party, Richter is really funny as well. Um, and consider that a divorce, hilarious. I, and this is what I mean, like. And then you have that scene where it's um the red pill nine years before uh the Matrix oh, did it. So dumb. You know, like. Mm -hmm. <sighs> It's such a- and, and also, I think my favorite part about that scene is, like, he says, you know, the walls of reality will come crashing down. He shoots him in the head, and then the walls of- the walls come crashing down as the guys bust in. It's like, hang on a second, maybe this is, like, bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you could- you could come out of that film going, like, maybe, like, he actually has gone into psychosis. Yeah. Like, maybe he has lost his mind. The fact that it could go both ways. Thing. Um... But I guess that's what I mean is like, I, uh, especially more and more lately, as I'm trying to figure out what exactly kind of story I'd like to write, I'm just like, you know what? Comedy and drama can like really go together really well. I think, uh, I think, again, we talk oh. about a lot, but like, uh, Joss Whedon is a good example of comedy and drama Edgar Wright. in the same scene. <clears throat> James Edgar, Gunn. Oh, Edgar Wright is an excellent example. James Gunn, yeah. And I feel like when I think about a lot of the stuff that I like, it's like, oh, it's, it's that stuff, not like strict comedy or strict. And I think that's what I wanted Bojack to be when we were rewatching it, and it just isn't that because it's not <laughs> funny and the drama's deficient. It's funny you say that because like I'm trying to read out <laughs> super chats, but the next one I was just it says uh, I always thought Bojack looked absolutely terrible, and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's they're strictly talking about the animation style or if they're talking just about the show in general. Probably the show in general. I mean, the animation style is not uh, isn't that great in terms of. Joss Whedon is a worthless hack. I Changed my mind. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. But like, Buffy <laughs> is so instrumentally important and fantastic, and also Avengers. Like, I'm sorry. Have we all just decided that Avengers isn't a good film? Like, I like how we're all shitting on Joss Whedon. Like, he's he's a talentless hack, and it's like, dude, like the the movie land as it exists today wouldn't if it wasn't for Avengers, and that was something he made, and it's something that his DNA is all over. Ew. Like, I'm well, sorry, yeah. guys. I've, he's, I've he's heard people writer. attribute that um, John Favreau is the like the DNA of the MCU. It's like I mean he made Iron Man, but Avengers is what totally solidified the MCU. Um, yeah. You had to nail that one, and it was done at that point. Then you can make as many shitty movies as you want. The MCU is always going to keep going. And I think well, no, it's funny not. though because I uh, <laughs> I was doing a little bit of reading into the history of Guardians of the Galaxy, and. Um, and initially, uh, Amanda Seyfried was meant to play Gamora, but she turned it down because she didn't want to be in the first MCU bomb. Like, that was- and, I, and and when I thought about that, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when I heard that they were making Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, wait, really? Yeah. Like, Rocket Raccoon? <laughs> like, what? Um, I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy might be more important than we realize, because it was like, oh, the MCU can't bomb. I think that was what that <clears throat> established. It doesn't matter what they do, like, people will go and watch it. It also helps that Guardians of the Galaxy is a really good film. Really fucking but, good. Um, yeah. But I think that was what it showed, is like, it doesn't matter how far out the concept is, like, people will... Get off the cannon! Go and see it. <laughs> Fuck. Um, Buffy and Angel are so damn good, I love them. You're right, man, they are so damn good. Uh, I look forward Avengers to making more terrible. fans of it as time goes on. Avengers 2 is barely even Joss <clears throat> Whedon's film, alright? I mean, Joss, I like, this is what I mean. That. People are willing to give these concessions to a lot of other directors and writers when they say stuff like, this film was ruined by, you know, XYZ. But, like, Joss Whedon has been on record saying that Age of Ultron was just, like, torn from him, and it's not a project he even considers his own work at this point. It's like, does that count for nothing? No. He also makes I fun of his own not. work in Alien Resurrection. Also, final point to this whole thing, <laughs> has everything you made been good? <laughs> 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 
Oh, Christ. So, everything you make. <laughs> this is what's fun to me about Joss Whedon. He's got a huge, you can call it a huge mixed bag, um, but the highs, holy shit. They are some good highs. Yeah. S so high right now. Huh. So, I just went through my trophies for Crash 4 and realized that there were other parts of the game that I, Snake! I, I, yeah, that I haven't thought about. What? So. Yeah, Metal, there are I other do. people in the call. <laughs> Alright, all I was just saying is I think I do have other games. I have other things to play. Um, like, uh, there are other components of this that I think I need to look at. Okay. Uh, ah. um, I'm just looking at all of these things. Like, 0.4% of people have gotten all the platinum relics. Like, I only have three or four uh, trophies left to get. Well, more than three or four, but still. Ah, uh, but you know what? I think I know enough about that game. And my PS4 hasn't shit in the bed, so. That's good. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. The stud lock attempt from the game there. Unfortunately, I built health games, so get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? Damn, dude. It was like a machine gun. Yeah. And I'm sure they thought it was perfectly fair. <laughs> like, it's perfectly totally balanced fair. as all things should be. Absolutely. I got absolutely annihilated by one of those snake heads just now. That yeah, was... the snakes can fuck with you hardcore in the, uh, in Fangorn Forest, wherever excuses the hell it is. How many Zack Snyder gets, but not Whedon? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, holy yeah. shit. Zack's not even made a good one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. From what I understand, Watchmen is something that doesn't age well. I need to see it again. Um, 300 always... is like fun, but yeah. I'm sure it's not that great. And then of course there's Man of Steel and BVS, which I'm going to be getting a refresh on them soon enough, and my opinions on them will be solidified. And uh, he made Sucker Punch as well, which is really stupid. <laughs> he made... yeah. <laughs> uh, he made Dawn of the Dead, was it? Or was it... which one was that? The 2004 Dawn of the Dead. He might have. You might be right. I think yeah. that was his first uh, feature. So he did that, then 300, then Watchmen, then Sucker Punch, and then he started doing DC stuff. Yeah. Is are my souls supposed to be in this room? I've completely blanked on that. No, oh, no, way, I lost them, are, didn't I? Yeah. No, you lost them because that witch pushed you off the cliff. What a nice lady <laughs> that was. <laughs> but I can. All it takes. Walking is bitch. Little. Push. Man of Steel wasn't that bad. Yeah, I think what we're gonna learn, guys, is that Man of Steel might actually be the best one, because Wonder Woman is so awful that, um, that I think that established hierarchy might change. Man of Steel may well be the okay one. Oh, it might, yeah. It, yeah, might. it might be. It might be. Yeah. Honestly, um, if you if you ask me to bet no, money no. on it, I'd be like, I think Man of Steel's gonna be better than Wonder Woman. I do think so, because Man of Steel is, um... Like, Man of Steel is lacking a lot of ways in like character you know what i mean like it's superman's character is so poorly defined that i don't know if you can extract flaws <laughs> from it like he's just a plank um i, I don't know um oh fuck it's 5 a.m already <laughs> that's it yeah boy i didn't even notice well this is good training for tomorrow just a quick test yeah. Just Plus. a quick test, yeah. I mean, I'm not streaming this at the moment in case wow, my PS4 why? Again, but I'm gonna... Well, it's too late, isn't it? I mean, he's no. about to go to sleep. It's a test stream. It can last half an hour. <laughs> oh, well, like... Te oh, I see. We're, like, <clears throat> test everything sorted. Yeah, yeah. I'm still gonna stop streaming now, though, because I'm... I'm feeling the tired. Ooh, can you send, your, send your, your audience over here? Why not, right? I mean, yeah. This is a go to... Wow, it doesn't... Mean. Sorry oh, guys, do Mola doesn't want you over there. Well, so, uh, Fringy, it might not shock you to know, I don't think that's a good boss. I think that's pretty lame. The whole boss is really lame. And so, yeah. we're not doing well. There's not a single boss I think is fun yet. I think they're all just meh. Um, do you know if there's any way to check, like, if you've, uh, installed all of the DLC for this game, or... How do you I know, know like... Don't, I don't... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just... Isn't it uh, just it unlocks rather than installs? Oh, well, I had to download a 6 gigabyte update thingy, so I'm oh, guessing in that, that case. was... Well, that's yeah, probably it, then. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. You should, yeah, you should you'll be fine. It's fine, I came from Mall in the first place. What about Gascoigne? Uh, Ga yeah. Gascoigne's probably the best one. Okay, fine. I'll give you Gascoigne, fine. You you get to have Gascoigne chat, yeah. okay? I'll I'm not too mean. I'll be back tomorrow, peoples. I'll go off oh, right now. Go watch the the, the, the mumblows. You don't Bye, watch. Mutlo. Well, I'm, Bye, I'm still gonna chill for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to go offline. Yeah.
Oh. Uh, but yeah, yes, but, but it, for the sake of your chat, they'll all say goodbye, love. you know, and, and then it's yeah, like, goodbye, on TV, that like if you want to keep watching this sports event, switch over to this channel. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the sports show. <laughs> welcome back. Yeah, that kind of I just thing. got here. Except now you have to pay a subscription service. Me. Television doesn't know me. <clears throat> Television. Wait, Mel, what was the last boss you killed? Uh, Vicar. Oh, Dude, okay, we're drawing finally. The frame rate. Yes. <laughs> oh, you notice oh. that, Fringy? <laughs> Wait until I fight the pasta monster. I'm just reminded of the fact that it runs really poorly. Yeah. That's all. Why am I going I, this way? I, I, think, uh, I think that was back when the debate on 30 FPS was really uh, awful. That was back when uh, I think Ready at Dawn were like, oh, you know, 30 F, that's more filmic. No, stop, um, stop. <laughs> hey, look, no, you need you need to be reminded, okay? Um. Wait, oh, so you're, you're meant to die in this section, right? Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna hang out though, Mel. Yeah. I'm gonna hang out for a little bit before I leave. It's fine. Excellent. Excellent. All right, then I guess I'll continue with the with the things. Um, as a right-wing, gun-toting libertarian, nothing is hotter than a gun-owning woman. Oh, another person saying that. How about that? Yeah, boy. Libertarian, huh? <laughs> I mean, guns yeah, are for everybody, okay? For Shouldn't be a positive I, Yeah, issue. I, that's what I know, right? Yeah. Guns are even for, like, socialists, you know? Well, I mean, in fact, definitely. <laughs> I mean, the Red Revolution, they had guns, right? It's called it the Red called Revolution. The Red well, they want to have control over who has guns, and that's them. Right, but... But what I'm saying is, when you, you know, when you have to do the revolution against the government, you need the guns to stop the government, right? Yeah, yeah, basically. Gun, guns are useful for things. This is true. They do have a utility. It, uh, well, now, that's just a reason for the Second Amendment. If I, uh, if I, after that if I kill this wolf in this opening section, does that... Oh, no, I'm dead. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the opening challenge for us when we begin the race tomorrow. Who out of the three of us is successful to, to kill that wolf? You can do it, it's tough. Oh, but yeah, it's what, what happens if you kill the wolf, though? You don't oh, get any of it. Well, you get three healths right. or whatever, but, you know, it's for the fun, okay, Fringy? It's for the fun, Fringy! Okay. God. God. Classic Fringy was mm, my mm, not fun. However, that account, that character, has far more hours in Scourge but somewhat recently, I have swapped over to Reaper, so I'm more viable in Tier 4 Fractals. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. Really serve much of a purpose in high-level Fractals. Great, insanely good for open world, but um, just not, not really good for... Uh, not really good for Again, tier four. completely yeah. agree. But um, Power oh. Reaper definitely has a place. Power Reaper? <laughs> Puns are great in moderation. Oh. oh I guess it someone just liked that retweet that I did yesterday, so there, there's the thing. I timeline? What is this? this Select is the tweet, link. not just the timeline, you idiot. I've never seen that link before. That's, that's crazy talk. You fool! You fool. There you go. You Fulsa, Fulsa. Uh -oh. enough! That's Can coming out I soon. Know. I'm I'm at the copyright section of sorting out Wonder Woman. And... Then I will destroy you! <laughs> What's wrong with that line, Fringy? What? It's a character no, expressing how it. he feels. It's a character expressing how he feels. What's wrong with that? Was how it's an amazing I, character I think moment. my favorite part was how people were saying, oh, yeah, no, at the third act, that's when it gets bad. It's like, oh, really? No. <laughs> gets bad in the third uh, act. Things so. happened in the third act for starters. Yes. But why is it bad dialogue if it's true and to the character? Uh, is that. Is, do people actually say that or. People have yeah, said tell that me about... why he wouldn't say. People have said that about enough. other things, Fringy. I don't know what are you. What are, I'm just answer the question, Fringy. Why is it bad dialogue if it's true to what he's saying? Um, what, he, what he means, what, what he wants. I will destroy you. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Is it? I mean, is this? I don't know if I'm like prepared to have this conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. It is good dialogue because it represents closely the feelings of Ares and his goals. 
I, oh, I, I didn't realize that that's how uh, good dialogue works. If it closely represents your goals, then it's good, yep. because people always say exactly what they mean. Well, uh, another reason why it's good dialogue is because Ares has had enough of Diana, and he wants her to know... And that he in wants her to know that he will destroy her. Yeah, like, I, I, it's like you already watched my extensive video essay about good dialogue, because, yeah, that was right out of my script. He, he let her know exactly what he, what he intended, which was to destroy her. I, you probably get it now, like, that's good dialogue, right? <laughs> just clarifying, just making sure, because, you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, it's really overt. Oh, it's really cartoonish. Who speaks that way? Why would he say... It's like, none of that really matters. Ares feels that he will destroy Diana, and so he's expressing that, and that's fine. And so he's expressing his intent to destroy her, that's yeah. all. To be honest, um, I don't know that you can really improve the line. I feel like that's the interesting thing about the conversation about dialogue, is it's like, how exactly, you know, what, what is it that makes dialogue good or bad is kind of a, you know, it is a conversation to be had. Um, of that course is. people always say what they mean. Haven't you watched anime, Free? Oh, shots fired. Oh, oh shit. I've seen Avatar episode. Wait, what? Oh, oh what? Oh. Uh, see, I was just, I was just making fun of, like, stuff, other stuff, not... Wow, you, you guys took it to a place. That's what you did. Um, it's funny, because I do really like Death Note, but Death Note kind of has this- Well, I mean, all, a lot of anime has this problem. Like, in Death Note, there'll be parts where, like, Light and L, they just have their internal monologue projected at you. Like, you know, you know how, like, when people talk to themselves in, like, a dream or in their head? They just have that happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the time, it's just- and, and it's funny, right? Because a lot of people be like, well, the reason why Light needs to explain his plan is because it's pretty big brain. And it's like, yeah, a lot of his stuff is pretty... Well, well, in, in defense of that show, like, a lot of the plans are pretty big brain, but there are better ways of communicating that than just having a... Having, this like, comes a back to the whole... Can. A lot of things are given to anime that aren't given to other things. If in the middle of yeah. some of the climactic moments of Buffy, it zooms into the foreheads of characters, and then they and, think and out Buffy's loud... Like, I feel confused. <laughs> I I don't think I could watch the show. I'd be like, oh, this is oh Yeah. And and to me it's it's less so like that's not what the character would think. It's more so, wow, you writers are fucking lazy. Well, I think that's the problem is it's yeah, it's the it's that meta, right? Where it's like, I know what you're doing, show. I see you, dear. What you doing? Somebody said I was wrong about what? About what? Be more specific. <laughs> like about about anime in general? Probably. Like, yeah, probably I'm gonna say things that are wrong about anime in general. Except um, the loss for it's, it's slightly better in an intellectual fight like in Death Note. Well, like I said, I like Death Note and I don't like a lot of anime, so there's clearly something that show's doing that a lot of anime... I mean, a lot of people talk about it, right? That I'm gonna have a potato chip and eat it. It's like, is this a joke? This is, probably is a joke about, um... Like anime, right? How everything's very dramatic. Um, I feel like Friggy is always wrong, and then the follow-up is I was wrong about Halo Four. You got to pick a better example than that, all right? <laughs> Why? Halo Four story is bad. Rex, fight him. Um, I can't remember enough about Halo Four to oh, say so. Way. So the big problem with Halo Four is that it's dramatically inconsistent with Halo One, Two, and Three. Like especially in terms of characterization, and absolutely in terms of world building. Like, there is no getting around the fact that the game needs to reconcile why Chief never really spoke, and then in Halo 4 he talks a lot, um, and seems to behave like a totally different person. Um, the, the game kind of hopes that you just don't think about it, um, but it is a problem. And in terms of, like, the actual plot, the big problem that this game has is that it massively retcons, like, the, uh, the history of, um of the universe like chief isn't just an exceptional spartan he was designed by the forerunners to like beat oh. the bad guys what? and he, had, he he got like infused with forerunner dna or something and that makes what? him super I, powerful I, I don't even remember all this shit. so do you do you remember like a scene where he's i think it's called the librarian I, I think that's the name of the uh the the character that he speaks to um the librarian is this like old forerunner lady and, um, I, I remember the lady. I yeah, can't, for the love of me, fucking remember what that conversation and was about. Though. From what I can remember about it, the whole thing was oh, so like, 
so in in the old games there was a heavy implication that the forerunners and humans were one and the same like humans are forerunners. oh yeah yeah i thought that was like um, the canon thing of the other well of the remember, films with set stuff yeah with the reclaimer though, and all that it's not though because the forerunners <laughs> are a different race the didact is a forerunner and he's a different he's he's clearly not a human being so it's like and and yeah there was a forerunner human war and the humans were turned into the protheans or whatever they were called the pro Prometheans? Well, the Prometheans, yeah. They're, no, not the, the most Prometheans, unfun to fight faction ever devised. Oh, no. Yeah, for, for you, yeah. You're, you're so getting lots of um, you're getting lots of no. That's wrong in chat. Is that wrong? Okay. Um. All right. Um. But I'm uh, just saying this must be this must explain your bad. Take. Wait. Well, you gotta you gotta tell me which part is wrong so that I can actually address it rather oh, than Halo just Four is total wrong. garbage. There you go. You got some people. Someone's on your team. Uh, yeah, so here's the problem where it gets confused. There are multiple different races. There are the precursors, there are the forerunners, and then there are humans, when it used to be that there were forerunners and, uh, precursors. Like, that was what it was. I mean, goddamn, like, I'm pretty sure Guilty Spark expressly said that Chief was a forerunner. Yeah, that's what I thought was the whole establishment where you he are was forerunner, called the Reclaimer. But this ring is mine. Well, it's he the whole idea that why is, it that why is it that humans can activate the rings? It's because they're forerunners, and it was designed for forerunners. Um, yeah, yeah see, now people right, are yeah. saying I'm correct, because, like, <gasps> I absolute, I'm definitely correct on this one. And so, like, it is a retconny history where, like, no, the forerunners are different. Um, let me, oh, let me, I have a Halo nerd for a friend. Let me ask, uh, just yeah, ask, for ask them. clarification. Streaming I wish Wolf was here for this. Halo Wolf agrees 4. with me, just a heads up. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised when Halo 4 came up. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Wolf said Halo 4 is such a disaster also? that it doesn't deserve to exist or something. Oh, um, <laughs> he doesn't like Halo 4 at all. Um, Neither does my friend I'm contacting right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, and Halo I don't even remember. Like, I remember it. And I'm like, yeah, the multiplayer was fine, I guess. I, I, I forget so much about the single player because it was so, like, eh. So let me tell you, what I think a big problem with Halo 4 is, is that it falls into a lot of traps that the Halo games f didn't fall into when it comes to tropes and fantasy and science fiction. Like, there's a lot of things that Halo does that are really cool. Um, the big one being that, um, the big one being that, like, Master Chief is not, he isn't like a prophecy. He isn't some, he's just a guy. He's a really, he's really, he's really good at his job. Well, I think, I think the main thing that the games often say is, uh, I, I think it was in Halo 3, right? It's like, do you know why I picked you? Luck. It's like, oh, he's lucky. That's it. He's lucky. That's, that's it. Like, and of course, you know, when you say, what does lucky mean? It's like, I don't know. He just, he just gets lucky on a lot of things. Like, and someone would be like, is that a plot hole? It's like, well, not really. Is that really, like a meta commentary on the fact he's a it's... video game character? Is it... I don't fucking know. I think you could interpret it much more as a meta commentary, but I think it's just the idea of like, there is nothing particularly exceptional about Chief written into the universe. But then Halo 4 is like, no, you were, we designed you. Like, all you were the chosen one. Uh... Yeah. Um, that, Can't that's... I just be a man who's good at his job? I know, I know. Like, <laughs> I much prefer that. Just, hey, I'm good at my job, not like I'm some crazy, uh... So, yeah, and again, this is all putting to one side. Was rampancy a thing with AI the whole seven years? Was that in the old games? I don't remember that. That seems like a massive issue. I can't remember it happening. But, uh, like, the... building something that only lasts for seven years? Like, come on! Unless that's just a natural byproduct of their incredible complexity, but oh, I don't remember well that, them ever bringing the game, that up uh, before. That's what the game says in Halo 4, like, they think themselves to death. That's what rampancy is. Um, um, but, the, but, 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 um... it's worth remembering, it's worth remembering that the only reason why that becomes important is because in Halo 5, Cortana cures rampancy and the AIs turn against humans. So, like, I'm willing to bet okay. that that was part of what they wanted to do for Halo 5 and 6. Why would AIs um, turn against humans? So the idea in Halo 5 is that Cortana cures rampancy by connecting to some forerunner network called the Domain. So it cures her, and she's now in charge of the uh, the Prometheans. And the logic is- Wait, she's is, in charge of the Prometheans? Yeah, she, she basically takes over the forerunner network and is like controlling the Prometheans. And for some reason oh. they fight, but then there's some other guy- I'm glad their the tech is compatible. The, uh, what was the guy called? It, he was called the, um, the... Didact? The, no, 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 no. The Warden Eternal. The boss you have to fight seven times. Um, what? And so he he's, like, kind of against Cortana. So he fights you and sends enemies after you. But 
but the logic is basically it is the mass effect 3 ending all over again um if humans and create and like organics are left to their own devices they will kill themselves so us ai have to take over that is it's that hate... again i i don't like it when games assert <laughs> that as fact when i just don't believe it well I think I think a much more interesting thing, and this is what I've been thinking about a lot lately, is there's probably one of two outcomes to creating AI. It effectively becomes God and takes over everything and we're subservient to it, or it kills us. I think that those are the one of two endings. Um it just kind of makes sense that that would be the natural endpoint. But sure, but the problem is I feel like a lot of the stories that because Mass Effect doesn't tackle this. Um, if we leave you to your own devices, you will wipe yourselves out. So we will wipe you out. This is like th that's insane. It doesn't well, even make just, sense. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I never buy. First of all, I don't think that's a, the the only two outcomes. But I also, Ma I, yeah, I definitely not, don't but... believe the whole. Oh yeah, the more civilized you get, and the 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 more the chances are that you're just gonna flat out destroy yourself. I think the there might civilized. be a window for that being possible. But the idea that a race is going to destroy itself, just um, like oh, as an inevitability, I suppose, uh, is, I just I suppose think that's absurd. A clarification for what I say with the AI rules: I think the natural endpoint would be that if an, if a civilization was sufficiently intelligent enough to create AI, how long does it take before they just merge with AI and become like an artificial? You know what I mean? Like the whole idea of you upload yourself to the cloud, like that seems like a the most likely. It seems more likely to me. Yeah. I guess that's what I mean when I say it rules over. Not like it's it's like God, but that you just sort of become part of it. Like, um, I feel like that, kind of like the Deus Ex ending, uh, or the Invisible War ending, where there's like an AI that's linked to all humans, and it makes all of the government decisions based on like the direct feedback from the population, stuff like that. Um, I could see that being a possibility. Um, I think it's interesting to think about, and I think it's more interesting than it just kills you. Um, or it becomes a dictator. Well then. You may be wrong about anime and how- It's worth noting, guys, like, anything I say about anime, you shouldn't take too seriously. I haven't watched enough anime to have a real take on the entire genre. But they like you, Fringy, so they want you to be right. Ah, uh, alright. <laughs> that's that's more subtextually that's kind of it applies to all of us that's that's why people get annoyed they want us to have the correct takes from their point of view as well they want to have guys, their get it. they want to have their opinions validated by us because they look up to us so much at the same time <laughs> oh i love one if, punch man by the way yeah if um if like any of you when i met you were ardent buffy is an awful tv show that ruined things i would be like really though <laughs> really though <laughs> yeah well, yeah, because that's a much more interesting take, because it's like, wait, hold on. So you've watched it, and you hate it. It's like... So I get yeah, their so interest. Well. They're like, oh, you know, I want you to know more. I want to know more. So, uh, well, so we agree, then. It, it is official. Halo 4 is bad. All right. We do all right cool. um, well, I mean, and this is all ignoring that gameplay-wise, Halo 4 is kind of a disaster. Oh, um, no. I don't think you're going to find much disagreement on that. Rags? Anything? About Halo 4? Mechanics. From a gameplay perspective, from I most of what I remember is from multiplayer, and I remember it being. I don't know. I wasn't super critical of it. It was fine. I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as the other ones, but I I in, I remember enjoying it, but I didn't put nearly the amount of hours into it as I did the other Halos. It didn't grab I mean, me like the other ones did. Uh, I mean Halo. That's a common story, Rags, and I think that's kind of the problem. Like Halo Four lost its players very quickly. Um, there was, I don't know, it it wasn't the feel, quote unquote, the feel of it. It wasn't, it wasn't that, it was something else. It was, I guess, I think it was the, because Halo 4, as a, as the sum of its parts was just not all that great. I don't think I could point to anything individually. It wasn't like the weapon sounds and the feedback and the level design and the balance. It, it wasn't that. It was. Um, I mean, I would, I would meshed. say that there are issues with the balancing from. Oh, there definitely player. was. Yeah, it was DMR fucking all the way. But well, that, then I think again, that's the problem with having custom classes in a Halo game where the sandbox is designed around. I know we've had this conversation before. Well, it's not the I fact that, that the custom classes aren't the problem. It's that there's one obvious option. It's that yeah, one option is just better than the rest objectively. 
I guess that's kind of the problem I'm getting at, though, is that Halo is not like Call of Duty in the sense that it's like, okay, there is a difference between a SCAR and, like, an M4A1, but functionally they're pretty similar. Because Reach, had, automatic Reach had the ability to select classes. Yes, and that's but not... it had predetermined classes. Like, you couldn't you couldn't mix and match different weapons to your... Well, it's fine pleasure. to mix and match as long as they're all balanced and each weapon has a purpose. But, but, here's the, the problem question. Is like, how, how do you balance... How do you balance the plasma pistol when it's a weapon that is expressly designed to take down people's shields and and its functionality needs to remain that way in campaign at least you know if you want to you know keep that weapon the same as it was before how do you get around that problem well we already know that the the amount of damage that enemies take in campaign differs from the amount of damage they take in multiplayer um yes that's true but what about so there, just the core there you go. That's they it. have shields and they don't have shields stuff like that well you just you damage modifiers are different um but how do you do a damage modifier for taking the shield down like once the shield is down intense halo battle so what so should should a plasma rifle in multiplayer only take down half the shield because once that depends. happens it changes but I would consider that to be a change to its functionality, because if you can rely on it taking down shields in campaign, but in multiplayer it doesn't take down shields all the way, it's like, oh, this is well, a different you, weapon They can now. take down shields fully in multiplayer. Yeah, that, but that's what it I'm saying. It doesn't have that's to be a problem. weapon you can necessarily, necessarily select, or you work off of a pool of, this weapon is worth so many points. Right. Um... Which is what I mean. You I think. Call like what do you mean? It's a circle jerk, Soapy. This is two people battling right now. Or a or you have like when you make a class in Mordhau, you have sixteen points or whatever that you can spend and divvy up between different sorts of things based on their effectiveness and the the synergy they have with other things. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could do that, but is that not an acknowledgement of the fact that there are weapons that are just functionally better than others? And even if you have it like that, aren't people just it, going to it, congregate around those weapons? It depends. Weapons? That, that's mostly set up so that you can't synergize the loadout too good. Mm -hmm. um, because one thing, like a plasma pistol is really good in some scenarios and useless in others. Um, so, that, I mean, that's part of the balancing process. This weapon is... And a lot of this ties into map design as well. If map design is one way, then maybe a shotgun is just the best gun in 80% of the maps. And if you wreck... All right, in the main play, I won't summon anyone. I'm curious what Defector Antal can provide for me, okay? How much weight this has in the point pool. Um, it, that, I mean, that's the, here's, that's the difficulty of doing it. That's why we praise good weapon balance in games yeah. so much. Um, I think that I, I, I like hmm. the idea, and and obviously you'd cut so you, you'd cut the power weapons off. Like you couldn't spawn with a rocket launcher or a sniper rifle, right? And you'd probably consider a shotgun a power weapon as well. I think um, I think the shotgun is. I think any weapon in the old games was something that would be spawned on the map that you would rush towards as a power weapon. Shotgun, sniper rifle. Uh, rocket, maybe. Good. Yeah. Um, you want cannons? Because because um, like plasma rifles and stuff would spawn on old maps as well. Um, right. It, that went really well, and the summon was worth it. Yeah, we could, yeah, like, yeah, in, in, in depending on which game it is, like, the shotgun is a power weapon, but like, like the sniper rifle, the rocket is always, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, um, but that's, that's part of what makes a difficult, that, that's part of the difficulty in making a balanced multiplayer game. But, if your alternative... Clearly that was Antel's fault, not mine. <laughs> ...starts with the same weapons, and then you spawn weapons in the middle of the map, that are that people you know people can rush to to get like that that was part of the game before was there are power weapons you go find them yes. once you get the power weapons you I, I mean I prefer the way it was before I I I think I prefer the other way and as someone who really likes the Halo games multiplayer I have seen too often that that fucking hoe grabbing me after a ro fuck you. Good weapons help you secure good weapons, and that can often lead to just kind of stomps a lot of the times um, in how they're used. And I, But I, a lot of that has to do with how many power weapons there are per map, which I feel mm -hmm. is often too many. Um, I've, I've simply played too many games of Halo where one team has all the power weapons and you're just fucked. You're just, you're basically, you're just done. Um, um, when that happens, sure, I, I guess that. Fuck you, Metal Commander.
I don't think I'd call that a positive. Um, or if you've, like, there's no, it, it is extremely difficult to come back from a scenario where one team has the sword and the sniper rifle and the rocket. And, and the more power weapons you have, the easier it is for you to secure the power weapons. Um, so uh, someone said, I, I need an example of a map that has too many power weapons. There's a bunch. The one I generally go to is, let me pull it up. I think it's Reflection. From which game, though? Reach. Uh, let me double check. Well, yeah, Reflection. I, I hate about, Reflection. I think so I, I think Reflection is one of the worst maps in all of Halo. And one of the reasons is one of the reasons is because there's a rocket launcher, an energy sword, a shotgun, so the and a sniper rifle. There are four power weapons in a game that is played primarily in a 4v4. And the way that the map is designed, there is there is a clear correct place to control when you have these power weapons that plays really, really well into having the power weapons. The upper area has these two hallways on the left and right. Um, it has a good view of the main rotunda in front of you, and you have the elevator that comes out the back, which is impossible to sneak up because you activate the motion sensor if you're on the elevator. And being able to control the area with these items is just way too... I've seen more complete slaughters on reflection than I've seen anywhere else. Um, I, and, I, and I think if there was only... It, it, like, if there was only a rocket and, and a sniper... This is fucking garbage. This whole fight is so garbage. Because the power weapon dominance on Reflection is so insane. Um, uh, I guess um, what I'm trying to... I, I, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm sorry, my brain... Does anyone even know what just happened in this fight? No, the answer is no. Hold that thought. Someone said, someone says, that seems like a map design problem. You are correct 100%. Map design is integral to a good multiplayer Balanced game because game. map Absolutely. design, map design is so fucking important. And I don't think people are like, yeah, it's not a very good map. It's like, no, but map design is huge because map design is based off of how fast players move, what the time to kill is. And it factors heavily, especially into Halo, into the potency of the power weapons, which is huge in Halo. For instance, a sword is 10 kills. There's 10 kills worth of energy in that sword, which is insanely high. And on reflection, it is really quite easy to get 10 kills worth out of that sword because of the way the map is designed. You are... You should never lock on to the big beast boss. It's just like, oh, guys, when you're at the point saying that, oh, just don't lock on. Is not going to be nearly as potent as a sniper rifle on a different map. And so putting map design, map design and power weapons in Halo need to synergize really well. And almost it, in, basically all the time, I'm like, the less power weapons, probably the better. Um, I put up with them. I don't think they're great, but I put up with them. Uh, um, this but when, is a bit of but when half the people in the game, when, when half the people in one game have power weapons, and when power weapons help you get power weapons, it sort of snowballs. And I've seen it way too many times on reflection to not just like kind of have it locked into my brain. I feel like Halo Two and Three had a much stronger balance in that regard, though. I guess I agree. that's the thing. Um, yeah, and so like I when agree. I look at Halo 2 and 3, it's like, man, I feel like just do that. And and it's funny because like Halo 5, I really like the multiplayer in Halo 5. I don't like good. Halo 2 and 3, but... If the lock-on doesn't work for bosses in this game, you don't just go, well, that's just how it works. It's, you have to account for it. They had to design it around it. You can't just go, oh, well, the mechanic doesn't work. Don't use it. It's like, come on. I, I never had a problem with the new feel of Halo. I have no issue oh, well, with I mean, it whatsoever. I don't, I don't really like Halo 4, but Halo 5, like, I do like, uh, I do like that multiplayer. Yeah, it looks, when I watch people play it, it looks like a game that I could really enjoy playing. Um... Yeah. And even Halo, the old style of Halo, it works really well, but it is kind of archaic. Well, like Halo The way one, that you or, jump uh... and move around and shoot at things, it is... You're not supposed to lock onto everything. Don't make it lock onable. Just don't make it lock onable, if that's your argument. Come on. But you can also see why people would feel like it's 
it feels old, quote unquote feels old, it works really well um, in terms of especially like it just mechanical simplicity is often an excellent way to achieve balance. Uh, I think that's kind of the uh, the thing that helps, though. It's because because as much as I do like Halo Five, there's a lot of extra things that like factor into it. You know, like boosting, sprinting, clamber, uh, yeah. dashing um, with the jetpack, sliding, ground pound. It's like there there are all of these new things that are built on it. It's like everybody can do these things. So you when you fight a person, too. well, I guess what I I'm getting at is it's the idea that from the balance, it's like. When you look at an enemy, you know exactly what he can do because he has the same abilities as you, as opposed to in Reach or Halo 4, where it's like he could have any number of different armor abilities. Yes. Um, um, so th there is that, that but yeah, it, it all guess. complicates the game. It still all complicates the game because it's all these other things you need to think about. Whereas um, in Halo 3, the guy you're looking at, he is the speed he's moving right now, that's the speed he's going to be moving all the time. Um, he can't do anything different to that. Um, yeah, and there is something that... to be said about when you see an enemy, you have an understanding of what mechanics they can use, yeah. and you should how you can prepare for that slash play against it. Yeah, well, exactly. that's one of the reasons I really love Mordhau, is because when you see an enemy, you can see what kind of armor they have, and you can see what weapon. That's a big dumb. Do you design everything in a game to be exactly how you should play it, or do you design it for people to learn? Lock on is lock on to quote the great mr incredible from incredibles so there it's not like you don't get surprised that much for a game about timing and re you know, reaction you don't get surprised in a mechanical sense like he doesn't all of a sudden do something that you didn't think was impossible and couldn't have possibly planned for it yeah i think that's um i think that's an important part of it um I, I like how there are people in chat who are like, oh, Maul is losing his sanity from this conversation. It's like, yeah, there's no such thing as tangents in EFAP. Oh, there's a whole other That's conversation different. going on. I'm arguing with chat right now. Oh, are you? That, that okay. might be what they're referencing. Basically, Dark Beast Pal is the boss I just fought. It's another shit boss from Bloodborne where it, <laughs> the entire creature fills up the entire screen, the FPS tanks, and you just hack away and hope you win, and you do. And then someone was like, well, you're not supposed to lock on to the enemy. You ever heard that before? What? You you're ever, not you're, supposed to. Why like, is that a feature in the game if you're you, not supposed to do that? When you lock onto Big Beast, it fucks your camera. But lock on allows you to target all of your attacks onto the beast. So like, they just like oh, don't lock okay. onto enemies that lock on doesn't work on it. It's like, how about you make it work? How about that? How about it works? That's probably a good way to go. Yeah. What a stupid argument. <laughs> So what I mean, Bloodborne gets a pass because it's so awesome. It's like, guys, if it's sharing <laughs> issues with DS2, you better fucking believe we're gonna talk about it. Yeah. You do that. I'm, Rags I'm not, is forgetting I'm, that Mordhau has terrible max <laughs> cap population on almost every run. server, completely destroying frames and ping. That has nothing to do with what I was talking about at all. And whether I remember <laughs> yeah. that or forgot it, it wouldn't change anything about what I said. So, yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, I'll go, I'll go to, okay. Bye, Bell. Oh, See you're tomorrow. leaving finally. Yeah, yeah. Right. I've been, I've been, been trying for the last 20 minutes, but there was no gap to talk. Metal, I, I'm going to give you a big <laughs> you cheat. You're able you to actually. Like proper German. Well, well, it doesn't even have to be assertive. When, when, you can just when... leave the simp message in chat and then leave. Yeah, but that's rude. I won't do that. <laughs> it is rude. I agree. That's not rude. The thing is, we established earlier right. that, that my voice is not getting no, no, prioritized not today. True. When other people talk, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye yeah, boy. I'll see you later. You better get ready Bye. for the race, Mel. I'm gonna smash you. No. Yeah. Oh um, my god. Bye. Good oh boy. So I'm gonna ask for I'll my Yakuza opinions. I have none. I've never played Yakuza. Um, I'll be back in like five minutes and then I'm gonna start up like the test stream to see that it's all good. Sweet. Sure. Um, yeah, give me a couple minutes. Yeah. And then, Rags, we come back to. Should I read out the next super chat? <laughs> Sure, I've, yeah. You know, uh, Halo fans out there it. will be happy. That's what I reckon. As well as Bloodborne fans, maybe. I kinda, I've been shooting on Bloodborne a little bit today. Only out of love, guys. I love Bloodborne. It is one of my favorite games. It's just, it has flaws, okay? It has flaws. Um, Fringy's hot, oh wait, I'll read that when he's back. Bojack is like big mouth, tries to be funny but bad. Okay, we probably wanna try and separate uh, Big Mouth from Bojack. 
All right, well, we'll put them in. You know, we'll put them in different categories. From what I understand, Big Mouth is an abomination. You, you... I what I've seen of Big Mouth, make I mm, I would ne I would not watch that ever. Yeah, it's definitely a uh, BoJack is failing to be something pretty great. Big Mouth, like that. That's just a disaster. Like I said, so oof. Kind of like the difference between the prequels and the sequels, I guess. If you can pitch big mouth and get it approved you can get anything pitched and approved we clearly earth failed you know we, we just we went too far or not far enough one of those things happened I'm sure of it uh what are each of your favorite either simpson episode or simpsons joke or moment seasons one through nine ish all right you know what i'll save that one there's two simpsons questions we'll save those for when fringy's back because rags didn't uh I don't think you watched I don't know like too much did. about Simpsons, yeah. but I do have a funny moment from Simpsons that I have seen that makes me laugh a big much. In that case, they'll be even better to save for Fringy because he will oh, he boy. will he will chortle a plenty. He loves his Simpsons. If you won't watch Astartes, where does South Park sit if you had to rate it compared to say Simpsons Futurama Family? Oh, you know what? I'll save that for when Fringy's back too. He'll want in on these conversations, <laughs> trust me. Uh, Shaft just made a BoJack vid, might be worth an EFAP. There is no fucking way we're EFAPing anything to do with BoJack, because that would require me rewatching the fucking show, and I'm not doing that. The, see, the provisor to get Rags to see videos that cover Rick and Morty is to make him watch Rick and Morty, which means I have to rewatch Rick and Morty, which is actually a pleasant thing for me to do. So I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. I'm, I've, I'm, I would absolutely watch Rick and Morty. I've Meanwhile, heard enough good things, and the things I have seen have been good. If someone was like, oh, you can cover a video about how bad you think a thing is that you don't care about or like, and all you have to do is make Rags watch fucking six seasons of it, it's like, yeah, mm, nah, yeah, nah. Just watch six seasons of it. It's that easy. And I know a lot of people out there will be like, you don't have to rewatch the show. It's like, yeah, I do. I, I fucking barely remember a lot of the references for BoJack at this point. It was already faint when I was criticizing it um, on the, the EFAB where it came up. I just remember the broad strokes, and I remember specific criticisms, but even that, oh, it's all going... That's how content works for, well, humans, right? It has to be, like, super meaningful in a bad or good way, and it'll stick in there. But if it's something super just, ugh, then um, you'll, you may even forget you even watched it. Another another question in chat, because in the same vein, if you want to throw it up, is where would King of the Hill sit in comparison to The Simpsons? I watched King of the Hill like you watched Simpsons, so. All right. I, I haven't watched much of either, but I guess just so it's out there, I have enjoyed King of the Hill quite a bit. It is, it is more subtle humor. I guess it's more subtle and slow burn. Dry. I guess, in a good way. It's not like you. Kn it's not like obvious joke occurs and everyone laughs. Like laugh. Tr a laugh track could not work with King of the Hill. I don't feel. Uh huh. It's just more. It's trying to be more. It's trying to play itself a bit more straight. I guess. At least that's my recollection of it. Maybe that was from just the episodes I saw. But I, what I've seen is uh, what I've seen. I'm fine. God, cancer, cancer. So hey, Rex. Burn, good one, Rags. I didn't even realize that that was a pun for the propane when I said it. <laughs> but good catch. Was it you that said like dogs it. are never good in games, or was it Fringy? As in, like mechanically. It's probably Fringy. Um, enemy because... dogs specifically. Oh, enemy dogs. Uh, I'm trying to think now if that's something that I would say. And I, I think, think you might have said that when we were talking about The Last of Us Two. Yeah, because I think his references would include Dark Souls as a series. Dogs in Dark Souls as a Souls series are just annoying. They're fast. They have low health, but they can stun lock you if there's enough of them. They're only annoying. And also, when Fringy comes back, I got a message uh, back from my uh, friend. Damn, we, we just so much Fringy content for us to mine. I know, out of that right? Pool. He should show up more often. <laughs> if you already, yeah, we would go for what four and a half hours. Holy shit! You guys had fun. This has been fun. This is gonna be literally the one to one, the exact same thing will be tomorrow. And of course, you can uh, be there for that if you want, right? Uh, say what now, sorry? Same time tomorrow. This was supposed to be a thing today, and it's not a thing because Fring wasn't here in time, but he will be tomorrow, so it'll be this exact same thing tomorrow. Um, maybe. It depends. I might be doing something tomorrow night, but I do not have confirmation on it yet. It should be your tomorrow afternoon, if that matters. Um... Like, I don't know for certain. It'll be... 
two hours past normal EFAP time, so you're 3 p.m., I think. All right, then I could probably be around for a couple hours, probably. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a couple, yeah, maybe a couple hours at most. We're gonna, but, gonna yeah, race be this for that game. Time while and, I'm around, yeah. and then we'll continue it on the Friday, I think, that comes after, because there's no fucking way we're doing this in one session. And I'm gonna have to chat, by the way. You're gonna have to guide me to the next part of Bloodborne, because I've kind of forgotten where to go next. You know how these games go with that set. And we've got a bunch of super chats to get in today. I think, worst case scenario, I will continue answering them, and any that are addressed to Rags, or I think Rags would have an interesting answer to, I will save. So that, uh... We'll make sure to catch him. Anyway... Uh, one of the best blend of comedy and drama is Jintama. Is that an anime? If it is, I don't care. Get no, up on the it's fine. Carry on. <laughs> Oh, Shadows of Yanam. Yeah, that, that, I need to get to the forest, but I have no idea where that is. That's completely okay. forgotten. Jintana is an anime. I knew it! We're, we're, we're right, like, 90% of the time. Whenever it's something we don't recognize, it's an anime. <laughs> we're, man, we're good at what we do. Yep, that's clear evidence of our prowess. Go on, start your thing up. These guys come with an automatic, like, major weakness. That's good for me. Oh no, you don't. Uh, Mola Rags, what exactly do you love about RE4? And they move on in this comment to have some pretty harsh criticism, so we'll mo we'll start first with our praises and then we'll move on to their criticisms. You wanna go first, or? About Dark Souls? RE4. Our praises? You know what? Yeah. You go first. Should we do one? We'll just keep let's past do one the one hot each. potato. Yeah, let's, do, let's do a strength each so and I a guess weakness each. What comes to my mind first, dominantly about RE4, that's a strength. We'll, okay, weaknesses strength. are going to be from the super chat. We'll only do strength is. Strength is, that's a word, uh, is the balancing. Phenomenal balancing while scaling the game as you progress. Like enemies get more difficult and perhaps scaling health as well, but like according to your acquisition of weaponry and uh, let's say your arsenal to, be, to make it more broad. Um, and then the, the, and this is, I've recommended this before, Mark Brown's video on RE4 that's not terrible, the very hidden elastic banding um, that they have in the game to account for players who are doing worse and account for players doing better. Um, just, just how much capacity you have to destroy versus what kind of enemies you're facing throughout the game seems to be really well done. And I don't know what they did with that game more than any other Re Resident Evil, but I felt it. Um, so that would be one, without getting into more specific examples. Um, I will half agree, half disagree in a weird way on that. Um, but uh, mainly that while the game, in the most important way, which is the game against the player, the balancing is really good in the sense that the weapons are balanced amongst themselves. I'd say the game is kind of middling to maybe poor, um, but which is actually something I think Resident Evil 5 improved upon. One Wait, of what are you referencing when you say that? Sorry. Uh, the weapons compared to each other. Like, um, uh, for instance, there there's no real reason to pick. There is no reason to pick to use a lot of the weapons in Resident Evil 4. There are clearly superior choices that yeah Whereas i guess in, that hadn't actually come into my mind when i was thinking about it i was mainly yeah, just like power capacity are, versus enemy capacity but you are com you are correct in the sense of your arsenal that you're using being balanced well against the enemy the your ability to hurt them and their ability to hurt you is well balanced uh it does require learning and execution because my strength was going to be its consistency its mechanical consistency where when you do something you pretty much know exactly what Yep. will happen or what could reasonably happen um but i was saying yeah the uh, one strength of resident evil 5 is each weapon kind of has its thing that it does really well which is why the scorpion like when we played i went i kept the main handgun and the scorpion because their big strength was capacity which when paired with the fact you could only have nine inventory slots is a lot more important than it was at resident evil 4 which was basically useless so like with Resident Evil 4, the it, well, I might make a video about this eventually because it's interesting to talk about. 
Resident Evil 4, the most... How do I get to the Shadows of Yanum? How do I get to the forest? I've completely forgotten. Expensive. Pretty much everything else, you can create... There are so many windows to reload and such that both reload speed and capacity really don't matter at all um, on really any weapon meaningfully. The exception being the TMP, but that's for different reasons. I will follow your guide, Lucifer. The... Um... I would say... Uh... In Resident Evil 5, it actually is far more worth it to upgrade capacity at all because it plays into your lack of inventory space in a, another way, which means that the worst inventory system in Resident Evil 5 kind of as a side effect has helped to balance weapons and give you something to care about in weapons in a way that you never had to worry about in Resident Evil 4. It's a, another, it's, like I said, it's a video idea I've been thinking about. Um, talking about Resident Evil 4. Yeah, four and five. Yeah, but okay. uh, but then that'd be it, but, interesting. Yeah, because my because everyone's like, oh, the Resident Evil Five inventory sucks. And like, yeah, it kind of does, but it creates interesting positive byproducts of yeah. its limitations. Yeah, like it's not worthless. It's yeah, just... it's not worthless. It 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 is like like the capacity thing I was talking about. When you can fit a lot more wet bullets into your gun, that frees up inventory space for other things. Which is a lot. This is really, really important when you can only carry nine things, and one or two or three of those will be your guns. So it really, it's like six-ish. Um, it, it's interesting. It's interesting to look about. But um, but yeah, I'd say my my strength to be your strength would I got one wounded, would be the um, the really good uh, the consistency. Uh, I you guess. can learn that game to a science. Yeah, and to the these, point where you can kind of exploit it in a good way. These positives will start possibly like just overlapping to certain degrees, but like I guess next up for me would probably be resource management is incredibly satisfying, which ties into the whole consistency thing. Um, just knowing what everything is and how much it's worth, it, uh, and and how it you you think of a thing that you have as X and it will prove to be X when it's needed. Um, what do you mean by that? Like a weapon will do what it, uh, an item will do? Yeah, like it really to. feels like something will fail you when you've understood exactly what it's going to do. Oh, okay, I got you. I know it sounds a little bit wishy-washy. I am a little... Dude, these bosses are too big for like this camera. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> hey, Fringy, all you need to do is not use lock-on. I'm, I'm trying to fight the, the cleric beast, which is meant to be the first boss in the game, right? And I can barely like... I can barely see its attacks coming. I mean, I beat it. I did beat it, but wasn't that fun. And then the frame rate tanks to 10 FPS when it blows up. <laughs> um, I'm just testing to see how the audio... Because when I did that crash full playthrough, I remember like the audio oh, was way too... Oh, you used your new mic all of a sudden? At what? Your microphone Am quality I? changed instantly. I just leaned closer to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like the difference uh, between this and this. I, that tends to be... Oh, what, does it sound better when it I'm sitting better. here? Yeah, or? it sounds better. It, just, it sounds better, turn you down but now. I could tell originally you weren't that close to your microphone. It wasn't bad, ah. it was just I could tell the difference. I feel like that's what I... I need to figure out a way to have this mic constantly, but I always lean back when I play How about a so. string that you tie around your neck and... Right, so mic. like well, as soon as you sit up, it's just like. Pfft, I mean, I will like, say. Um, I don't know if Rags if, is the same way, but you should probably be a little bit, high, a little. I know how stupid this sounds. A little bit hyper aware of how you will come through based on the distance from your microphone, right? Like. Yeah. I've been trying to get better at that. Through. Yeah. You probably will really. It'll become second nature probably once you. I don't want to say start making content, but <laughs> like when when you're used to, uh, when when you're just used to using it a lot for recording your voice. I yeah, mean, you know? yeah. He's been doing this longer than I have. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Technically, yeah. I started in 2013. Uh, someone in chat though said, "said Rags don't overestimate love for weapons." I stuck with the first bolt action for the whole game because I love the Springfield sniper rifle. For more Loving games. it is not the same. So, yeah, and also it that's actually a springboard to bring up an excellent example. In Resident Evil 4, the semi-automatic sniper rifle is just better it's just better it has higher dps it has higher damage per shot it is just better in just always and also it can equip the um infrared scope um however in resident evil 5 there is an actual reason to keep the first sniper rifle instead of getting the later ones it does it it does not have the highest dam uh, damage per second 
but it has the highest damage per shot by a considerable amount. Um, you consider and it that can also superior. have extremely high capacity, which is like, why I kept it in our playthrough. Do you consider it superior strictly that every weapon serves, instead of like power leveling, that there are always a reason to have every weapon if you choose to? I mean, it depends on what you what the reason is. If the reason is just I because it's more cool, but if there's like like a mechanical reason for it, well, like if, if something it, doesn't have a reason for existing mechanically, then I can't consider. Well, what if that it's balance. just the fact that it's the weapon to use of that category, be it long range and single shot for the early game? But once you get to the middle oh, well, game, well, oh, I mean this in the sense of compared to the other weapons of its type, like when yeah. I'm talking with sniper rifles. Yeah, well, that's like, why I said power to... level. So you've got sniper. Sniper does X in early game. You unlock cool, cool sniper halfway through, and it's just better than current sniper in every way. Is that bad? Um, it's bad uh, it, only in the sense if we're comparing <laughs> weapons amongst themselves versus. Is it bad to make a weapon against... redundant? Over player against the yeah. we, uh, player against the game. That would be the cool question. Which is why when I said I I agreed and disagreed with your first point, I differentiated between balance between weapons amongst themselves and balance of the game versus the player. Um, because right. like I'm, I'm not like I don't mind the idea of I use the and f forgive the so layman perspective on this when it comes to guns. Be like the wooden guns and then the steel guns. When you look at them, they're like. They've got the wooden finishes, and then when you get this, the the gray finishes, because they're all like all steel or whatever, they just feel as though they're like, oh, these are the upgraded versions. And if someone said, yeah, but that's bad though, because it makes all of your wooden ones, uh, you know, redundant. Uh, as as Frank said, and I I don't know that I have a problem with that. I'd be like, yeah, because I'm getting yeah, the upgraded different. one. And that also ties into this its surrounding mechanics. Like right now, I'm just casually playing Stardew Valley. Um, there is there is horrible inter-weapon balancing but the point is that you get better and better and better and better and better stuff that you upgrade and you invest into that give you better capabilities which is fine um it's not like it doesn't like ruin your options it is a specific upgrade a thing becomes a new thing that is objectively better and more efficient um and besides what's more important anyway is the player against the game, not individual weapons amongst themselves, which is objectively bad balance, if we use the word as its you know, definition. However, you can have objectively bad inter-weapon balance, but that's fine because it's supposed to get gradually better and better to scale with a game's difficulty against the player. Which, which is, is why Resident Evil 4 has really good player versus game scaling or difficulty balance the weapons amongst themselves are not balanced well. Yeah, I think I'm on the complete same page because, uh, funnily enough, it's like you, you, you could agree with all of that and then you go, what if, though, those wooden weapons have just a small damage bonus, or at least the sm sniper has a small damage bonus, the the shotgun has a small capacity bonus, the blah, 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 while every other category it beats out in the in the upgraded visions. I'd be like, that's kind of neat yeah, that there is still a it, reason. Yeah, um, like we said in Resident Evil 5, each individual weapon within each category has its particular strength and none of those and they're all useful in their own way argue of course some will be more useful than others which is not like not not perfect but for instance like the you just in, in a game like resident evil you want power you want each shot to do more damage um mm -hmm. whereas well, this is the difference between damage per shot and damage per second. So, like, in, in, and that's generally balanced with ammo ammunition availability. So in a game where ammo is scarce, damage per shot's more important. In games where ammo is plentiful, damage per second is more important. So that's its own balancing thing to talk about. Um, which is its own conversation, and it's mm -hmm. its own big rabbit hole to leap into. Um, so... That, that's a, that's it's one of my pet peeves of when you when a when like information given to the player when you don't have good information given to the player by a game that's a huge pet peeve of mine yep. i want to know which is why games that do damage per shot and damage per second as individual things are really great because those are both important pieces of information that matter especially in games like resident evil like yeah the bolt action rifle has really bad damage per second 
uh, or damage per shot. But yeah. damage per shot is really high, which is good when you can only carry 30 rounds, for instance. But if you never have to worry about ammo, then it's damage per second all the way. It's just sheer damage in time. Agreed. So, yeah. yeah. It's its own thing. It's While you were gone. to talk about because so many things build on each other. While you were gone for you, we got some questions all in a row that must have been relating to the stream that you were on at the time that uh, could be answered without you, but I feel a benefited from your, uh, your presence. Okay. Okay. So, I guess, because this one I didn't have written down and I remember it, so I guess I'll just say it. Uh, how do you rank King of the Hill related to stuff like Simpsons, Futurama, etc.? Um, the problem is I haven't watched enough King of the Hill to oh. feel like I can rank... I, I've, I've watched King of the Hill, but I haven't watched it in the same way that I've watched like every episode of Futurama and South Park and Simpsons, yeah, that was, so... That was pretty much yeah. my answer. I was like, I can't really answer it. <laughs> like, um, but, but I feel like, and, and this is partly informed by the fact that I have watched uh, Silicon Valley, which was also created by Mike Judge, and I really like Silicon Valley a lot, so I feel like King of the Hill... I, I feel like I was too young to appreciate King of the Hill. Exactly. Like, um, I think that's how I a lot of people feel that. probably are. Yeah. yeah. It's not I like Family um, Guy. Which it, family Guy's humor is very juvenile. Almost to the point of being obnoxious, overt, and in your face what the jokes are. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It, I, I think family Guy doesn't true, have a lot of subtle humor like King of the Hill No, has. it doesn't. Um, I think that's the thing is like, because when I was a kid, it's like, even though the layers of the jokes to like Simpsons and Futurama have become more obvious to me now, they were still funny on the on the face of it at the time. I don't think King of the Hill is like that. I feel like, um, but I, I really want to watch King of the Hill again. I, I feel like it's kind of a Bob's Burgers situation where like that show didn't really get me at first. And then when I came back and watched it later, especially once you get past season one, it starts getting funnier. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. But yeah, King of the Hill is probably good, but I haven't seen enough of it to, to rank it properly. Oh shit, I kind of skipped over, I just, sorry, I just remember, the reason we were giving pros to, um, RE4 was because somebody asked us what is it that we love about it. I didn't mean, I can, my brain is not working currently. Um, were, were there, um, other broader things that you could say quickly, Rags, and then I can read the second half of that super chat about RE4 just to... Oh yeah, it's just, I know it sounds dumb, but it's just, it's fun to play. It's fun to learn. It's rewarding to do well with. It's fun that the enemies in that game are fun to fight in the way that they interact with the player and the way that you can, you know, inflict damage to them and take them out. Um, it's not like it's not a complex game at all, but that's part of what makes it really fun to learn and, you know, getting all the stuff down and doing well. At it. It's very rewarding. Uh, the, the levels are designed well and there's a good variety of different setups for combat so the game doesn't feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over agreed uh so the, the rest of the super just said um and this is obviously meant to act as a sort of rebuttal to the idea it's a good game so we could do these one at a time i guess first one is extremely low fov isn't that on purpose like um, in, if, um, designed to make it harder for you to see everything because it's a horror game well, so FOV is um, complicated because, like, I remember Tolbus, you always talking about giving motion sickness, bad FOV, quote unquote, which is just anything below like a hundred, right? Like field of view. Yeah, which I'm inclined to agree with. Well, uh, so the thing like for me was always, shooter. I never got motion sickness, and I always just considered it you were yeah, hampering yeah. me. Like the game is like yeah. you can't see as much, and I'm like, all right, I guess I have to work with this space. Okay, well, not preferable is what I'm saying. I feel like this is in the same vein of why can't I shoot and move at the same time? Right. Uh, like, that's the point. like, well, I don't think RE4 would be ruined by, like, a mod where it improves your FOV. It um, wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't ruin it. Um, but, we, but I, I wonder I would if talk the about, levels like, were specifically designed with that in mind. I, I would believe that that's the case, and I would also say that there are, we're talking about a, a tad here, like, limitations as well, just to allow the game yeah. to run yeah, well. Limitations, yeah. Um, yeah, very possibly. And I wouldn't want to say, like, oh, so it's okay because it's a limitation. I'm just like, oh, no, I'm just explaining that, like, it wasn't something that they could pull off. And that, I guess, then we can talk about how much does it hamper the game for it to be that way. And I, I really wouldn't argue it hampers it much at all. But, um, yeah, and it, it doesn't change mechanically what you're able to do in a physical sense, like frame rate would. It's something that you go in with and that the game is probably built around, honestly, and something that you have to keep in mind and something you can work with. But I don't, I, I, never, I wouldn't consider that a weakness of the game. It's, it's a uh, field of view. 
Next up is clunky tank movement. Um, oh, that is not a flaw. I think so, it's, it's a very mechanically consistent. Yeah, there's it, no such it's thing. It's very mechanically consistent. It works really well. You just need to learn it. It doesn't like that's the way that the game is played. Well, um, I guess there is such a thing. There's clunky tank movement and smooth tank movement, and what RE4 has is functioning smooth tank movement. It is tank movement. Yeah. It's like Dead Space One, where yeah. it's it's not clunky. It has weight to it, but it's really actually it's. And it's all you can do, I would argue, is like you're going to appeal to how that's not how you move and shoot in real life, or you don't have to move that way in real life. And I'd be like, Which is okay, why a lot yeah, of video games don't. Yeah, how video you games don't. Life comport to real life uh and, and that's not me saying space wizards that's me saying bloodborne for example i think you can roll in probably let's use dark souls one and, and two i guess like four and eight directions or whatever you'd be like shouldn't it be 360 directions at the very least you'd be like um i mean the more more is preferable but i don't think any game allows you to roll in perfect like every degree possible um, games have limits in terms of not being able to best represent reality, and a lot of them are put and on because. Degrees, well, what about arc minutes? You know, it's like okay. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, there's there's lots of things you can't do in video games that you can do in real life, and that a lot of them are there because they're trying to craft a mechanically sound system. Well, that prevents... for example, in Halo, you can't sprint for a reason, even though a super soldier probably would want to sprint every. If now they and can then. walk, they could probably sprint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you see them sprinting cutscenes. It's like Luda narrative dissonance. It's like, uh, mm, not like in Tomb Raider where you kill a guy and it's really sad yeah. I would you just start killing people mercilessly. I would probably concede that is a bit of a, a, a dissonance, but um, it's nowhere would, near yeah. as significant. Exactly. Yeah. It is a dissonance for sure. It's just yeah. that how important, you know, like the dissonance of being uncharted that Nathan Drake is a fun-loving adventurer who murders everybody who <laughs> crosses him in cold blood. <laughs> and yeah, so it's like, well, why can't I? you know, not move like a tank. It's like, the game is built that way, uh, and the challenges well, I, are created around it. Well, I think the interesting thing is, you know, I, I think I've seen, uh, I think Chris Raygun, when he made a video talking about Halo, he's like, Halo is not meant to be like a real life simulator, it's like a game, in the same way that chess is a game, and these are the rules. Um, and the rules were designed this way to facilitate this type of gameplay. Well, I suppose you could go as far as... I mean, this is a little bit more extreme, and I don't think people would like this comparison, but if I said, like, I can't play Bloodborne in f uh, first person, which, why? It's right. like, I mean, not built for that. The game's not built for that. You don't want to. So. Yeah, I, I, I would argue you don't fucking want to play this game in first person. It's like playing Devil May Cry in first person, you'll get I imagine brain playing Devil May Cry in first person, yeah. Nightmare fuel. Um... I'm cool with tank controls if the game's built around them, yeah, and, and that goes for all controls, I guess. It always does exactly what you tell it to do when you tell it to do it. Um, yeah, maybe I mean, maybe it's worth addressing, because yeah. like I hate the controls in classic Resident Evil, and it's not necessarily just the controls, it's the camera view as well. And my points of conflict are not usually tied to... It's like, it hampers my ability to be able to act the way I wish to, as in, the way I aim is changing between every single frame. A lot yeah, of it of is done to trick me and to uh, to force me into positions that I don't want to be in. Because I, I don't, I'm not a fan of that in anything. How much is that? How much is that worth? Or is it the game being cheap? You know, in a certain sense, creating difficulty where it wouldn't exist otherwise. And the uh, the argument is often like, yeah, but it creates the director gets to like, and I say director get to specifically choose like a frame for the scene. You get to craft so much about that I mean, portion of the game. There is truth to that, but I guess the question is, how much is that compromise worth? Like, how much does a nice-looking level that I'm was not even designed... sure that I, like... Surely, that's um... the difficulty of direction, is to have something like Bloodborne, where I can look everywhere, and there's something worth seeing, or it's, it's, it's but, crafted for it. But, technical limitations of the time... Like, for, are you talking about Resident Evil, like, 1 and 2, right? Uh, just, yeah. Well, they obviously ditched yeah, classic like, controls um, as time went on, so that's probably indicative well, of something, well, right? Well, it's worth remembering that for Resident Evil 1 and 2 and 3, they had to use, like, pre-rendered backgrounds for the backgrounds, so they had to be a still image. Well, yeah, but we cancel that out, and we're including people arguing that that's an awesome system. Oh. Oh. Okay, no, then, then at that point I disagree. Um, I think, like, I think it changes at that point. Um... Because technical limitations I can accept, but... Yeah, this isn't me saying that. the game should have been blah 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 when they can't. It's me saying that <laughs> system is fucking annoying. And people being like, no it's not. 
like no it's not okay. because yeah it's uh right i get you um and yeah i you know it's harder for me to articulate why exactly it bothers me so much when i've spent so long not playing it you know it's it's been a while i don't search for those sorts of experiences because i fucking find them annoying um yeah i just i i figure it's worth cross-referencing considering the defenses we're using of um uh, tank controls could someone apply them to those controls right or camera views what do you think rags about the tank controls so the defenses the... used for tank controls could they be uh repurposed for defenses you... of the classic resident evil systems i mean while while i don't like well yeah i i say i hate the old system of movement in the, re in the old resident evil games i'm i can't call it a flaw of those games really yeah i, I don't think i i can't i i don't think i can I don't think I could come up with. I could give you reasons why I don't. I might not like it, but most of them come down to the, just the fact it's so unorthodox, and I have to. It's so unlike any other movement system I've ever used. How um, far would that extend? Like, could I yeah. provide you a system that's like ball in a cup, and you have to roll it around three times to move forward, and you have to keep doing that? Would you then conclude like, well, objectively, there's no problem with that. It does work consistently. I think consistency is a kind of a big key to it it's does it do what i tell it to do um you know is it responsive to my inputs is it consistent and i i, I couldn't make any i don't think i like the, the original resident evil movement it just isn't for me i don't enjoy it i don't like it but if someone says i really really like it and they give the reasons i'd be like yeah i i, I get it but it's just it's not my thing in just the same way that I defend Resident Evil Force controls. Um, I'd be willing to uh, critique it further than just a subjective uh, position. I just would need to play a lot more and of it I to be able to grasp it more. Yeah, I... If, if there's something mechanically inconsistent about it, or it causes some kind of well, a functional problem... For example, when you move from one to another and then you move backward and shit fucks you up, especially when enemies are chasing you, that grinds my gears like crazy. Oh, then, like, if you, like... Like, oh, like, when you go from one area to the next area and yeah. you're, you keep moving, what what is the relationship from the the, the direction yeah, like of depending moving game to the thumbsticks direction depending on the engine i suppose um if you hold forward and move through the next direction you will continue walking forward and then if you reset the the uh the, uh, the joystick for example and then hit left you'll move in that same direction you just were because now the game is accounted for it however some of them you move to the next area and then you immediately move backwards because the controls have changed because the camera style has changed and so you have to inch it forward first yeah um, that would be, yeah like you yeah i'd call that yeah, I'd, I'd call that bad because it it will it swaps what you're in like it's not a consistent input. Um, yeah, uh, and stuff like that is probably what I would be looking to find if I was to make like a full on critique of this sort of thing. But yeah. I guess I'd concede like yeah, that's just a non preferable system for me for now. Without yeah, as I avoid it, it is a, my whole point basically. Yeah, it, it the the idea itself I can't come up with any. At least at the right now, being on the spot, any reason why it's objectively bad, um, I can come up with, uh, you know, I, my own reasons why I don't like it. But a lot of it has, like, like if like the best possibly executed version of the original Resident Evil camera and movement system. I mean, it just just isn't for me. It's not something I like. Um, but you know, I I couldn't say it's bad. I would wonder what your reasons would be that you would consider exclusively subjective, I guess. Uh, I, I don't. I thought that's what you just said. No, I, I, no, I, I've been talking about consistency and it's, you know, mechanical execution of it and it's, it's relationship to the controls as the standard. No, you haven't. I, I, I was the one who said that. You said, said that you wouldn't call it uh, objectively bad, just subjectively. I, if if it had certain issues, I'd call it objectively bad. Like yeah, if it so I'm was, curious like, what your reasons issues. are. Because... But I haven't played it enough to know all of its ah. intricacies. Oh, okay. yeah. So if rags. yeah, <laughs> no, I, no, I, I gave my I gave my criteria. Well, why did you disagree with me? What I just said is what you just said. Well, you said I you said it was all sub you, you said I said it was just subjective. 
Yeah, that's what you said. No, I, I my reasons for not liking it are subjective. Alright, now I'm just fucking confused. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're running me in circles, mate. <laughs> what do you want me to do with this? I don't know, I, it's just, I could clarify anything if you need me to. So, uh, uh, is this a characterization of what you just said? Your issues with original Resident Evil control slash camera system are that of your own personal preference. And then I yes. said, I would be curious to know what those reasons are and how they are exclusively subjective. Because I'd be, like, if you were to label reasons and they all... You actually cut out for a little bit. Uh, my reasons are what? Exclu like, I, so, what I gathered was you have reasons and they are subjective. And I was like, I'd like to know those reasons and how they are exclusively subjective, rather. Because I would assume you'd relate them to mechanics. Uh, no, my subjective, uh, no, my subjective reasons for not liking it are it's a lack of familiarity with them in that I just, I don't like the way that the character moves in relationship to what my inputs are. It's, uh, I mean, if I, if I devoted a lot of time to it, it's very possible that I could warm up to them immensely. Do you mean I like when you've got long enough. your characters moving from, let's say, the left to the right, but holding forward on the D-pad pushes you right? Is that kind of thing what you're talking about? Yeah, it's it's like if I was playing it. Yeah, it's it's a, a very unfamiliar set of controls. I have very little experience with that. I'd have to learn uh, that I can't relate to really anything else um, that mm. I wouldn't really enjoy playing. But that's that's pretty much why I I didn't enjoy it. Um, but as I said, why I didn't. Uh, but if I devoted a lot of time to it and learned the intricacies of it, and I learned the in and outs of yeah, just, just learned all the details of it. Maybe I would come up with objective reasons. It depends on what those details are. I'm not familiar enough with it to make an objective assessment. But yeah, that's pretty much my position. Tentative, yeah, but tentatively, I don't see anything objectively wrong with it. Now, and they like conceptually, my objective issues with it would come from the 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 details and its execution. Um. Yeah. Well, the, the example I gave was obviously the. Uh... It was dependent on the system because, like, it might not be present in some, but it is in others. And I yeah, know that, that I've could, experienced yeah, that it. Um, it. I think it's conceptually totally fine, but the, its execution would determine its objective quality. Yeah, because there's going to be people who are really, really good at it. As yeah, in, like, there's like, nothing objectively wrong with a game, and it's the only game where the green A button is actually cancel and back, and the red B button is accept and yes. Mm -hmm. It's not objectively bad, it's just I see why a lot of people would hate that, and why that would seemingly almost specifically be created to frustrate people. Yeah, no, I line up, I line up with that completely. And that was the only mm -hmm. reference I have off the top of my head, and if I was to play more of it, I might be able to find more, but no guarantees. So, so Rags doesn't like RE tank controls because he has played games with better input controls he hasn't had to put so much effort into. No, like, the Resident Evil tank controls, they're, they're not like some alien creature from another planet. You just can't strafe. I, yeah, I guess that's, that's why I would be curious to ask of the people who dislike it. I'd be like, is it's it like, the fact that you can't shoot and move at the same time? Yeah. Is that it? You just can't strafe left and right. That, like, that, that's basically the only difference that it has with other things. You turn left and right, you rotate left and right, you can move forwards and back, you have a dedicated about-face function, you just can't strafe left and right. That That's it. It's not like some weird foreign alien creature you've discovered under a rock in Beetlejuice or whatever. Like it's not, it's not far from what you're you use all the time. You just can't stray. That's it. That guy's yeah, dead. Uh, I got nothing for this. <laughs> um, well, because I, I do I do find the conversation interesting because I think oh, yeah, super I'm weird, um yeah. I'm an extremist in the so for example I think I've told you guys before but a friend of mine was incredible at um Metroid Hunters on DS right that's what it was. Metroid Prime Hunters. Yeah, Metroid Prime Hunters. Yeah. 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 He um. Oh, the controls in that game. Yeah. So cool. he knew exactly and was really good at the DS controls and he would dominate in like matches against anybody and it's just the kind of thing where you're like god I can't fucking stand those controls and he's like oh yeah I bet I, be I could beat you while you're on mouse and keyboard it's like hmm first of all that that's a whole other conversation but secondly like does that not highlight like if everybody just liked DS controls does that then mean that mouse and keyboard sucks or something it's like not really it's just yeah like there's right. hmm 
It's complicated, there, right? Because there's an issue in Apex Legends right now where, and I would legitimately call it an issue that needs to be resolved. I haven't played that game in a couple of weeks, um, but there's cross play between mouse and keyboard users and uh, controller, mm -hmm. controller. And one of the big issues is that the aim assist is so incredibly strong for the controller users that a lot of people are just swapping to that because up close especially Damn. where a lot of fights are won and lost um the the aim assist is so good and snapping on targets is so good that it doesn't matter if you can't if, if you're inferior in all other situations that snapping and auto aim is so fucking good that you just want to have the controller to do the work for you because it's so efficient I wonder if that's um, like... I've had a lot of players that I've been playing with for a long time who are really good. Like, I play with a good bunch of guys. And I'm pretty darn good myself. But they'll be, they just like straight up have dropped mouse and keyboard and are playing on controller now just because the aim assist is so crazy good. Let's say that's, that's relevant in that context, but like that would be irrelevant ultimately of like the actual control scheme. Rather, it's just a variable that's applied to it. Like, mouse and keyboard could have auto aim, right? But it it, be... Yeah, it could. I might. Is it is that a considered a part of control scheme? Um. In the same way, like Southpaw is a not the guy the <laughs> orientation. Like for Halo, you could have Southpaw is an option for controls for like lefties or whatever, or you could have like bump is melee well, instead of X. Things was like your that. um was your was your point there that like even controller can outplay PC if the right things are applied? Sort is, of thing? Well, it's it's is a. Is the software aspect a part of the control scheme? I'm not sure, because I guess my brain right now wants to separate the input of moving stick left, you move left, versus software applied where you will automatically be pushed toward the person's head and you just have to, you know, shoot, is different. And that um, this is something that could apply to all of those schemes rather than the schemes themselves being applied. So like, you know, spin ball around cup three times to move left is uh, versus press W to move left on keyboard versus hit control stick left to move left. They like the comparisons and then automatically move left based on, or automatically complete game based on moving anything in either of those control schemes. It's like software versus, uh, I'm not sure what the words I'm looking for are. I just seem, it feels like there's a distinction there. Mm -hmm. Maybe and there that um, aim assist, like, because imagine they said, okay, just to solve the problem of aim assist with controllers beating out mouse and keyboard more consistently, we will now apply aim assist to PC as well, and that all mouse and keyboards will automatically... Would you, here's a question. Um, do you think that, like, bullet magnetism and aim assist are the same, or that there's a distinction between the two? Um, uh, they, they, I think it's a, I think it's a distinction without much of a difference. Uh, they're right. both different guess, ways uh... to accomplish the same thing. Well, I guess it's interesting, right? Because, like, for instance, Call of Duty has hardcore aim assist, like, on consoles, where, like, the the camera starts to slow down over the enemy, but then you have, oh, like, yeah, Halo yeah. 5, where it's straight up the bullets, if you miss, will fly towards the enemy's head. Um, <laughs> you know, a system like yeah, that, where it's... there is a difference, there yeah. is a difference, but it's a distinction that is almost without a difference. Yeah, it, it's basically, there are two different ways of executing the same goal, which is yeah. how do we get people to How do we use, trick people we... into thinking they're better than they are? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's how do yeah. we make this control scheme just so much more forgiving, it makes people want to play it more because it makes them yeah. think that they're better than they really are. Well, it's funny, it was in that Halo 5 vidoc, we trick people, well, they didn't say trick, but make people think that they're awesome, it's like, but they're not though. Yeah, but they're, not. they're clearly missing, but we're just going to curve the... It's like, do do you want to tamper with the character's aim, or do you want to tamper with the bullets once they're fired? I mean, it's... Yeah. You know, at what stage is your tampering happening? Yeah. Also, and yeah, and, someone and... said Beetlejuice mixing your genres there, Rags. No, Beetlejuice is a star. Beetlejuice is a star, yeah. Yeah. It's a... It's a giant red, red, giant, uh, red giant. That's right. Yeah, I think so. It may have already exploded, and we just don't know it yet. Yeah, um, I hear How cool it. I, is that? Yeah, <laughs> so I I heard that when Beetlejuice, which is, rel it, it's it's due to it's explode within the next. Years away, but, it's like um, six hundred million light years away. But I heard when no, it does not explode. Million. No, about six hundred. Uh, oh, six hundred. Oh, okay. Six hundred million um, would be in a different solar, in a different like oh, okay. that's All so right. far away. <laughs> that's All right. so um, far away. I just didn't know who was going. Yeah. Uh, 
but the uh, when it explodes, it will be brighter than the full moon for over a month. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be because I think the last time there was a, a massive supernova that was visible from Earth was in the Middle Ages. People thought the end was there. You know what I mean? Like, wow, supernovas aren't that common. Most stars are red dwarfs. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the time the time span of a it's like why it's like when you go outside, you hardly see any woman who's pregnant. <laughs> right. It, but all I, these I, people I, had to come I, from I, somewhere. So how come I never see a pregnant woman? I'm like, well. There are around, times, you know, you know, time frames, basically. There, there's your analogy, folks. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Supernovas are like pregnant women. They're Supernovas around. Supernovas are like pregnant women. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Father Gastion isn't as good when he's in his second stage. Gascoigne. Yeah, so I have to pee. I'll be right Gascoigne, back. Yeah. Also, he has three stages. Uh, oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. So, which stage are you referring to? His uh, axe. Oh, well, he killed me when he's a giant monster dude. Yeah, that's his third phase, and oh, okay. I I can understand I being frustrated with that one. Yeah. Well, he just killed me pretty quickly. I was having. Also, hi to the people watching my stream. It's been like hey. forty minutes. I've <laughs> Well, now, I saw somebody before. Apparently, there were Simpsons quotes you meant to be asking me. <laughs> I think we've tangented more in this one than, like, anything ever. Just because... Yeah. This is the thing. We all have big video game backgrounds, so we like talking mechanics, and that just... Hey, just leads dude, this you... is what you pay for, guys, all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just funny, because, like, the whole goal is to catch up on Super Chats, and I think we have probably got the I same amount to go through now yeah. that we got through, so... But, you okay. know, that's what happens. Um, and you never know, because any questions could be anything. So, the first of this Simpsons set is, Fringy's hot take is that old Simpsons episodes are funny. Oh, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say to that. Like, you're just kind of categorically wrong if you think the old Simpsons stuff isn't funny. Like, I actually don't know what to say to you. Um, yeah, especially if they're including just classic era rather than season one yeah, like, or something. No, not, yeah, season one, um, you know, I'm happy to exclude that, but, like, seasons two through eight, I think, is what we all agree is, like, the best stuff. And, yeah, that stuff is incredible. Yeah, the amount uh... of jokes they cram in p for, like, the amount of time they have is kind of incredible. Like, um, I, I remember we watched that, that clip where it was, um, Bart, uh, sabotaged the weather balloon, so it said, um... What did it say on Skinner? I'm a big uh, look butt at me, Skinner. <laughs> yeah, and then the jokes with the, the Air Force pilots. Will yeah, like the... Shot the the idea is like, <laughs> did you laugh at Big Butt Skinner? And you could be like, no I didn't. It's like, okay, did you laugh no. at Skinner suggesting to children that you should use this like kind of vandalism in order to protect his ego? Did you laugh at that? And you're like, and no, I didn't. Like, did you laugh at? Rocks in his yeah, yeah, yeah. Car I, I'm gonna go through them all. So it's like, yeah. if you didn't laugh at that, did you laugh at the rocks landing on his car? It's like, no, I didn't. Like, did you laugh at the fact that he said, "Whoa, that's my car. Stop!" And then they continue to throw them, knowing that it's his car. Did you laugh at that? It's like, no. Like, did, did you, you laugh? laugh? At the part where he ordered Skinner, to, uh, where he ordered Willie to pull out a shotgun and shoot it down. Did you laugh at the fact that Willie just had a shotgun on school grounds to shoot down? Did you laugh at the fact that two fighter jets were flying overhead, were getting shot at, and when they scanned, they found out the groundskeeper Willie was an Iraqi fighter jet? And like, did you laugh? At that? Whether or not, like, you know, eventually just be like, we've crossed over about 30 seconds of episode time. Like, this is incredible yeah. work. And, and all character based as well. So, and the, you know, I hate to be a dick, but it's just like, compared to Bojack, like, the jokes per minute is an incredible rate. And so I guess what I'm saying is, um, whether or not you're laughing at any particular one, there's almost likely going to be at least one that's tailor-made to you in terms of like, oh, that shit's funny. Yeah. Just the fact that they're shotgunning, I keep saying shotgunning, shotgunning is slow, that they're just machine gunning. You know, like in Wonder Woman 1984, how they fire a machine gun and one bullet comes out, they're doing it like that. <laughs> machine gunning those... Why... The fact that she caught a bullet out of the sky with her lasso... <laughs> God. She's I'm telling so you guys, fun. get hype for EFAP movies double feature. It's gonna yeah. be fun. So what, what was the rest of the, the stuff with the Simpsons jokes then? Alright, well so that was the opener. The next was, um, what is your favorite either Simpson episode or Simpson joke or Simpson uh, moment? Dude... That's... I don't well, know. Well the... Like, what I default cool. to is the, um, the 
I can't remember if it was twenty something mini stories in one episode pretty of Simpsons. Sure. Yeah, that, that one's pretty fantastic. Then uh, Lisa on Ice is another one of my favorite ones as well. Oh, Lisa on Ice, the ending. Oh, that it's gets all me it's all time. great. The whole episode's great. If, all right, Pi, I'm gonna walk towards you like doing this. Um, um, um. <laughs> and if you get eaten, it's your own fault. Um, um. <laughs> oh, 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 the hell with it. Oh, the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that he was an actual pain. He did play it up still, but he's like, you know what? No one's around. There's a pie. Yeah. I mean, in the pie. Like, fuck this. Oh, somebody, somebody's talking about Hank Scorpio. That was a really good episode. That's an excellent episode, oh, yeah. I I have the doomsday device. I just love the the fact that he's like, "Hey Homer, if you if you want to kill someone on your way out, that would really help me a lot." <laughs> nice PJ Simpson. Did your mommy buy him for you? Of course she did. Yeah. Who else would have? All right, Simpson, you win this <laughs> round. <laughs> I, um... he's, he's like he's like good battle, and boss just confused. <laughs> it's like what? What are you? <laughs> I think the hard part when it comes to figure out which Simpsons episodes are like the best is partly because there's a balancing act between the ones that I found the funniest and the ones that got me most in the feels. And yeah, um, there's a good chance my favorite moment is probably going to be drama rather than comedy. There's a good chance. Well, I, think my, I think my favorite moment in The Simpsons is when Homer's mum leaves and he's sitting on the car looking at the, the sky. Like, every time, every single time that gets me. Um... I kind of adore that that scene, um, and everything is like firing on eleven in terms of you know like the music, just the the imagery. It's pretty powerful that Homer Simpson's been sitting there for so long thinking this doofus, like you know, because Homer. I think that's one of the key things that separates uh, the Simpsons from Family Guy. Is like regardless of your perspective on the humor, which obviously the Simpsons is better. <laughs> <laughs> um, regardless of your perspective on the humor, like Family Guy doesn't often have like I, mean, I, I feel like i feel like the best episode of family guy is the one where um it's that episode it's like 45 minute long episode where it's stewie and uh the bottle episode where stewie and brian are sitting in the uh in the the storage locker and then they have the conversation about how they're basically each other's best friend it's like that's the best scene in the show but to get there you have to sift through a lot of jokes that don't really land like the poop one um and that's like it, but in terms of the characterization, I mean, Peter Griffin is awful, like, he's a really bad person. He, I don't believe that he actually cares about his family, whereas, like, he, Homer Simpson absolutely does. Yeah. Well, uh, which, he does. which leads in nicely to, like, I think, like, genuinely, the moment I always come back to is, is do it for her, it's the classic, like... Yeah. Yeah. That Homer Simpson gave up his dream job, and arguably dream life, so that he could give Maggie a good upbringing. It's like, damn. Yeah. I mean, the Homer and Maggie relationship is uh, quite well fleshed out. Yeah, Maggie's um, pretty awesome. Um, Maggie is a cool character for a baby who doesn't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike other babies, you don't say Unlike anything. Unlike other babies, yeah. Or even unlike babies who say a lot. <laughs> But all of them are better than fucking Ice Age, baby. Fuck what? Ice Age. Baby. Why do you hate Ice Age, baby? Fuck Ice Age, baby. No, I know, Both but why? Shit. <laughs> Fuck him with his poopy Yeah, actually, why? His I don't face. like the Ice Age, baby. Those annoying noises. Oh. It's a baby. <laughs> I didn't know you hate Ice Age, baby. I have decided at this moment that I yeah, really this, hate Ice Age. It's a revelation. Baby. Somebody said I'm not powering at all. Yeah, is this this is what it's going to be tomorrow? Just hey, you're playing the Souls games wrong. <laughs> Every time, you people can't just leave me alone. Let me play oh, this game how I want. All right. That's like a double-edged sword of well, probably not a double-edged sword is not the right term, but just at the at one moment I'm like fuck all of them for not letting someone just play a game. Then at the second moment it's like why wouldn't they be saying stuff when they're invested in the game and the player? Yeah. Like of course they're gonna say stuff. And they're gonna say that stuff. Like, I mean, I've been getting it all night, but to be honest with you, it's just like, it's I, it's uh, fine. I, I don't mind being blood. bad at Bloodborne. Uh, I lost all my, oh wait, no, my blood vials. Um, but yeah, also, what was the rest your, of the huh? what? Your commentary on Fringy and Mahler's gameplay could be constructive. <laughs> not, that, not, that, not that you suck. <laughs> 
they're not parrying. Well, tell me how. Well, I don't know how. But, you know. I mean, I don't I feel like I don't like feel like I've died a lot. Every critical comment that you make, like every piece of friendly advice you give, has the implicit, well, implication that something could be improved. So you don't have to say that part. Wow, Rags is telling you guys to be nice. That's where we're at, chat. That's yeah, where we're at. Be nice done. to Mahler and Fringy. <laughs> All right, yeah, be nice. I know you okay. don't say that shit for me, so at least be nice to them. <laughs> Punished Rags. Punished Rags, yeah. Punished Rags. You're gonna set a up a dog without a something. Ocean. Yeah. And then you gotta walk through your base, killing all the other Shibus. Yeah, I would argue I've <laughs> made significant chat, progress considering my apparent terribleness at this game. Maybe that's evidence that I've found a way to be able to beat the game that isn't necessarily great design. Not implying anything by saying that, okay? Oh my goodness. No, I'm getting stuck. Uh but what was what was the rest of the the chat? Because I, I like. Oh well, so we I guess we went over our favorite moments. Oh Jesus Christ, that was definitely my fault. I didn't look at my health bar. I have very little experience with Simpsons. I haven't watched much of it, but I remember when I was young. It probably won't be funny at all, but when I was young, one part that made me laugh my ass off because I wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons when I was a kid. Um. Was Homer was at work. And he was describing a movie he saw. He said, I saw this movie. He's talking to a coworker. I saw this movie last night. And it was about... Oh, I already know this, what this is. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. about this bus. And is this guy's driving this bus. And, you know, they had to stay, you know, driving <laughs> down the highway. And they had to stay about Can 50 I... <laughs> miles an hour. And if they didn't, then the bus would blow up because of these bombs. And it's like, I can't remember what it was called. I think it was called The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down. <laughs> yep, that's and it. Was it. <laughs> Funniest damn yeah. thing I think I'd ever heard in my life up to that point. Jesus, that Even was hilarious. The best thing about it is how relatable it is. He got the detail right, I'm pretty sure, which is that um, it had to keep the speed uh, above 50. And if its speed dropped, it would explode. <laughs> I think it yeah. was called. <laughs> like he, He's like he's got the, the premise right. <laughs> and even the name right. It, is that, it had um, to keep above speed. Is that the X-Files episode? Um... Maybe the X Files episode. Oh, I love that part where it was like, "I bring you love." Oh, he's bringing love. Kill it. Yeah, Kill well, it. it's bringing Don't love. Don't let it get bird. away. Break its legs. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> it's two birds. Kill it. Kill it. <laughs> yeah, uh, rags. The, the they think an alien is in the forest and it's uh -huh. saying weird things because it's Mr. Birds, but he's high, and he says, "Um, I bring you love," and then they're like. It, the, the reaction should obviously be like, oh, how wholesome. And it's like, break its legs. <laughs> Don't let it get away. <laughs> it's bringing love. I think I really like that joke. It's one of the many running gags of Mo's illegal activities. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> FBI, huh? Hold on. And then he, there's a whale there. All right, they're on to us. Get him back to SeaWorld. <laughs> and then at the end of the episode, they're carrying the whale. Oh, God, who knew whales were so heavy? Oh, Jesus, I, <laughs> I know I've talked to Fring about this in private calls, so pretend that wipe your memory, Fring. Okay, so there's this joke where um, Homer's having trouble with, I think it's marital problems with Marge. It's not really relevant. Mo suddenly gives incredibly meaningful <laughs> advice, Rags, the kind that you're like, wow, that's that's like that's probably going to be perfect for the situation, and they're like, <laughs> what have you done with the real Mo? And then they all laugh, and the camera pads to the back of the tavern, and Mo is tied up, going, <laughs> 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 yeah. It's just this joke that's never. It's play off an old joke. It's 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 yeah. never addressed. This is like what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's just evil, Mo. <laughs> I just, I, there are so many good jokes with Mo. Um, like. Oh, what was the, the the one where he was doing ta the taxi driver scene? He's like, you talking to me? There's no one else here. You must be talking to me. And he pulls his gun out and smashes yeah. the mirror. He's like, well, that was an antique. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> Chat, if you haven't gathered, me and Fringy have uh, Simpsons embedded into our memory. Yeah, The Simpsons is probably... I feel like if I had to pick a favorite show that was like... I feel like comedy and drama at this point I do have to separate, but like comedy, it probably is The Simpsons. I think it's, for a long time I said South Park. 
Um, well, it gets the, the gets the accolade for both of us of formative. That's the show we were probably watching as early uh, as I remember. Absolutely, it was like the show that made me like media. I think. And it also happens to be a show that's really fucking good. I think, I think that's the interesting thing is like we've had the fortune of growing up at a time when a lot of good stuff was coming out. Um, I mean, like you look at Cartoon Network's output in the late '90s and the early 2000s. There was a lot of good stuff there, like. Um, Johnny Bravo, um, Powerpuff Girls was really good. Um, yeah. Dexter's Lab, Ed, Ed and Eddie. Yeah. I love Ed, Ed and Eddie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just some really good stuff. Um, it was a nice safe time where content was trying to make you laugh and yeah. enjoy it rather than punish you for existing. <laughs> Reliably good. Um, and Kids now next it's door. like. Uh, yeah, Codename Kids Next Door I liked a lot too. Um, bam, I will say bam, bam, it's probably bam. good that you brought it up the whole like drama and comedy are kind of just their own things because uh, I'd probably I, say my favorite yeah. show if it's just based on comedy it's old but Hogan's Heroes is Hogan's Heroes is pretty funny it's my jams I love I Hogan's Heroes it was pretty funny as well actually I always liked that show more than Bewitched Bewitched was a little too um flat i think it was too mundane and normal whereas like i dream of genie kind of embraced uh a little bit more like it was a little bit more forward i think for the time um, of the old ones i'd say hogan's heroes gilligan's island and green acres oh green sanford acres. and son was fucking hilarious yeah. was that that was based on stepford and son right the british show though Maybe I, 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 I don't know. I'm not familiar with it, but it's very. Oh, oh yeah, Tower obviously was another pretty important show too for me. Um, Which sorry, what and show? even moving up a little oh, bit, you yeah. have um like a Married with Children. See, I'm not as big of a fan of because really, like the main '90s sitcom I like is Seinfeld. Um, I often have to get into arguments with people because a lot of people think Seinfeld's stupid, and it's not. <laughs> I never saw it. The one I saw of that equivalent, I guess, would be Friends. Um, I was never a fan of Friends. I was, I've never been a fan of it, but I saw a lot of it. Like, right. I, don't, I don't even know that I would say it's bad or anything. I just, you know, it was that was the slot it filled, if if you will. Because obviously that was around at the time I was watching Buffy and Angel as well, but they don't really, they don't slot the same way as a Seinfeld or a Friends. Well, I think Seinfeld, uh, as a kid, it's easy for it to all become noise because the the episodes themselves, like, it's a show about nothing, like, that's the point. So it's really easy to lose track of, like, that, what that show is, but obviously when you watch it as an adult, it's like... Seinfeld is just really good, and I often have to get into arguments with people about trying to explain why I think that show is really funny. Um, but I haven't watched all of it, so, like, it's not, it's not super high on my list of, you know, like, favorite things ever. Yeah. Oh, everyone! Everybody loves Raymond. Oh, I watched the good. shit out of that. Yeah, I love that show. Everybody loves Raymond. And was fucking the, hilarious. his dad was like my favorite character. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Mash could be good. Mash is probably good. Um, but but I every time it. I Do feel you... like Mash made me laugh, they were ready to make me feel like shit. Do you remember um, Fringy and Community, where two of the characters are arguing over classic comedic shows from Britain and America, and? I think Abed says Mash, and then, uh... Fuck, I've forgotten his name. That's bad. The John Oliver's character. Oh, John Oliver. I can't remember his name either. Well, he says, Faulty Towers, game over. <laughs> Faulty Towers is fucking amazing, by the way. Yeah, Faulty Towers is probably one of the best comedies ever made. Um, and uh, I, I, well, yeah, I guess we gotta mention Monty Python's Flying Circus. Yeah, and I'd want to yeah. probably mention Blackadder. Blackadder is Specifically... Well. I mean, Blackadder man <laughs> yeah i think i think season two is pretty good i think season three is great i think season four is fabulous season four is fucking great black oh, adder someone is... brought it up in chat i can't believe i hadn't mentioned it before golden girls i never watched that oh it's great it. golden girls is good shit what's the premise black of golden adder. girls all i know is it's, it's old, old women chicks living together oh, okay. <laughs> and it's hilarious because they're all so different, you know. They, they, they all, they, the three of them have distinct personalities. Whoa! <laughs> I'm not know, saying that right? to make fun of you. I'm saying right? like, calm, like, calm down. Three that's women. A thing now. Three women. Who yeah, three characters. women, <laughs> each with distinct personalities, and you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's well-developed characters. It's so. Oh. 
Someone said Rags is cashing in on his gay point. <laughs> 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 of course, Rags just, likes the grandmas. Dude, that show just, was just hilarious. It was really, really... It's just funny to me that, um... A lot of these shows we're all mentioning, I'm pretty yeah. sure they all have really strong baseline characters that drive them as well. I think Blackadder Goes Forth is a good example. Like, Blackadder is this cynical, sort of, uh, dry humor, pessimist. And it reflects in a lot of, like, well, it's the, the, the way he approaches the episodes, right? Where the, he's trying to get out of doing these things that'll get him killed. Yeah, the format start, like, like solidified in Season 2 and it went forward. It's just... You have the hierarchy is he's usually underneath somebody who's stupid but of high power. Um, each of the th two, three, and four are different rulers, but they're all fucking stupid. And he's trying yeah. his best to evade, yeah, them essentially getting him killed, or the hardest jobs of that time period. And then Baldrick is like his, his, you know, underling of whatever type of the time period. And then Hugh Laurie is usually in it at some point. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And, um... Yeah, man, some of the fucking jokes in Blackadder uh, are things I'll never forget. The, uh, the, the, what was it? Oh, um, what was the, what's the, the secret plan? Should I guess that the secret plan is that we charge the enemy walking slowly? <laughs> and it's like, Blackadder, how do you know that? That's classified information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's and, the uh... same plan we did before and 17 times before that. It Exactly! And that's what's so brilliant about it! It will catch the Watchful Hunt completely off guard! Doing exactly the same thing we've done 17 times before is the last thing they'd expect this time! <laughs> and, and, and his sort of underling is called Darling, Captain Darling. Yeah, Darling. And so Captain. they're like, what do you want, Darling? <laughs> and it just fucking works every single time, it's kind of amazing. There is one small problem that we all die before we get there. Yes. <laughs> then what was it he said? Like, um, you want me to go into the middle of no man's land drawing pictures? Precisely. Good man. Well, uh, I'm afraid it will be pitch dark. I won't be able to see a thing. Hmm. Indeed, that's true. You know what? We'll send up a couple of flares. You'll be lit up <laughs> like a Christmas tree. <laughs> and, uh, what is... What is standard procedure when you uh, when you found that you stepped oh, on a mine? And he says, "Well, you uh, you launch yourself several meters into the air and separate yourself into a thousand different pieces." <laughs> like, I, just, I just love the fact that the audience it took them a second to realize how stupid the question was. <laughs> what is standard what? procedure when you step on a mine? <laughs> Yeah, there's like a five second pause on, hey, if, if we should trip on a mine, what should we do? And it's like the audience is like, wait, what the, what, wait, what? Like, what are you saying? Um, I just love the fact that, <laughs> what was it that they said? Like, um, it says mine. I guess this belongs to the guy who made the map. <laughs> do you remember, um, one of the opening jokes for a Blackout episode was Baldrick is, <laughs> is carving a, on a bullet and Blackadder is like, what are you doing? And he's like... Um, or he says, like, do, do you know what I'm up to? And, like, I think Blackout just looks at him and goes, <sighs> like, <laughs> whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be really dissatisfying. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm carving the name Baldrick into this bullet, sir. And it just pauses, and the whole audience is laughing because they already know what the joke's gonna be. And he's like, you know how they say there's a bullet with your name on it? <laughs> if I have it, then it can't shoot me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is really good. Um, I think, I think what I find so impressive about Blackout and Goes Forth is the fact that it's this insanely funny show that has a really poignant ending. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, they show that, that in a history that, class. That, they were so, like, it's such a well, sort of, it hits you really well. I think that's, I think in uh, in your TFA video, which I recently rewatched, you used that as an example of how you can blend humor and drama in the same scene. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a good example, because it's just, um... There are a lot of jokes, but as it treads on, people stop laughing, even though the jokes are really good, just because it's like, we all know what's yeah, about you, to happen. Yeah, you get a sense of reverence. You're like, man, this is a goofy show, but I appreciate the point you're making there. Yep. Someone um, mentioned it in chat. Oh. On the Andy Griffith show. So, I don't find that funny at all. I just don't think... I never got an Andy Griffith show at all. The humor of the time just does not translate well to me at all. I'm like, not familiar with it. It's weird because I love Hogan's Heroes and stuff like that, Green Acres, things of that nature, but Andy Griffith was just never, never got it. It was too, I don't know, pure? It was too, I don't know, some, some about um, it, it was just never funny. 
I haven't seen it, so I uh yeah, I don't, I I don't know. Like that. Um, I saw somebody post it in chat in my chat that was interesting. Fringy, have you ever read the TV Tropes article? Seinfeld is unfunny because it's a good description of why a lot of young people don't like Seinfeld, namely that it was formative to American sitcoms and everything has copied it since. So other people have seen the copies, so the jokes feel rehashed when they circle back to Seinfeld. That's super complicated about? because uh, that's a lot. Like yeah. people are like, oh, you should hate. Um, Resident Evil 4, and I, mean, I can't remember if it's a particular card or maybe Gears of War, but basically things that set trends that other people started doing. Oh, yeah, that's, that, I think that's the point that the article was making, that it's unfair to criticize Seinfeld oh, okay. because other things copied it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, uh, why would it be unfunny if it was really groundbreaking at the time, and then everybody else... I, I know what you mean. It's like annoying when people are like, oh, Modern Warfare 2, man, because everybody copied Pick 10, not Pick 10, but like, you know, classes and kill streaks. It's like, that's not Call of Duty's fault that everybody else copied them. Um, super unfair, I think. Mm -hmm. um, In the same way that it's unfair to judge Dark Souls for the fact that everything gets compared to it and everybody's trying to copy it. Yeah. And Mark Brown was like, the Souls genre begins. It's like, no. <laughs> There's no Souls no. genre. I mean, Souls is, like, part of the Metroidvania genre, if you're gonna... Like, if there was a broader genre that it falls into, I just... It's probably I don't even different. mean whether or not it has value for sort of determining the difference between certain things. It's just, it didn't catch on as a thing. Nobody says, right. Oh, what kind of game is this? It's like, oh, it's a Souls game. It's like, no, no one says that. Which is funny, because people say Metroidvania, and it's kind of the same thing. It's a genre based on the games that pioneered it. Well, the reality is that a lot of people just say, um it shares things with Dark Souls, and one of the key ones is when you die, your valuables are dropped on where you died, and if you don't get them back in that next life, they're gone forever. That that mechanic right. is something that a lot of things do now, and if they do it, it's like, oh, it's like Dark Souls. It's kind of unfortunate that, uh... I'm not sure I'm supposed to go. And then again, it's kind of an issue of just reviewers kind of beat it into the ground, comparing everything to Dark Souls. Yeah because they were painfully unoriginal and they needed something that was quick and, and it's not like you're paid to write it's not like that's your job and that you should be able to come up with something a little bit more clever than hey it's like dark souls like i'm, I'm gonna specifically avoid any dark souls reference well in my yeah crash um, video. do you Me remember too, i've never played dark souls there was an era for video essays where the meme is like how long until they reference dark souls it's like that's not good that that's a thing and I think even yeah. in one of my videos, when I referenced Dark Souls, I put, like, in text, obligatory Dark Souls reference or something, because... But it was relevant. <laughs> but now it's it's different. It'll be Elden Ring or whenever that's coming out. That game was announced two years ago, I think. It's still not out. Um, makes you wonder. But then again, Halo Infinite was announced in, like, 2018, and now here we are in 2020, and it's still a year away. I wonder about that game. The fact that they were so prepared to release it this year and it needed another year, that's a little irksome. Yeah, that, that makes you wonder, what was the horseshit that we would have gotten? Well, I think I think it's the whole question of if the graphics didn't look so bad, I wonder, you know what I mean? Like, I wonder... Um, if, if people they hadn't been... called out the graphics, would they have yeah, even yeah. given a shit? And no, That and says I mean, a lot about uh, gaming culture, doesn't it? I think it's an issue of the fact that, uh, that this game really needed, this was, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's on the box for, like, the Xbox Series X, and it's like, yeah, this was meant to be the launch title, because, unfortunately, Microsoft's kind of just not ready. I Everyone's saying it's 2021, yeah. Fringy. You're like, oh, Sony did it? I guess we'd better do it, too. Well, I, it's funny, because now Microsoft is, because I, funnily enough, um, that new studio they founded, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you guys are making, you guys are gonna reboot Perfect Dark, aren't you? And then they did, um, and that's what they're doing. I'm like, yeah, I, you know what? I had a feeling, I had a bit of a, I'm stuck, I can't get out. He blocked me into a... So I'm not watching a the gameplay, so that was a really odd sentence. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know why I got the hunch, but now it's like we're in a situation where, and I've said this a lot, I said it in uh, that video I made that I think we've reached a point where like Sony is like, oh, third person cinematic action adventure. That's what gets us the accolades. So we do that. Um, and that's all they do now. And now Microsoft's like, hey, we're making like first person shooters, third person shooters, action RPGs, strategy games. Um, they're making everything. 
So like Microsoft. Yeah, based on what I know, I'd much rather have an Xbox. I just I get more yeah, if I had different a games. Well, it's it's just think about like what their what their studios are. So you got three four three, which you know whether or not you like them, they are a, you know they're making first person shooters, uh, but they're also making strategy games in the form of Halo Wars. Um, and they still think, making uh, those. Well, they made Halo Wars two a couple of years ago, so I'm I'm guessing they're probably going to make another Halo Wars. Um, hmm. So you got that, and then it's like, all right, um, you got like the guys that make yeah. Forza, but you've got two different Forza games. You've got like an arcadey game in Forza Horizon, and then you've got a strat, you know, like a simulation racing game in Forza Seven or whatever, you know, the mainline Forza. And it's like, well, what does what does Sony have? They have Gran Turismo, so they only have one out of two of those things. It's like, oh, that's not so great. Um, also, they've now got Obsidian, which means that they've got RPGs. They've got That's such Bethesda, a which means they've got a lot of RPGs and a lot of IPs that are really valuable. Um, they've got they have the, guys, the only the RPGs guys. that a lot of people care about. Yeah. Because um, well, a lot of people basically. only play one RPG, and it's whatever Elder Scrolls they're playing. They've right got now. a monopoly on Western RPGs. The only other Western RPG developers, because they've got Bethesda and Obsidian, so who's left? Bioware? Larian. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah. Um, and, uh, sorry, uh, th there are other things too as well, but I'm just losing track of at the moment. They have, like, yeah, that like gear tactics as well. And, and, and this is what I mean, is, like, if you give it time, eventually they're probably going to have a really good catalogue. Like, it seems like Microsoft has spent the last few years having learned their mistakes Making from a uh, longer term decision i think so whereas i think sony has now gone and, and when you fall in game pass as well which is a really good deal um, oh yeah the like, the microsoft yeah. game pass thing is like a it's stellar incredible. deal yeah uh, like I everyone have... like look it up like it might really be something that you'll like especially, especially now that they've got bethesda it's like wow you got like all of bethesda's games holy crap yeah um that's a really good deal. And when you have all that, and all Sony's doing is like The Last of Us and stuff. Um, and of course, I'm not trying to, because I know like God of War, like I, enough people have said how good that is that I'm willing to bet that it's really good. Uh, and that's great, but what if you don't want that type of experience? It's like, oh, then I guess don't buy a PlayStation. I'm not sure how good that is. Yeah, I don't want to be are. miserable, so I guess I'll buy an Xbox. <laughs> well, I guess it's just the idea of, you know, if you like these types of games, then that's great. But if you don't... Yeah. I hope you really yeah. like them. I hope you really like them is basically the takeaway from micro uh, from Sony's, you know, platform. You know, um, <clears throat> sort of styles being infected. In the recent Humble Monthly, there's a game and there was a horror game, and I was like, ooh, wonder if it's any good. I look on the store page and then look at the gameplay, and it's like one to one the kind of shit you see in um, I don't know what you would call it, but just until dawn style where you walk, you walk, and then there's one yeah. thing to interact with, and you walk, and I was just like, oh, I, nah, I'm fine. <laughs> what game was this? I don't know what the name of it was, but the point was that like the idea that some developers have like been like, you know what, that until dawn style, that's good because no, you know, that uh, looks easy to make. Well, I think, uh, that's I think my that's cynical sort of take on it. I so feel like Quantum Dream uh, style more so than the Until Dawn one, right? Sorry, what did you say? I I would say that like Heavy Rain was probably the, the well. The one so that when that I say Until Dawn, there's a reason I choose that rather than something like Heavy Rain, and it's because Until Dawn is empty, fucking hollow. And it's funny right, because I say that about Until Dawn when Man of Medan is more hollow than that, and then Little Hope is more hollow than that. So. Whatever that is, um, it has fucking put me off that style, like, forever, pretty much. I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah, I can't be asked to deal uh, with that. Little Hope has ruined it for me. I never want to play another game like that, like, ever. Um, uh, and I guess the problem with those games is that they, because they're so mechanically shallow, they, they really lean hardcore on story. And if the story's bad, then they kind of don't have anything to offer. Well, that's the thing, man. The Little Hope story is not just bad, it's barely, ex like, anything. It's so... You just watch a couple right. people die, and then you're like, by the way, this was someone's mental illness, perceiving a bunch of people dying. Right. You're like, okay. I, oh, okay, well, that's, yeah. that's great. Even their illusions were shit. <laughs> that's what I mean. When you have the kind of power to do something like that, and that's all you came out with, it's like, okay. Yeah, try harder. Please. That'd be I, nice. I was, I was talking to someone today, in fact, about, um, like, the, someone it was got to talk about games, and I said, I think that if I was going to actually try to rank it, 
I would say that Fallout 76 is the worst game I've played. But <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah, it was it was it was enjoyable in the sense that it was so bad almost. But it's because I said it, I brought up him also with the asterisk of there's some other uh, it has to like work and be functional sort of. Yeah. And, Right. Fallout 76 was just functional enough to where you could call it a completed game in its own, as in the inception that it released in. Um, but I was saying, like, stuff like Little Hope, they they really test the definition of what a game can be, so I kind of mm -hmm. have to put it into its own category. Like It's funny, but it's thing. really, really true. That one especially, there is so little gameplay in it. And yeah, by the way, yeah, when, there are QTE when sections remove, where if you fail them or succeed them, the same thing happens. So... Oh, what's the point? Yeah. So it's just, you kind of sit there wondering, like, is this even... Is this even qualifying? That, right? You messed up in the, in the quick time events, there were usually story consequences for that. Imagine being, like, deficient in ways that heavy rain wasn't. <laughs> That's the thing, they've only gotten worse. It's like, you'd think they would have improved, but never mind. I remember when I was a kid, I, well, a kid, I was not, I was older than that, but like when I was younger, I, uh, I really liked Heavy Rain, um, I thought it was well written. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played it, so. It's not, um, uh, well, at least I like the premise of that game, um, but the writing is pretty wonky, uh, the dialogue's not good, because oh David Cage is a very good dialogue writer, I mean, have you seen, like, Detroit Become Human? That game is about as subtle as a fucking car crash. Yeah, into about a brick to the head, yeah. yeah. Hey, AI, the robots are people, and it's like, yeah, they're obviously people. They're free-thinking agents, of course they're people. Yeah, this... like, you can't, you can't do this. You have to make it more questionable for it to mean well, anything. Think... You have to do a, you have to yeah. do measure of a man stuff, like in Star Trek. You can't, you can't. Yeah. Or the Blade yeah. Runner thing, you know, so... where it's... Yeah. I don't know, I think, I think, um, that game kind of, it's just, you know, like, it thinks that it has a lot to say, but unfortunately, I guess the problem is, like, I feel like a much more interesting conversation about AI and whether or not it's intelligent is, like, what type of intelligence is it? Um, because it's probably going to be different from us in, uh, in ways that are appreciable. And if not, it's worth exploring why that may be. Like, if, like, if AI behaves like a, like a person, is that because we made it? Like, is the reason why AI thinks in the same way that we do because we invented it? Um, you know, in the same way that, like, a lot of religions say, like, oh, well, you know, we're, like, you know, God made us in his image. It's like, okay, well, then maybe we make AI in our image. That might be interesting. But, um, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't, I mean, we, we wouldn't make something that's totally foreign and ununderstandable and incomprehensible to ourselves. Like oh, we well, I, I think it's more fundamental than that. The, the way that we would approach creating AI is probably just going to invariably lead to it thinking like us in certain ways. Or if not, that might be worth exploring as opposed to, no, they're just people. Um, I just, I think that's boring. And also, making that robots look like human beings makes it a lot harder as well. Like, if the robots... It's, it, it's kind of like what that movie Chappie was supposed to be, right? Where it's like a robot that it looks like a robot, but it emotes like a human. That's more interesting to me than, uh, than a strictly human being. And yeah. I say this is something that really likes Blade Runner. And in that, they're people. But Blade Runner has a lot more going for it as well. That Detroit Become Human doesn't even come close to achieving. So, back to Simpsons. <laughs> yep. The, uh, the other question was, um, where does South Park sit in comparison to Simpsons, Futurama, Family Guy, American Dad, sort of thing? Uh, well, like I said earlier, I think I usually ranked fa uh, South Park at the top, but I think um, it's kind of changed a little <laughs> bit where, like, it's South a little Park hard. Sits... Do we consider... Well, because, again, what era? Do we consider all of it? You know what I mean? Yeah, because um, if you consider all of South Park, I think South Park has been a lot more consistently funny. Um, like Probably. South Park is still South Park was funny for a lot more than ten years. Yeah, but so was the Simpsons. Um, Simpsons was funny past the Golden Age. Uh, 
I don't know if if because if, if we were just saying like, do you think that the first ten seasons of The Simpsons is better than South Park? It's like probably yeah, but do you think South Park as a whole is stronger than The Simpsons? Probably, um, if you take it all together. Yeah, uh, and I think I also appreciate a lot what South Park has to say about the world and about the way that people behave, like in terms of its commentary. Uh, I'm quite a fan. Um. I don't know, but as for where it sits next to, like, Futurama, Futurama sits quite highly on my list. Um, so does Archer. Archer is pretty high up on my list, too. Um, <clears throat> but, like, eyeballing it, I'd probably go... Number one really is a, a tie between Simpsons and South Park. It is tough to choose between them. And, um, <laughs> if we're talking just your favorite sort of stuff and era, it's just like, okay, Simpsons is gonna win out, then South Park, then, uh... If the other selection includes Futurama, Family Guy, American Dad, it would be next is Futurama, then American Dad, then Family Guy. I haven't watched enough of uh, American Dad, I think. I just, I don't know enough about it. Lots of good memories from American Dad. Always That's felt stronger. American Dad was secretly the better show. <laughs> That's, That's what, what I, I heard. I don't hear much pushback on that, honestly. Like, I don't really know many people who are like, oh, I'm, I'm a super avid Family Guy oh. fan, you know? I guess it's because fam Family Guy was more popular, um, whereas American Dad kind of flew under the radar a little bit. I think a lot of people, especially when they were young, they kind of like only watched Family Guy, and so yeah, they thought it was like was more me. amazing than it actually was. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's the problem of like, and it's, you know, South Park talked about it in the Cartoon Wars episode, like, Family Guy's pretty lazily written. Um, it's just... Hey, this this is a funny gag. Whereas in like a good show, you actually it's not just about coming up with gags. It's about writing a joke that fits into the story you're telling, character based. I mean, goddamn, like Eric just said it outright. Don't compare me to Family Guy. When I make jokes, they're inherent to the story, deep, situational, emotionally nuanced. Well, yeah, that was and not just one tangible joke. It was obviously very deliberate of them <laughs> when, when well, he says I that. Mean, if you look behind the scenes commentary they're like yeah we, we we don't respect family guy like we we think they don't work very hard um it's just a bunch of it's gags. so many it's of the gags. jokes are just non sequiturs randomly appearing well and they they hurt the flow of the story because every time that something's happening somebody will be like this is like the time something happened and then it's like oh all right this will be funny but it will have nothing to do with anything. Because I think, I think that's the hard part when you talk about what's wrong with Family Guy. It's like, but these cutaways are funny. It's like, yeah, a lot of them are funny, but this is really easy to do. I, I don't think people real. It's not as it's not as easy as just what Bojack does, where it's just puns. Puns are easier than what Family Guy does. Um, <laughs> imagine that Damn. one saying Family Guy got better comedy writing than uh, Bojack. I've, well, Family Guy has made me laugh, so... Yes, <laughs> and Bojack doesn't. <laughs> so even if it's dumb and it's detrimental to the stories they're telling and it's really cheap, it still has produced laughs. Yes. Um, like, I mean, the, the, I really like that joke where, um, yeah, somebody put it in chat, remember the time? It's like, yeah, that's, that's... You think that's bad? Remember that time I, you know, and then there's your joke. That's the format. And, you know, I, I guess that's why I think I like Robot Chicken more than Family Guy, because, like, Robot Chicken cuts out the pretense. Like, that's what Robot Chicken is. It's loose jokes. Um, yeah, it's like a variety show in a way. Well, it's a sketch show, and I think yeah, um, it's different yeah. because that show is like, yeah, that's what we do. We just make sketch jokes. Um... So, yeah, that's probably the ordering, then. <clears throat> Um, but do, if if Bojack was thrown into that, does it actually sit at the bottom for comedy value? Is that what you're saying, Fringy? Is uh, that what you're saying? Comedy, it's bottom, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I think so too. <laughs> so Fringy is getting dangerously close to triggering Rags. How? How? By what? <laughs> what do you mean? Did, Rags, are you a big fan of Family Guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's uh, it's just it has made me laugh. Yeah, I've that's been... all Wait, I did... said. With Family Guy, maybe, has made me laugh. Maybe they interpreted that as you being like, "Fringy, it makes me laugh." No, yeah. well, Patrick I mean, Willem has I, made I, me I, laugh. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. But, but I mean, I guess it's worth clarifying. Like, I do find Family Guy to be funny. Yeah, least, I don't find it so funny anymore. But there yeah. are a lot of ways it made me laugh <clears> a lot. I watched a whole bunch of it. There must have been a reason. <laughs> like, it definitely. Yeah, I, I, 
Um, I mean, it, God, it seems like fast food like, comedy in a kind of way. Yeah. That's a analogy. Really easy to get into. Um, and of course, when you're like the perfect demographic for it, when it was at its prime, you know, like I was the perfect demographic for that show. Um, edgy teenager who, uh, and especially when The Simpsons were starting to really like not be so funny anymore when that show came mm -hmm. around, I think it only makes sense the family guy kind of took off. Yeah, I honestly remember it being portrayed as like, this is adult Simpsons. It's like, yeah. all right. But really, The Simpsons was adult Simpsons. <laughs> well, I guess there's a difference between like child friendly, adult friendly, and then immature, mature, right? Yeah, of course. Because <clears throat> Family Guy definitely, uh, you know, would have been rated higher than Simpsons in terms of age rating, I guess. Yeah, of course. Um, I feel like I had something there, and it was important, and now it's gone forever. Damn. Uh, what about, um,. What is, what is Bob's Burgers? Have any of you, have you just seen Bob's Burgers? I have not seen it. I have not seen it either. Because I like that show, but I haven't seen it. At, uh, I've seen maybe half of, well, actually less than half. That show's been on for like 10 years. It's been about three or four seasons, and I liked it. Um, but I'm not sure where it would, uh, where it would sit uh, on that list. Do you ever watch Adventure Time? I, yeah, no, I, I own the first it. four seasons, and I've only watched half of them, so that was a good investment. <laughs> I'm like, that, that's one of those low-key, I'm a super fan of it. It's uh, I, I Oh, someone it. said Bojack was worse because it's just puns. It's like, yeah, but my puns are good. It's not oh, just, yeah, oh, yeah, what like a, a bunch of, you guys also, are acting like a bunch of vultures, and then it pans over and there's vultures standing yeah, there. Like, that's not... Rags isn't a TV show, and it's not all he does. There, there, there are obvious also, variables here. Also, my puns are good, Mahler. You forgot, the, <laughs> you forgot that part. Well, no, you, you did that part. There's, yeah. I'm trying to add to your defenses. I wanted to hear it. I, I wanted to hear my own opinions in someone else's voice. Wait, are you... Rags is getting angry at me for not dis, for not agreeing? That puns... It's that, double that time. If you can Double make a pun that makes me laugh off the cuff, that's worth a lot more than a pun you wrote and then went through redraft and then rewrote. Like, a pun that you just come up with off the top of your head is worth more to me than a pun that was written. Of course it is, because improv is harder. <clears throat> what are the guys that are chasing you in this area, Mola? To be honest with you, man, I'm, I'm looking for where I'm even supposed to go, and I just end up getting killed, and then desperately looking for where I die to pick up my stuff, and then lose it again. Like, I'm right. I'm in purgatory right now. I'm more invested in the conversation than I am in the game. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which... Um... Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I was gonna. Say, I'm I'm knocking off super chats, and I was like, oh yeah, that the the last criticism of Resident Evil Four from that other one I was mentioning was aim controls independent from camera movement make the game practically unplayable for me. Oh, that's, that's really odd to me that that would make it unplayable. I would just like unplayable as like with this game, <laughs> as with lots of uh, systems, you would afford the developer the idea of, like, clearly they've set it up this way and the game is going to reflect it. Mm -hmm. As in... Design. Yeah, if I was to be able to move and shoot at the same time, Resident Evil 4 becomes a hell of a lot easier if you can do that. You'd um, probably have to... Yeah, it, it would become a lot easier. You would you need to change primarily the way that enemies behave. Because the way that enemies behave at Resident Evil, it takes into account the fact you have to either be moving or shooting. But if you can do mm -hmm. both, enemies have to be, for starters, sped up significantly. Yeah. Um, because you are going to be doing a lot of backpedaling and shooting, and that's going to have to be accounted for by the, uh, by the enemies in the game. Mm -hmm. Probably some map redesigns that take into account, you know, the fact that you can have this, you know, that much more mobility. Was part of the Halo conversation, right? The maps were designed in the old games without sprints because they knew how fast you could go. And when you have to add sprint, you have to make the map bigger to accommodate it. Yeah, which is good when everyone has sprint, but when sprint is something you can selectively choose, you are right, playing with sprint on a map that is designed for people who do not have sprint. 
So you have a huge advantage in what that gives you, because movement speed is just such an inherently big advantage. Yeah, you can move fast, goddamn. So yeah, that was the failing of reach. If, if yeah, it was, it was like, oh, they added sprint. People often say, oh, it was just that they added sprint to Halo. It was like, no, it wasn't that they added sprint to Halo. It's not that simple. It's that you have to design maps for the lowest common speed. Like all of, like, here it comes again. All of the jumping puzzles in Guild Wars 2 are completable with the base movement speed. Even though there's classes that can give themselves faster movement, either passively or through abilities, if you're a class who doesn't have those abilities, you have to be able to complete the content. So all of the jumping puzzles are designed with yeah, that in mind. Yeah, I'd say that uh, if you if you overlook that, the game is kind of like broken um, in a major way. I think if like because you pick the wrong class, it's impossible to pass certain sections of the game that are meant to be done by everybody. Like that would be yeah. such a massive oversight that it would actually be kind of insane for that to happen. Exactly, and a lot of game. I bet a lot more games than we think of are designed that. Yeah. You have to design it to where it's completable. Yep. Um, so rag sprint changes the gameplay design of a stage. It does. Um, I mean, I would, I would agree with that. I, I wouldn't think, word um, it like that, but sort it's a of. Weird way yeah. Of it, but I understand yeah. what you, you're saying when you say that because it's the whole idea that um, in Halo. One, two, and three. You know exactly how fast people are moving, and that's like a part of the way that you play the game. And nobody can ever move faster or slower than they are when you see them. Whereas with sprints, that changes things because there are two modes of speed instead of one. That you have to keep into account. Keep if, into yeah, account. Yeah, if you give, <laughs> yeah, if giving people the ability to sprint significantly increase their movement speed and all of the benefits that come along with that really big deal considering yep. the maps are not designed for people with sprint they have to be designed with all right so what if you don't pick sprint well the map still has to be viable to you mm -hmm. fucking a hundred thousand echoes are in this area you better give them up yeah oh fuck hundred thousand echoes wow <clears throat> yeah which is why i'm actually kind of this is a bit tense honestly oh, oh boy because these guys can kill me pretty fast. Someone said the that boar was actually good enemy design because it anticipated that you thought it was going to charge, but instead it attacked with a sweep attack. So nothing in what you said was good game design. <laughs> um, if they're talking about what happened with me, it's just a boar. The boar is capable of several moves. I am aware of those several moves. I didn't account for one because I just forgot temporarily. Like, I'm I was sure expecting it to charge yeah. when I should have accounted for the fact that it can charge or sweep, and I just didn't, and so it hit me. Like, I don't think that's yeah. clever. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. How, how they describe it based just from that comment, that sounds like the opposite of the thing they said. Because so when you totally see a boar in the game, and your human brain is like, oh, it's a boar, it's going to charge me. That's why they had this enemy look like a boar, to give it boar-like characteristics, and because it looks like a boar, I can piece together logically what it might do. But the enemy thought that you would make that extremely logical deduction, and so it did something completely randomly different instead. It's like, oh, that, yeah, that's dumb then. Bitcoin is worth over 30,000 US dollars now. It's going on oh, with wow. the high, huh? It's uh, we're tripled in value last year. Oh my God. And in the last two Damn. days, it's gone up about Dude. 12%. Fring, yeah. do you ever take issue with how sensitive the fucking triggers are on PS4? Well, uh, I have a, I've, I mean, let me tell you a story about these stupid triggers on this stupid controller. I've, uh, I've broken the R2 trigger, like, I'm pretty sure two or three times on my con, on my controller well, just yeah. from breaking the play. And I've had to purchase a new one because of it. So, um, I kind of hate this controller. I think the Xbox controller's a lot better. Um, and I'm not surprised that sense controller basically just looks like that because the Xbox 360 controller was like the end that like that is the best you can do. Um, um it's just for me you'll randomly see my gameplay I'm just shooting the gun at certain points and I'm like yeah it's because even if you touch the fucking L2 even a hair it's like oh you want to fire the gun okay boom like no yeah. no 
Um, really is a hair trigger. I'm thinking here's... of joining Bitcoin. Well, I'm not going to give you any advice, by the way. <laughs> I'm like, I was about to say something like it's, but no, I'm not offering any financial advice. <laughs> uh, someone asked a pair, or two people asked a pair of questions. Um, uh, Rags, besides Sprint, what about going prone in Halo? How much does that, or, or how about going prone? How much does that change the gameplay? Um, hardly prone. have I ever seen prone used in a way where it would ever change gameplay. Because prone is almost always in video games the wrong thing to do. And the reason for this is because unlike in the real world where proning is extremely useful, in the real world it's difficult to hit things. In a video game, you always have pinpoint precision in the center of your screen on that reticle or dot it presents to you, right. which kind of negates the whole point or a great deal of the point of proning. In the real world, it's meant to make yourself a smaller target or to make yourself much di more difficult to see. With video games, um, it's often harder to remain unseen because of just how graphics are rendered and displayed on the screen and things of that nature and how the how things are rendered with other things and you have less control over what your appearance is and what you do to your environment. And again, it's also yeah. because... If someone drones, they're basically a free kill. Yeah, because they, they can't move as fast. yeah they can't move as fast. They're basically stationary, and in video games, you are hyper accurate compared to what you are in real life. Like hyper accurate to real life comparisons. So yeah, it's just basically a free target. You heard it here first, people. Don't prone. All right. Yeah, in video game. Yeah, proning in video games, having it be a good thing is often a rare. Like, rule of thumb, it's never a good idea, generally. Um, but there are some times in games where proning can be super useful. Um, like, it, it makes a lot of sense contextually when you're in a single-player game or in co-op when you're hiding from enemies and stuff like that. But computers don't have to be programmed to see, to mimic the way that an actual person would see. So, that's the thing. There, there's a different... Like, the tactics used in video games and the tactics used in the real world are often different because the mechanics and you know in video games are set it's set to be a game and to be consistent and fun and so as a result yeah. that changes the behavior of people so but if you can instantly go prone you have an advantage for a second if someone is logically aiming for your head sure but generally people don't aim for the head Center also, of the, the loss that like generally if, if you like round a corner with someone else and a lot of this compares to like time to kill and stuff like that. But generally, going prone and shooting is a worse idea because the time it takes for you to prone and adjust your aim as a result, you're, you're not going to have an advantage over someone who's shooting and aiming that whole time at you, watching you do these things. Right. I saw people in chat like, oh, talk about crypto. Um, no, I don't know enough about cryptocurrency to talk about it, all right? <laughs> like, I'm not it's on the game, Rex. Not every game gives you pinpoint accuracy. Okay, 98.6% of them give you pinpoint accuracy. Yeah, I mean, unless we're talking In fact, about, like, I have so. to think about one that doesn't give you precise accuracy. And they're and not going to be high rated, probably, <laughs> for that reason. Yeah, probably. um... Yeah, in video Why games, when I just can't tell what the fuck I'm pointing at, it's really fucking annoying. And people find it very annoying, and those games become very niche. Oh, you're being serious. <laughs> Sorry, what? this is so insane. In chat, they're like, buy Dogecoin. I laughed at them, and they said they made money off of it. It's like, oh, okay. Max has never played Ghost like Recon. I have. You have really, really good accuracy in those games. I've played them. You have your character in Ghost Recon is way more accurate than anything you could be. Oh, it's almost at Counter Strike, guys. You know the difference between being able to shoot people without aiming down the sights, and then the difference is you can't aim down the sights at all. Rag is referring to games that don't allow you to have pinpoint accuracy. You can in Counter Strike. Uh, help me out. Also, here, you are going to be way more accurate in Counter Strike than you will be in real life. Help me out here, Mola. When a weapon is at risk, what does that mean? That's a great question because I have no idea. At risk? Oh. I'm assuming it's at yeah, risk of being that. broken, but I don't. I've not had that. What? A thing pop up that says weapon at risk? 
Yeah, I mean... You sure? Because I've only been, I've been playing this game for like way less time than you and it's already popped up for me. Hey chat. Help me out, chat. I'm when does that somewhere. even happen and how come I've never seen it or have I seen it and ignored it? Because I don't... If you'd ask me weapon breakage in Bloodborne, oh, I'd be like... Maybe it's because yeah, I've been same. upgrading them before they break? I don't fucking know. How do you upgrade them? Uh, well, if you go to, um, the main... Room? Yeah, yeah, and then to the right of German or German's left, I guess. Uh, you just go up to there, and I think you can repair oh, yeah. and fortify, okay. so... Okay, I'll do that. Um, thanks, chat. Uh... I feel like cryptocurrency is a really com complex and confusing space, and it's especially made harder by the fact that it's such a new thing that, as opposed to, like, gold, where people kind of understand how that works in, you know, times of, like, massive, uh... Oh, I, can I need tell. blood echoes. Okay. Someone in chat's like, I can tell you haven't played Planet Side 2. Headshots are the difference between winning a 1v1. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't mention that one fucking obscure game. <laughs> I mean, yeah, hang on, is. though. But, like, assuming whatever their logic you is... Because, never... um, you can get... The headshot could decide you're winning COD. That doesn't mean that, like... That doesn't disprove anything you've said. That's, like, dumb. Yeah, it's like, all, almost all game... Oh, yeah, what about Counter-Strike Pros? Is... Uh, some games are built purely around headshots, but the vast majority of games... Are not. It is, you, you shoot people in the body. And some the games encourage will hit the noob to. Well, I guess in Halo, Mind. like you're encouraged to shoot people in the head. Of, like, yeah, it you depends. Have a battle rifle. Like battle even rifle. with the battle rifle, only the last shots have to be in the head. Uh, yeah, but if you shoot, oh right, because the shield. Same thing with yeah. DMR. It's like it shields. Like the only the last shot has to be in the head. If you're trying to hit the head all the time, you're gonna lose because you'll miss a lot. You mm -hmm. you hit him in the chest four times, and then the last shot has to be the head. Apparently, Elon Musk tweeted about Dogecoin, so that's why it went up in value. Wow. So if you follow Elon Musk on Twitter, just whatever he tweets out, just buy it and then sell it like a day later, I guess. <laughs> when everybody Imagine starts realizing maybe you're just taking advice from Elon Musk on stocks. Is crazy like levels like of influence, good. man. Well, I mean, he, he tweeted out once, hey, Tesla stock's too high, and it crashed. <laughs> that's just really funny to me. <laughs> Uh, but he's not tweeting it now, even though it is really high. Is this going to be the edgy take that Tesla is overvalued at the moment? Because I think it is. Like, goddamn, that thing is worth like, it's, it's like PE ratio is like seventy or something. It's kind of, it's kind of insane how expensive that that uh that stock is. Didn't he get in trouble for that? Yeah, of course he did. Because like, if you're the, if you're the head of a company and you tweet out something that reduces your stock value, of course you're going to get in trouble for that. You have obligations to your shareholders. Cool chat said, I remember the first time I tried to shoot with a real target with a real gun at Sad. Felt like I was shooting blanks, I was so bad. Yeah, like that's a skill you have to learn and hone. Depending on what you're shooting, how far away it is, and what... It's a lot of variables, but yeah, it's really fucking tough. Like, it's a difficult thing to do. That's why people practice all the time with it. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Practice. I watch so many movies where, like, they don't even miss. Yeah, it bugs me. It really does. Especially in, like, Star Wars and stuff where everyone's hip-firing pistols at targets yeah, that are 30 meters away and they just blast it and I'm like, yeah, fuck off. And if ever that happens, it should be special. It shouldn't be... Everyone can do that. People miss occasionally. That's all it takes. Just have them miss a few shots every now yeah, and Yeah, just then. have them, like, aim. Like, that'd be a start. Just have a character just aiming at a target and shooting, you know, four or five times just to kind of make sure, and, like, one or two of them might hit, you know, something like yeah. that. Or they can't just flip around and instantly hit fire a target. Or something, it's like... You, you expect it from Mando especially because of his training to where he's always... Like, he's got the gun. He, he should walk a certain way, hold his weapon, and handle his weapons a certain way. He should shoot a certain way, and but you just don't. He's just like every other fucking asshole in Star Wars with how they do everything. There's no difference between anybody. Well, depends if they're good guys or bad guys, right? Um, yes, the like kind of uh, until, with the exception of the actual shooting, like hitting the target part, which is purely arbitrary based on plot. 
Not really. Oh, I guess you're saying it's not about good or bad, it's about whether the plot's decided someone's about to die. Well, I mean, it's like, the way that Mando carries himself in combat and with weapons is, to my memory, indistinguishable from everybody else with weapons. When you, but like, take John Wick, right? When John Wick, even in 2 and 3, just the way that he handles his weapons and moves with them is agree with that. clearly a well-practiced, very skilled person who knows what they're doing. But people don't do that in Star Wars, and it's fucking kind of lame. Dude, it's There's a movie no... about space wizards. Can you chill out? Jeez. Yeah. Right. It'd be yeah. nice if skill was something that, like, could be learned, and not just plot dependent. Yeah, you the main character, you're skilled now, alright? Yeah, you're works. just good. It's fine. Like, the, that's why the accountant gets all kills on stormtroopers. The person who's probably never held a gun in his life. He's an accountant. They bring him along. He's in a firefight. He's got a pistol. And he's getting stormtrooper kills. And like, As people point out, stormtroopers don't miss when your arm is made out of Beskar. Then they get... Yeah, they're hyper-fucking <laughs> yeah, accurate. True. And, I, and I like it. It's like, oh, he won that... He won that uh, standoff with Michael Bede. It's like, did anyone think he wouldn't? Did anyone actually... Of course he would. I would love to ask... The person who was tense in that moment, I'd be like, what do you think he's gonna do? Shoot him in his... Like, between the armor gaps? What have we ever seen that happen before? Ever. Yeah, I don't know. And if so, isn't that the end? Like, he's dead. Well, hence, so guess... if they argued that, they'd be like, that's why I'm tense right now. I don't want Mando to die. I'd be like, wow, I'm... Mando, the character of Mandalorian, is gonna die. I mean, I wouldn't even argue that. I just, like, have you seen what he survived so far? I'm surprised that you're, uh, you're worried about him. That's the yeah. thing. His, the in, any injury he sustains, like the first season, the only meaningful injury he sustains makes absolutely zero sense, and it's only to have some plot drama. Well, it's That's to the only yeah. square off right. an arc of, I don't like droids, now I do. Alright. Also, Mando the arc of, no... you haven't seen his face, and now you have. That's it. Someone said, Mando, someone said, Mando has no training. Rags, have you watched the show? That's not what you well, said. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, because it's implied that he has a shit ton of training. Well, that's and he... he he has the results selectively he has the results of someone who's had a lot of training without putting any of the work in. We don't see any of it being executed. I don't know how anyone could miss what you were saying when you mentioned John Wick. John Wick's movements, his how he moves around yeah. corners, how he reloads and actives like and reloads, just his guns. Yeah, yeah like there's so much effort in there. Checks the bullet is in the chamber. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, Mando it's... is Mando walks up to Fennec when she's getting attacked by Tisms, and he's just like. Okay, let's move forward. I'm pretty sure he says let's let's move or something like that. It, it, and it's just like you don't do it. You, you're just standing there and you're just shooting randomly. It's, there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, he's he's just if if you just replaced all the characters in Mand the Mandalorian with with nondescript silhouettes, he doesn't behave differently to anybody else, despite his supposed incredible training. Is his firearms and apparently also melee weapons expertise. Like, the way he twirls that fucking stupid spear around, because mm -hmm. that's what you teach warriors in the future to do, is how to spear fight. Well, yeah. It's like, it's, it's choreographed and everything, but you see him with a gun and he's just... Points just it. shooting like yeah. kind of normal. Just, just shooting like, kind of uh, normal, just yeah. like everyone else is, except his just happened to hit all the time. Ooh, that's... Rags, Rags, do you only see comments that disagree or disparage you? Yeah. What, what is Rags supposed to do? Highlight no. every single comment that agrees with him and say, I agree, I agree. The yeah, fuck? Yeah, this person's <laughs> right, this person's right. Well, Someone said, Rags, uh, Keanu did a lot of actual tactical training before the John Wick movies. That's correct, he did a lot of, like, free gun competitions and a lot of stuff like that, yeah. So he knows his way around firearms, absolutely. He put in the work for that role, he knows a lot about them. And it shows. It, it really does legit show. There was an, yeah. there's definitely a, a, you, you can see the result of the work. In Mando, it's just some Hollywood actor who doesn't know anything about anything, who's just, just he's just got a gun, I guess. He's, he's just, you know. Points to the bad guys, go shoot, shoot, shoot. It just, it'd be nice to see, like, the stormtroopers, they act like, I, they act like just like the rebels do. And the rebels act just like stormtroopers, and every random thug acts just like every stormtrooper, and every, da, da, they all act the exact same. 
because none of them have actual training and actual proficiency and they haven't been directed to actually show it because all of their amazing feats of skill, they're just added in post when they CGI the blaster shot hitting the target. Yeah. And that's it. With that's all it down to. Yeah. Rags call me a bigot sandwich. Believe me, Rags. What are you, a bigot sandwich? Bigot sandwich. Uh, does the existence of non-hyperspace FTL travel in the Empire when the Falcon goes to best and make Mando Season 2 Episode 2 better? I, what do you mean? Are they talking about when they move from attaching to the Star Destroyer to Bespin? I guess. I guess this yeah. is the, yeah, this is, this is non-hyperspace faster than light travel. Which I can believe, I just, it, it isn't intuitive. Also, they call it, is do they call fine. it sublight in the OT? Because I don't think they do. And that's if key. they call it sublight, that's a dumb thing to call it. Yeah. Yeah, because sublight is not that fast. Sub, yeah. Light is not fast enough. It, well, <laughs> so, no, I mean, that was the issue with Captain Marvel. They're like, oh, light speed engine. It's like, oh, this isn't, you've got ships that can go faster than the speed of light. So what, what good is this? Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go to Beetlejuice. It'll take 600 years yeah. if you're traveling the speed of light. God, that movie doesn't understand. Why? How come she can breathe in space? Because she's super. I mean, with all the other stuff she can do, they the just assume you'd accept done. that. It's fine. The girls do get it good. I remember seeing a comment where somebody said, Oh, Captain Marvel is underpowered in the movie. She could move planets in the comics. It's like, you guys, well, <laughs> you gotta you gotta stop doing this. Like, oh, in the comics, they can, do, they can move planets or, like, rewind time by flying around Earth. It's like, oh, stop it, please. You are not helping yourself. Oh, this fight's intense. I like this one. The just shadows of Yarn. I haven't beaten these bosses, but I don't recognize a lot of this content. I'm really Rags, why aren't you Damn, close. Who already the I do like um, the idea that you could be just pointing out comments that agree with you and saying, yes, 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 yes. I agree, okay. yes. Someone said the weapons that have zero kickback because it's energy based which doesn't actually mean anything. Uh, and Rags is made and it doesn't show. The series that's famous for hundreds of blaster shots going through the screen, they too accurate. Okay, so like, you still have to aim it, right? So the recoil doesn't actually have anything to do with the accuracy. Like these are two different things. You could have a gun that has incredible recoil and is very, very accurate, right? And the recoil doesn't like affect the accuracy of that shot. These are they're, they're two different things, right? So even if you didn't have, even if you had a gun that had zero recoil, which, good luck with that. You're going to have to come up with some mechanism that negates the energy of, because remember, we have like laws and things where if a lot of energy comes out of side A, then the back is going to have energy going the other. It's like every op action, there's an equal opposite reaction. So if you're going to have a recoilless weapon firing, there's got to be some mechanism that negates that. Do I think yeah. Star Wars weapons have that? Maybe. No. It's just because it's added in post. Um, right. But let's assume that these guns, all of these guns, there's zero recoil to all of the shots. You still have to know how to aim these things. You still have to line up your sights. You still have to put the dot on the target. You still have to know your your, your your drop because matter is affected by gravity so a blaster bolt will fall with gravity as well um and so so the recoil doesn't mean anything um to to the ability for them to be super super duper accurate so i don't really know what the point of that is uh, have we have we been shown that the blasters have recoil? Ah, oh, good job. Uh, have we been shown that the blasters have recoil in Star Wars before? Like in in A New Hope, I'm sure I saw Luke like flick his hand up when he fired a shot. God, it's fucking. Yeah, there, there's there is an inconsistency. Um, yeah, I I think that an energy weapon would have recoil, uh, because you know it's energy coming out of the muzzle. That energy 
like creates force, which is going to be force. directed yep. in different directions. Like you know, it, it's a big deal learning how to mitigate just the, whether or not it's it is. It, and also, that laser has mass. I yeah, mean, light has mass. Light, there has to be up. something. Yeah, there, exactly. There there has to be something that actually impacts the target. It's not just hot that hits the target, right? It's not the concept of heat that hits a target and like melts it or whatever. There has to be something physically there to do it. There has uh, to be some kind if... of energy or, or condensed gas or something. Like, they're called bolts. It's probably just super compressed gas. Well, here's a question that I got to ask. What if it's a rail gun? I'm not sure what difference that would make. I, like, what is a rail gun? Uh, exactly. uh, rail gun pretty much sure. just, it, it, it yeah, a railgun is like it well, takes. I mean, a bunch I know of... what it is in like science fiction. It's like zoop zoop zoop, and then you fire. Same thing out, it like, is in real bullet. life. Yeah, yeah, I figured it would be. Yeah, let me get the proper. But railguns have force, like, and a lot of. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, the, except railguns are often like bolted down to the ground as well. Yeah, because we we do not have the technology to have railguns you can just run around with and shoot people. Yeah, with. they're not. Yeah, they're not very, they're not practical to put in a handheld form. Oh, somebody um, said, okay, so a railgun fires a magnetically accelerated projectile, it's just a slug of metal. Oh, so, correct. okay, so yes. It's just a, it's it's a piece of tungsten or something. It's it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a thick boy. It's a, it's a dense oh, boy is right. what it shoots. Okay. So it's, it's, it's like a normal gun then. It doesn't fire like some magic thing that doesn't exist like a... Yeah, so okay. generally it's like tungsten armor piercing bullets. Right. So they're. Yeah, the. Uh, and I, I know in science fiction and stuff, uh, and even, yep. believe it or not, there was a. In real life during the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union had a, had a treaty that they made. I forget the name of it. But it was basically that they wouldn't drop things on each other from outer space. Right. I think I'm trying. Uh, that ain't you fair, you know. Yeah, it's like because you could drop a. I think this was actually in like Call of Duty Ghosts, where you just have these big metal rods. Not to be that big. Just a metal rod, and you just drop it from space. And by the time it hits the ground, it has like a nuclear gun. capabilities yeah. without the radiation. Because it's just the sheer energy generated from a massive object yeah. hitting. Like, um, but a magnetic slingshot is, yeah, it's sort of a good way to say it. Yeah, it's like a, a, a straight slingshot, yeah. Where a series of magnetically charged coils will progressively speed up an object to ridiculously high speeds so that just an object hits something else and does a lot of damage. Yeah. It like simulates an explosive payload without actually having one. Right. Huh. That second attempt on the boss went way better than the first. But yeah, I, I do. With, I would think that in the real world, if we had an energy weapon, which I don't think we would ever give up projectiles. I feel like projectiles are just too, you know. They're like, too really easy. good. They're, They're neat. Useful. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, it's basically just the same premise as stabbing somebody, but you're shooting stabby things at them. And, like, stabbing things is what we've always kind of done with weapons, you know? Yeah, just the, put a hole in something. That's the it. only reason that you would ever use energy weapons is because you would, you would have to be shooting at something that a projectile couldn't defeat. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you're making things a lot harder when it's energy weapons as opposed to a metal object being flung. We're really good yeah, at that. you'd have to, you'd have to find a way to be able to. I just don't see it being a thing. Like it's fun in space and sci-fi and stuff, but I just don't ever see it see it really being a thing. Like a ray gun being a thing. Yeah. You know what would make yeah. it a thing is people being like, "Oh my god, it's like Star Wars." Yeah. <laughs> like that's and then why. You, then you stop and think for two seconds, and you're like, "Okay, so Jedi would never be able to stop a shotgun." Or just bullets. Like, okay, so Jedi are done. They couldn't do that because Jedi basically rely on blaster bolts being. Yeah, didn't we? did we talk about once? Like, assuming it doesn't vaporize it, if a bullet went through a lightsaber, and melted and splashed molten metal onto their face as a result. Like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, that's Jesus definitely what would happen. Absolutely. Yeah, the 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 remnants of that bullet they gotta go somewhere. 
And even in Wonder Woman, uh, when she's blocking oh, the, yeah. the, in the, the, the first the, Wonder uh, Woman, she goes up over the... Writing, you know? Yeah, they, they make sure to show the slow-mo of her blocking that bolt, that first bullet that hits her bracers in, in the first movie when she goes over the trench, and how it mm -hmm. shatters into all of these pieces. It's shrapnel, it turns into shrapnel, and it goes away on the just to her side. And I'm like, yeah, so every bullet hitting her is going to be dispersed and broken up into pieces of shrapnel that will continue to travel backwards because her bracers are curved, which means every time she blocks a bullet in front of her with her bracers, she's going to get pelted by... Yeah, but the problem is that the films can't bullet. decide if she's impervious to bullets or not, because even when she's losing her powers in 84, the bullets hit her in the chest and don't kill her. Like, you literally see a hole in her chest. I still like, believe, man, that... Hit. The original intention when she is shot and wounded from Trevor is supposed to be like, Oh my god, she's just been wounded by a bullet. This is serious. When that has already happened and they forgot. Yeah. Like, that happened regardless of her powers. Well, I, I guess it's a problem of, like, in, in the Marvel movies, Thor is impervious to bullets. We, we see it. We have evidence of it happening. Obviously, he doesn't want to get hit by bullets, but still, it doesn't matter. And, like, Superman is impervious to bullets as well. Wonder Woman's a lot more inconsistent. She's kind of really fast, but also kind of not. Um, <laughs> yeah. She can kind of fly, but also kind of not. And um, she's maybe impervious to bullets, maybe. So, Flash yeah, is becoming I... more and more redundant every day. So, the, the thing about, like, energy weapons is... So, there has to be a significant reason to swap from projectiles and everything that we've learned about them and everything that we've improved about them to the point where like especially fire uh, small arms right now is kind of plateaued in terms of the firearms themselves and the ammunition and innovations are probably going to be within like sighting systems heads up displays accessories kind of uh to to increase efficiency of it um but these are the, uh, the amount of work and energy and it's like what's the point of having a blaster when you can have a just a gun yeah, I mean, just like an ar-15 in the star wars world is like yeah you'll be t e even more deadly than people with blasters if you just bring an ar-15 i feel like blaster. they'd be very quickly rising as like a fan favorite if you had a, like a mercenary that had non-energy weapons yeah yeah it, it, you would people would like them they'd find them cool yeah republic commando had non-energy weapons yeah, it did. Yeah, I suppose the the mortar would would, would come under a because uh, like a lot of people were saying the mortar should have there should be an energy version and it's just like I mean if it works no. why? So I don't know how you have an energy I don't know based how you'd version. Make an energy version of it because you'd have to because the way a mortar is great because you can shoot it slow enough to where the projectile goes up comes back down. And you can. You are fucking kidding me. You are actually kidding it? me. Wow. I remember why I hate this enemy. It's just a garbage enemy. Plus, Whatever. what's great about mortars in their physical form is that, like, the thing is, what's great with projectiles is that there are, like, a projectile can be all kinds of things. You can put incendiary effects on it. You can make it armor piercing. You could make them hollow points. You could load them mm -hmm. up with whatever stuff. Like, mortars are the same way. You can have all kinds of different payloads. Um, like, it could it could be an airburst, or it could be just, like, a high-explosive direct-fire weapon. It could it could be smokes. You could put a smoke grenades in one and just have them smoke an area. But um, I don't see how you could do that with energy weapons. Like, well, I'm sure there's different kinds of energy weapons. But... Huh? Because they're not physical objects, you probably couldn't. Like what? Not a tangible object, uh, energy weapon. Yeah, they are. Oh well, yeah, yeah. But I guess what I mean is like, how do you, if you got like an energy weapon, how do you, you know, put it on a table and then modify the actual energy beam? It would be, it would be just you have. It's it's more of the way, whereas with projectiles you'd modify the projectile itself. With energies, I guess it'd be like the mechanism that takes the energy right. from its power source and directs it in a direction that's what you'd mess with yeah but i, I feel like you'd lose a lot of utility like a, a laser could only do it could do it was it would be less variety in what it could do compared to bullets and hand grenades you know 
I mean, like, think of a shotgun. Like, shotguns are insanely... Uh, there's a huge variety in what you could put into a shotgun. Like, you could like put Like, you could pennies. fill them with bean bags. You can fill them with slugs. You can put birdshot and buckshot and sabos and all kinds of different stuff inside What a is a slug, so, then? Oh, oh, a shotgun slug? It's just one single thick projectile. Oh, oh you said, yeah. when you said film with slugs, because that's what I thought slugs were, so when you said film with yeah. slugs, I was like, oh, is that like a type of bullet that you can put lots of them in? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. But like, well, so correct me if I'm wrong, though, I thought slug meant like a single shot that's really like a, a chunky boy. That's what a shotgun slug is. Yeah. Yep. Meaning you wouldn't put okay. multiple ones into one shot. No, it would Correct, be the there would one be one slug. Yeah, 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 there right. would be one slug per, uh, yeah, I mean, you could put two smaller ones in there if you wanted. Hmm. But generally, the point of a slug is you get accuracy because it's only one thing going to one spot instead of having it disperse over a distance. Um, you can get more penetration with it, uh, depending on if it's been on the shotgun. You can get pretty good accuracy with them. But yeah, you have a lot of options. But I don't know how you do that with an energy weapon. Those mortars are very useful when you don't have a line of sight. Yeah, absolutely. They're very long distance, and it's very good for dropping on top of people. And when you don't have a line of sight, crap. Can I not stun these fat enemies? Because I shoot them and they don't get stunned. Fat enemies have more health. That's video games. You gotta... Know, the parry only activates more. not on the charge up, but the bring down. And that's oh, applicable okay. to basically everything in the game. Okie dokie. The more you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. I remember there was one where it was, uh, the, the whole the PSA was that, um, this guy called and the kid answers the phone. He's like, Are your parents home? No, they're out. He's like, Well, you want a surprise. What's your address? And it's like, Dude, he sounds like a pedophile. Why would you, why would you even talk to him after that? He sounds so, so suspicious. But I guess that's a point. And I do like the fact that a big black man with like gun bullets wrapped around him on his chest, he's the trustworthy one. <laughs> There's a random army dude walking down the street. Uh, this one says, it is a joke, and therefore it can be bad. So sad. I don't know if that's referencing what? the person we were covering. This is obviously from a while ago, so... <laughs> right, you guys, whenever you do a super word. chat, do your best to include the context whenever you ask something. You know, even if it's just a single word, just, just so I know. Just responded yeah. to seven weeks later, you know. Yeah. When you're going to admit that Soma isn't a horror game... Him. But, uh... Yeah. When you go to admit the Soma isn't a horror game, coward. Also, hi everyone except the Mutt. Damn. Who's the Mutt? Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm a purebred mofo. I mean, when, with... I mean, I'm a sheep, so, like my father and his father before him. Soma's a horror game, sorry. Cope. Thoughts on Druckmann, an adult MTV cartoon? Oh, Duckman. For a second, I'm like, thought some what? Neil Druckmann. <laughs> Neil Druckmann, the show. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about a show called Duckman. Says, someone said, Rex, since Jedi blocking lasers is due to enhanced reflexes and precognition from the Force, uh... wouldn't Jedi be able to react more easily to physical bullets and energy shots due to slower speed? So, like, I... I feel like an energy shot is thicker than a bullet, based on what we thicker. see. Yeah. And I don't know, like, the fact that you could see it probably helps a shit ton. If you have good reflexes, right? You can't see the bullet. It's too fast and too small. And it's not glowing. And it's not, like, a foot long. So I feel like hitting a bullet would be much, much more difficult. Also, when you block it, you now have two red-hot molten pieces of metal that are going to fly your hand. you. Yeah. yeah. And also, those braces are going to be very warm. Wonder Woman is stupid. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree. People think that No Man's Land shot is amazing. That scene is stupid. 
wrong. It is dumb. Dude, I had to respond to some dumbass in the comments <laughs> today on our video. I don't know if we're, uh, I don't know if we're Man, Rom is a vacuous spider. IMO. Hey, Molly. Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry, I'm watching my own stream footage of like, hey, you're up to where I am. It's like, wait a minute, you're a lot further ahead than I am. <laughs> that is true. So that's the ask for help. So I'm just kind of running around in circles. Oh my god, there's so many spiders. You're supposed to be light and faster, though. And also, like, I feel, well, it isn't light. It's not traveling the speed of light. Um, traveling definitely not traveling the speed of light. Yeah, definitely. Because um, remember, bullets can travel really fast. So, yep. like an AR-15 will shoot at like 3,000 feet per second. Yeah, contrary around to there. what one woman would tell you, you can't track a bullet as it moves through the air with your eyes and then catch yeah. it and throw it. Yeah, you can, idiot. Because if... Because here's the thing, if, you're, if your reflexes are so good that you can block lasers and bullets, nothing will ever get past you. Yeah. Like, two Jedi fighting, there's no way you could possibly swing that, which has always kind of been a problem with Star Wars, is if you're fast enough and your reflexes are so good that you can block blaster shots, then there is no way someone could ever possibly swing a lightsaber fast enough to where it could hit you yeah <laughs> so i just is like we're just gonna have to accept and move forward with the idea that jedi are broken and they don't work you can easily catch a bullet if you have a lasso that is true yeah obviously we well, didn't every, mean that. well everyone can catch a bullet once at least yeah you know and you nail go. it I have no idea how to get through this area. I Congrats, like Mutually, you beat everywhere. the second worst boss of the game. Yeah, Rom, not a good boss. But maybe some believe Rom is. Also, I think I'm about expended, exhausted, used yeah, I mean, up. I'm, I've, uh, oh man, I'm, it's almost one in the I'm morning, shit. Yeah, time, time kind of flew, up. and I don't believe we got through more Super Chats than we have now to respond to <laughs> from this stream. Um, Hooray, we made our lives more... I don't even know. We've I mean, added to our workload. Yeah, you'll have more discussion from us in future. I mean, we're planning on doing this exact same thing tomorrow. This was supposed to be part one today, yes. but I guess it's just part zero now. Um, not all of that came through. I saw that on Discord. It came through through the stream, though, because OBS, OBS works differently. Uh, what I was saying was it was supposed to be part one and two today, tomorrow, but instead it's part zero and part one. So we will see you same time, same sort of cast tomorrow. And I will try and continue with super chats as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, shall I? Uh, shall I plug my? Hold on. All right. Well, I mean, plugs. are you going offline or not? I yeah, because I I haven't really because I woke up and started I mean, doing this straight you should, away. You I should totally stay that. online for just like twenty minutes even. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you probably should. Yeah. Okay. Probably a good idea. Come, come so, over here then. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go offline, here. but I will sit in this call for a little bit. And if you want to continue All this right. conversation, hit the link in the chat. Dubious yep. Sanity on Twitch. Dubious Sanity, that's me. Yep. Come right hang here. out with Get us for a little here. bit for the after show. All right. Um, but yeah, same time tomorrow. And um, yeah, we'll we'll catch you there. Thank you so much, everybody, for the, for the very kind donations, the company, and the. Well, you know, the, the discussion, right? The yeah, back and absolutely. forth about all the different things we covered tonight. It, was, it, was, it may as well have been a full EFAP, to be honest with you, with the, what we talked about. It's just with a game in the background instead of, you know, the tile, yeah. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, Too many tangents, but that's A-OK. -okay. Yes. All right. See you folks tomorrow. Dubious sanity. Bye. Go there now. Yep.